there are 41 bosses in this game. You told me there were 40. No, there are 41. Oh, my God. We can't do this. <laughs> I'm scrolling down, yeah. I look, the, I look at our bullet points on the uh, boss order. <laughs> there are 41. I'm tweeting. So are, are you live? I think so. Okay. Are you streaming? I'm streaming. Are you sharing your screen with me? I am. I can see. All right, let's just chill out here for just a couple minutes. Let people come in or make some tweets. Do people filter in, or do they? Yeah, uh, let's see. This is uh, Twitch TV. That's strange. Let's see if people. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Hey, Mary. Hey, Spin in Mind. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We've got people in the chat. The chat box works. I can see it. Hey. Yeehaw. I'm going to test my little counters here. So you're saying there are 41 bosses? There's not 42. There's not 40. There's 41. And you death. can make it go up and down just in case like one boss gets resurrected at some point. Yes. If we're like, oh, no, we didn't kill any bosses mm -hmm. all the way back up to 40. What if uh, every time you die, we reset the game? Have you thought about that? So the reason why I have to do this is in case I accidentally like hit double hit the button so that I can oh, like I back see. it up. I see. Yeah. We would never be able to keep that math together one way or the other. No, it would be a, it would be a nightmare. You don't want to be about to go into the boss rush and like have that number be four and be racking okay. your brain about, oh my god, what didn't we get? Oh, I see. I see. Uh, the, uh, hey everybody, hey, Arisafane Furbaz, Alexa Lily, Scoobing, Altron, <laughs> thanks everybody for coming and hanging out, we'll get started in just a minute, hey, it looks like there's some stuff already happening, um, how do I, let's see here, oh, I gotta look at the thing, oh, we got followers, we got people who are following, maybe, mm. what's that big bell doing there, what's it say? I think the bell is a donation. From yeah, to yes. the uh, to the uh, Sylvia yeah. Rivera Law Project, which is why we're streaming. Uh, Remember, you said you you found yeah, the gift. I, I no, I made the gift, and I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what it meant. <laughs> oh, I'll start reading off donations in just a minute. We're getting set up. I'm I'm doing some tweets here. Um, if everyone can go to uh, Range Touch. Uh, twittercom slash touch and retweet our tweet that I'm about to make. That would be really helpful for us just so we can get more eyes on the thing and we'll get started again in just a minute like i said um i need to add an image to this Ooh. Ooh. there's no new information i've never selected this just is this like is, i wonder if, is it, do you think this is patch notes no this is how they announce like new stuff Ah. Like when Elden Ring, the the uh, launch date for Elden Ring, it's going to be in there. Mm -hmm. Like when that matters. Mm -hmm. you know? um, give me one second. I was afraid, actually. I'd never, uh, I've never, oh, to see if the bar at the bottom. So it, the bar takes some time. It's taken some time, uh, but I, we will keep an okay, eye I'll, on that. I'll read them out loud. Uh, but it is updating, right? There we go. Yeah, it looks like it did. It did finally update. But yeah, there's a solid half a minute <laughs> before I think that. That was, uh, the case. that was the case last year too. When yeah, we did it with the bar. So that's that's okay. And uh, hold on, I'm still tweeting. Continuing to tweet. And uh, now you can go to Twitter.com/slash Range Touch. Retweet that tweet I just made, and uh, we can get going, I guess. Um, let me make sure everything is up here. Let me read off the donations that we've gotten so far. Let me make sure that this is working. Yeah, let me know when we're good to start this intro cinematic. We've got a lot going on. Hey, we got a donation from... Is it from Anonymous? I don't... It's really funny that... Uh, oh, maybe the... Hold on, let me, let me look here. It's very funny the way that, that uh, this, like, back end works here. Oh yeah, we got we got a donation from Anonymous for twenty five dollars. Got a donation from Mary for fifty dollars. Thanks to Anonymous and Mary uh, for those donations, getting us going. So today, um, uh, you want to give a little spiel about what's up? 
Okay. You want me to? Do I'm going to answer one question. So there is a link to the uh, donation, uh, but also if if that link is too long and you are typing it manually into a typewriter and then mailing it to yourself to then mm-hmm. put it into your phone. Mm-hmm. You can also go to tinyurl.com slash DS2 charity. Um, it is a great link, uh, and it will take you directly to where you need to go. In now to talk about what we're doing here, we are, <laughs> mm-hmm. we yeah, are, that's right. that's what <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are doing a all bosses run of Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin f- uh, for uh, the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, which is, you want to you give a spiel about, uh, about the Sylvia Rivera Law Project? I'm La- not even going to give a spiel. I'm going to read what we write every time. The <laughs> Sylvia Rivera Law Project is a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. And uh, they provide all kinds of services. You can uh, check it out uh, if you want to. But they uh, it's a great organization. We have supported them before, I think, with the first Prepare to Give. That was for uh, to benefit the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. And we are back again doing that. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I know some people uh, in the chat previously have talked about um, using the services of the organization before. So, um, you know, directly impacting the communities we care about. So... That's all to say. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, we're we're gonna beat up all these bosses because that's the most important thing you can do to uh, to raise money for anything is to uh, do it with fighting. Mm-hmm. So that's what your money's going for. That's why we're gonna be doing this. This is probably gonna take about twelve hours, give or take. Um, it depends. There there's some weird. <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk about any donation incentives now or you want to wait until after the intro. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about donation incentives mm-hmm. because, I mean, people are trickling in and things like that. But, uh, okay, so in your donation, in the message, did, is this down in the little thing? Did it is not. I did not put this on the Twitch page. Dang. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. In the in your donation, if you put uh, which DLC you want us to do first, I will tally all those up. And I will rank order them based on what you tell us. So if you want us to do the old Iron King first, when we get to that point, it's going to be in about eight hours, <laughs> uh, then we'll do the old Iron King first. If you want us to do Ivory King first, we'll do it first. And that can really uh, mess uh, Danny up in big and important ways, which is great. I have a preference, so, but I'm not going to tell y'all my preference. Yes. So <laughs> you can do that in the thing, and I'll, as about every 20 minutes or so, I will uh, re-say all of this again, maybe every 30 minutes or so, mm-hmm. and uh, and we'll go from there. So, yeah, so uh, open up your purse strings, as it were. Uh, look, Deus Ex Brocken, if you want us to do them in release order, then you can donate some money, and whichever one was released first, I don't know that, you can put that in your, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in your donation message. Now, uh, here are some additional stuff here at the top. Um Danny, how much are you going to donate every time you die? Five dollars. Five dollars per death. So I'm, I need to write that down. Let me see here to keep you from going back on it. Mm-hmm. Thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fax it over to you really quick. If mm-hmm. you could prick your finger. Okay. It's really <laughs> helpful for me. Five dollars per death. And you know what? I'll. I'll also. Oh, I don't know. You might die a lot. I'll donate some amount of money at the end, probably with some <laughs> shenanigans involved. Then we might also make a bet, like we did last time. I know, time. that's what we did last time. I bet you money, and I lost. <laughs> uh, and that was a huge bummer. So yeah, I think I'll probably make a couple bets with you over the course of the thing, because mm-hmm. I, I like a good bet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Modality is in the chat saying uh, he's going to donate $5 per death. Um, Moose is going to be here. Hey, Moose, how's it going? Let's see here. Um, uh, Lilifin in the chat is going to give ten dollars for each boss you one shot. In Good. The Good. That's I want. Really I want all of the incentives to align to me finishing this quickly. Because <laughs> if I finish it quickly, the the odds of me doing something very difficult and silly go down at the at the end of this stream. 
girls are good in the chat says dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin prepared to donate edition <laughs> yes uh, which is fine spinning mind says uh, they're in for one dollar per death one dollar 26 canadian thank you thanks for uh combating combating the dollar mm -hmm. does that mean our dollar's stronger thank I... you for your <laughs> canadian dollars um uh, something else, let's see here. I don't know if there's anything else we need to say at the top. I mean, obviously, we'll get going here um, and make it make it go. Um, uh, someone should let us know if the sound is good. That's true. We did um, test this, but it's, it's hard. It's real. It's so got... hard that people get paid so much money to do sound. Yeah, I, I tested it, and we, and we tried to figure it out, but I think I'm a little bit higher in the mix Uh than uh, Danny is, and if that's the case, let us know. We're really getting some donations already coming in here. We got a donation from Altron for Ivory King at $25. Mm, put, oh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start for first. Uh, Michael H. has already given us $50 with Let's Go. Let's Go, Michael H. Uh, Anonymous has got $50 here, too. Loose Cannon says, uh, uh, thanks so much to Anonymous. Loose Cannon says, get rid of those bosses, please. They're they they're up to shenanigans at fifteen dollars. Loose cannon. We're gonna try really hard. All right, you ready for this do. intro? Yeah. Uh, now, I during the intro, I want you to just tell me what you think is happening in any given moment, and I'm gonna save the donations that we get uh, during that time for it. Um, if people have interpretations about the uh, intro and what's happening here, put them in the chat. Put them in your donation message. I'll read them after that. All Let's right. See. Perhaps you've seen it, maybe in a dream, a murky, forgotten land. Mm. What do you think about murky, forgotten lands? I, I had an opinion, but I forgot about it. Does that make you feel good? <laughs> you know, we were talking about how this game sticks out among the Soul series and bears some similarity to Bloodborne. Because this intro cinematic is about an individual, right? Mm-hmm. Is that all you got? Yeah, like an individual's experience you and, you know, everything. relationship to the world instead of, like, a lore dump at the beginning. Can I tell you? That's true. That's true. It's not, like, in the olden times, yes. with the biggest dragons, they fought the shiniest mad. That's my interpretation of Dark Souls 1. Yeah. It's not almost 100% true. <laughs> You're very light. Um, the, uh, I thought you were going to open th that little statement None you were just making there with, uh, you know, some you people say that this, this game's very similar to games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, but I just don't see it. <laughs> Yeah. Your controls totally different. Controls differently? There's hollows, though. Long ago, in a walled off land. And see, we've got a. We're getting the frame narrative of the lore dump, right? A great king built a great kingdom. I believe. This classic, like, junior year in high school literary stuff. Perhaps you're familiar. What were you reading junior year in high school? That's like, uh... That's a frame narrative? Like Bronte. But one day... Is there a frame narrative in there? I think so. Wuthering Heights has frame narrative, doesn't it? Without really yeah. Knowing why. Probably. Reading Scarlet... I was gonna say the Scarlet Pimpernel, but that's not right. Scarlet Letter? There we go. That might have, I can't remember if that was 10th grade or 11th grade. Oh, okay. And now, so now the lore dumps over. There's a place called Drenglay. People go there. It, it seems like, I think the implication is we're going there. <laughs> we're trying to. Well, someone is. Mm hmm Yes, someone. I wish these uh, cool lightning bugs showed up more in the game. Yeah, I although I will say the, the one place where they do show up is good. Oh, is this uh, in, uh, what you call it? Shrine of Amana? Yeah, Shrine of a Mind. Yeah. Just, this is going to be a great 12 hours, by the way. Already I'm like, oh, yeah, you know the place. <laughs> you know the one. I beat this game, like, uh, two months ago, too. So it's still fairly fresh in my head. I need to go over here to... Uh... Scoobin says sound is good, by the way. Dead Pancakes says sounds good. 
someone says I'm a little bit quieter, my voice modulates pretty, pretty a lot, though. I can turn myself up if I need to as we go. Like a moth drawn to a flame. <laughs> Moose says, uh, I live in a murky land, but I think it's remembered. Hmm. Yeah, no, time. Portal, uh, Gwyn was the shiniest man. Time after time. If you jump in a hole, what you will that find there is your fate. This person's masked up the for COVID. The <laughs> they knew Miyazaki knew. Miyazaki knew. <laughs> <laughs> There they go! <laughs> oh, you want to talk a little bit about build here? Um, It's interesting. Uh, this is cool because you don't make your character until you talk to somebody. Oh, is that true? You don't do it right Yeah, here? you oh, don't. No, you don't. You're just, you're just some... You're, you start out... Uh, I guess the implication here is you have amnesia. And so you don't even remember what your capabilities are. Um, and it's only when you recognize yourself in the human effigy that, uh, that you're like, oh yeah, I was so-and-so. I was an explorer. But I am going to be an explorer in this game. Mm -hmm. Got some donations I need to read <laughs> as you explain the, the philosophical standpoint. <laughs> we are already up to, by the way, in uh, 15 minutes, we're already up to $500. This Holy this crap. this bodes great for the for the... A cause. Oh, yeah. I don't... You know what? I forgot to talk about the biggest donation incentive, by the way. Oh, uh, no. So You're, yeah, How much are we at now? We're at nearly $500. We're at $497. I need to beat this game. I gotta, I gotta get this done. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, uh, we got Anonymous at $18, say, for DLC, whatever the snow one is. Well, I promise you I can figure that out. Um... Uh, so we got uh, fifty dollars from Scott. We got two dollars from Hendrix Trog saying, "What would a five sentence summary of the previous Souls game be?" My memory is hazy. If you want a five sentence summary, you gotta give more than two dollars, Hendrix Trog. Uh, I'm gonna save that. Uh, we got Anonymous giving twenty dollars. We got Alex giving uh, twenty uh, fifty dollars. Thanks so much. Uh, says uh, Alex says, "Love range touch, love these streams." Clouder says, "Getting an early donation before my day gets busy." Thank y'all for doing this. I don't know any of the DS2 DLCs, but I heard some Iron King in your explanation, so I put this toward that, I guess. Um, Ornstein and Smo, $20 toward Ivory King. Anonymous gives $75. I think I'm caught up now. Dang, we are 4% of the way to our goal of $10,000 today. Mm. That's what we're shooting for. Um, hopefully we can get there. I think we will. And uh, here's the big thing I want to say. I forgot to say it before. If we get to... $15,000 today. Danny will beat the final bosses of this game with the ladle. It's true. Um, some information I've been given that Danny gave me about this is that the ladle is so small that it can't hit one of those enemies very well because the cape is too big. <laughs> I, I think this name has got to be Danny, by the way. Okay. So if you want... If you want uh, Danny to have to do this. To have to do the final bosses of this game after hours <laughs> of strife and struggle. To do it suboptimally, which will hurt him in his, his heart. His his heart will shrink two sizes this day. <laughs> then you should uh, you should donate and you should go tell people about the stream. I'm I I'm I'm feeling it now. You're feeling it. I'm feeling it. By the way, we got like a, a like a bunch of followers. By the way, I want to say thanks to everyone who is following. Uh, it, uh, of course, all subscriptions, all Twitch subs, and um, uh, bits and everything are going to go to to this today. Today, ooh, today. I'm going to do the conversion afterward, but uh, yeah. So that's definitely viable too. If you've got you know a free sub from Amazon Prime kicking around or whatever, uh, feel free to do that, and uh, it'll count toward the goal. Well, it won't count toward the goal physically, but I will count it in my heart. Whoa! Hendrix Trog says, <laughs> uh, gives $100. Oh, my goodness. It says, is this large enough to get a five-sentence summary? 
I think it is. Now, um, or I'm going to hang on to that for just a minute. I'm going to write it down. Five sentence summary. Because uh, I want you to talk about your build here, Danny, a little bit. Well, my build is I'm ripped. I'm just <laughs> absolutely ripped. Um, you know, we're talking gallon of milk a day, um, body weight exercises constantly. Uh, yeah. That's what my build is. Is uh, a gallon of milk a day good for you? Now, I remember in uh, um, the Jackass, uh, per, per, uh, particularly what the Kenny Loggins uh, Mad TV Jackass sketch, you can't drink a gallon of milk all in one sitting. <laughs> that sounds right. Is this is this character drinking a gallon of milk all in one sitting? No, no, just a day. Okay, all right. Um. Well, but but I'm thinking more uh, numerically. What's going on? Because you know you've played this um, game more than Dark Souls One at this point. Yeah, that's what you were telling me before we started. That you have now, in practice, to do the stream, you have played this game more than Dark Souls One, which you have. Uh, you've been playing Dark Souls One for like five years. Yeah, and you've only been playing this game like you played it like one time a few years ago, and mm -hmm. you've only played it like in the past six weeks or so. Yeah. So uh... we're an explorer. The, so the classes in Dark Souls are very much uh, fairly arbitrary, to be honest. It's basically your class is just these starting attributes down in the bottom right. And you can be the deprived and you actually start at level one with sixes and everything. And other uh, classes basically just have a little bit, a few extra levels, um, you know, 10 or so. Some, some are more leveled, some are higher leveled. Uh, but we're going to go with the Explorer. The Explorer starts with some handy items at the beginning. Um, and I think we're going to really like having, for example, the Pharaoh's Lockstone um, at the very top. And otherwise, it's like the stats are not bad. Like the stats are uh, not nothing too high in an ability I don't care about. So... That's kind of why I'm going with it. And for my gift, I just chose Healing Wares because it's kind of nice to have some extra life stones here at the beginning. I'm going to finalize that. Now, somebody in the chat is talking about the bird shoulder pad. Is that what that shoulder pad was about? Yeah, I think it is. It's it, I, A lot of people consider the Explorer's outfit to be the coolest, I guess, the most interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a monocle Enter, you know, in there. We're not going to be wearing the Explorer's outfit very long, though, because I do want to have a change of clothes, something a little bit more comfortable, I would say. Mm -hmm. So these people, um, I don't know. They're they're kind of characters. They're they're being a little. Uh, they're being a little. I don't know. Scamps. Yeah, they're being they're a little scamps. scampy. I would say they're kind of laughing at me because they probably see a lot of folks come through here. You think so? I think so, yeah. You think like hundreds of people are coming through here? I think I everyone... Think Based on that cinematic, it seemed like it was a lot of work. It is a lot of work, home. but everyone we meet... So maybe not a lot of people, but I think everyone we meet has like passed through here or another portal like this is, is what I'm get, getting from the game. Because hmm. hmm. most people are coming to Dream Lake searching for something like I am. So as you noticed, I'm not, uh, I am not skipping cinematics because it's not a speed run. It's a marathon and I want people to be able to enjoy the game. And personally, whenever I watch uh, folks playing a game, I like being able to have the cinematics there so I can like follow along. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah, we're not skipping through that. This is a, uh, I mean, it's not as leisurely as it could be, because uh, uh, when I played this game recently, I think it took me 60 hours. Yeah, I was right at, I think I did, I was able to get all of the DLCs done in 67 hours. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. and so, um, but, you know, we're, we're going to shoot for between 10 and 15 here today to do it. So, uh, not not leisurely, but not uh, super speedy. Either. No. What's the speed run record on this, like a couple Two hours? Two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so we're shooting for that first, and if we don't get it, then then we'll back up Strat 10 hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we got a couple other uh, donations. We got Scurvy, giving $5. Thanks so much uh, for that. And we got Joe Cooler. We know who that is, Joe Cooler. Uh, says, good luck with the run. Can you power stance two ladles? 
for ten dollars? Um, I think it's theoretically possible to power. Can you get two ladles? ladles? I think it's theoretically possible by completing the little quest in quotation marks to get the ladle, mm-hmm. and maybe maybe killing the pers- the quest giver, or killing the quest giver and then using a bonfire ascetic, something mm-hmm. like that to, to respawn them. Okay. Um, we're gonna do some casual murder. So why are you doing it? So this is the shopkeep who is cool and everyone likes. Everybody likes the shopkeep. I'm doing it for his clothes. Okay. Well, you want to explain that? Yeah. So he has an outfit that um, has an XP modifier on it, basically. It increases the amount of souls you get. Um, And when you add it all up, I like there's a little bit of controversy that I've seen on some of the, you know, internet posts about okay what is the total percentage that you get Mm -hmm. but it's somewhere around 50 percent more um more souls that you get which is pretty huge in the early game Mm -hmm. the way these uh soulsborne games work out is you know your first 30 levels go real quick um and then each other level takes more and more time so we are going to uh to want as much souls at the beginning to kind of form our build to start laying the foundation for the kind of build we want and we got to talk to uh this person who's the emerald herald we've got a lot of new followers here uh thanks everyone who is following the channel now and we've got a couple twitch uh prime subscriptions that are um contributing to the thing we got squirrelet war we got the verdicts thanks so much for those subscriptions those will um, go into the big uh, uh, money bucket. <laughs> uh, uh, reminder for people who are donating. So we got two big goals that we're shooting for. One is that if we get to 15000 before the final boss rush, Danny will defeat the, uh, the final boss with a ladle. Um, I'll remind people about that about once an hour. And if, when you donate, if you want to put in the message um, which DLC you want us to do first, we will rank order the DLCs in that order. Danny has a preferred sequence, which we will not reveal. Um, but uh, you know, you can put some of them first, and it makes it a lot harder. It makes his life a little bit harder. And I guess the second one I do will be the one with the second most. Yes, mm-hmm. I will rank order them based yeah, on yeah, yeah. Uh, monetary value. Now, uh, you just did that little uh, knocking the thing down the hole. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's a really great. I, I, I think Majula just has such care and love poured into it um, mm-hmm. as, as, a, as, a, as a base. I like this place. Like, obviously, I'll have a place in my heart for Firelink Shrine mm-hmm. because uh, it's from the first game, and I, do, I love that first game. But I like Majula more. I think that this this has a place to re- some real emotional resonance here. Um, yeah, I think it's it's the Majula theme too. You know, yeah, the, the theme's the, a big part of it. Uh, so, Scooby says, "How much to just hang out Majula for a bit?" Well, I imagine mm-hmm. that at some point, uh, you know, this is just pure prediction speculation on my point part. Uh, I think Daniel will probably have to go to the bathroom at some point. Yeah, and <laughs> we'll just hang out Majula during and those. listen to the sounds. <laughs> yeah, and listen to the sounds, which will be perfect. That's when we'll do that. So no additional charge. Um, the uh, yeah, uh, people are asking about is this DLC included? Yep, DLC. We will do about seven, eight hours in somewhere. Yeah, so the Scholar of the First uh, Sin is a really interesting product, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Dark Souls 2 comes out in what, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there? I don't know. Might have been even uh, before that, because I think Scholar of the... 2002. (laughs) Mm-hmm. No. 2003? I don't think so. Okay, Uh, 2000... Let's see. 2004? 2004? No, I think it's after Dark Souls uh, 1, which came out in 2011. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I'm... Hold on, I'm counting. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting that out of the way. Uh, but turn up that death counter. It's up. It's up. Oh, uh, that's good. How's it feel? Oh, yeah. Modality's going to be... going to be spending some money. I think it's buy. important to, like, just get that out of the way. 
You think it's like uh, so? My uh, my dad once said he was he was talking to uh, someone who just bought a new car, <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, you should just go kick a dent in it right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'll make you feel better when it really happens." I don't think your dad's a hundred percent wrong. You think it's just better, you know, rip the bandaid off. Uh, we got we got it. You know, I was oh, really shit. weird no, because I've on. played wait, wait, this wait, wait, wait. game probably. I don't know, 30 hours in the last 72 hours. <laughs> like, it's something weird. Yeah, I know. I've had to repeatedly say, hey, quit playing this game. Um, and there was a moment where I was like, went back to Dark Souls 1 mode, and the jump button was like tapping the run button. Yes. Which is absolutely bizarre. That You're not is not. Go for it again. You're not going to go down there and try to get that thing. Well, I already, uh, I think I already got the thing in the chest. Yeah, but not the thing you were jumping for. No, well, that once you're on the chest, it's just easier to. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, I see. to jump there. Uh, like, got two you know. new donations in. Uh, we got one from Anonymous for two dollars. Thanks so much, uh, Anonymous. And we got another one from Anonymous for two hundred and fifty dollars. Whoa, uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, thanks so much to uh, both of those anonymous donators. Could be the same anonymous donator. I don't. I don't really know one way or the other. But that means that we are eight hundred sixty-four dollars of our ten thousand dollar target. That's yeah. So that's pretty big. Of course, all your donations are going to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Uh, you should check out some information about them. Well, I'll, I'll talk more about them basically on the hour. But uh, just letting everyone know. Remember, if we hit fifteen thousand dollars, we're fighting the end bosses with a ladle. Um, I can really feel this is like a, this is a real um, the biology of of doing these uh, marathons. I can feel my uh, the like muscles in my jaw when I say <laughs> final bosses with a ladle. A ladle mm -hmm. has like a, like a very particular. It, it, at nine hours, I'm gonna be real tired to say in that. But uh, you're really showing off some big uh, speedrun strats here. Uh, not, not super. There are so many speedrun strats in this game. And the first major trick is actually up here. I don't even attempt it. Um, I think the speedrunning community more or less uh, has settled on the fact that they use, uh, they use this software that runs in the background and, um, and locks the FPS of this game. Mm -hmm. um, because if the um, if the FPS is not locked at 60, a lot of the strats that they use just don't work. Mm. Um, really weird stuff happens to this game without the FPS locked. For example, um, poison damage ticks at a different speed. At like at, at different FPSs, so the yeah. speedrunning community is like decided the only fair way to speed run the game is by uh, is by locking the FPS at 60 um, hmm. on the on the PC here so well, that's interesting. some interesting stuff so anyway one of the reasons i suspect and i've kind of i've been on the you know dark souls speed running discord and one of the reasons i suspect that the first trick that i'm going to kind of show you i'll show you where it is but i'm not going to try it because it uses up resources uh, one of the reasons it doesn't work is because I don't have that 60 FPS locked. It's, it's gotcha. either maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, or whatever. You're running at 800 frames per second. Um, I don't know what I'm running Poison at. Poison blows through your health bar like <laughs> nobody's business. Um, the, well, so uh, here's another notable thing that's maybe worth pointing out, is that you're not really killing that many enemies for, um, like, souls at this point. It's true, yeah. That doesn't really seem that important. I mean, you would think leveling up at the beginning would matter a whole lot, but it doesn't seem that way at this point. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Um, I need only enough uh, XP to kind of um, do just a couple of little things. Mm -hmm. um, so I want this hand axe, and I did get, I did go up here and I got the, um, and I got the divine blessing. I'm gonna double check to make sure I didn't like miss something up here because yeah, I got the chest. It's weird. I had a memory that there was a, a hand axe up here, but it might have been like a random drop mm. instead of uh, instead of something specific. But anyway, so I need like 700 XP just to get this uh, hand axe. Do, 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 do. The uh, so everyone is um, super super jazzed mm -hmm. 
about uh, you dying, just letting you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i actually glad that I got that out of the way because the first death in this game hurts no matter what, um, especially if you get like a fair amount into the into the game without dying, um, which I, I've done a couple of times. And uh, Salamancor has subscribed on Prime. Thanks so much uh, for that. Uh, People are saying check your inventory for the hand axe. Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. That makes sense. The uh, Salamanca, Some people are saying the game is a little bit quiet. We purposely are keeping the game a little bit down. Um, just because, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much at the end of the day yeah. the game sounds matter. Um, so uh, this, is, this would be the first trick, is if you throw a firebomb and your character is, like, in a pixel-perfect place the explosion clips through the wall and hits an explosive barrel on the other side, um, creating a shortcut. Mm. I've tried this. I don't know how I've never gotten it to work. And apparently it is the first speed running trick. Um, the, the oldest trick in the book that you can't, I do. can't do the, uh, vanilla flax scene says left to make breakfast came back to excellent fashion souls. Yeah, I no, I mean... I like the hat. It's a good hat. You like the hat? Yeah. Um, uh, Sir Kenyon Wolf is asking in the chat, is, uh, are you going to try to kill the pursuer on the roof? Um, uh, no. Ooh. I'm not doing the pursuer cool. glitch. Well, no, you're not doing the pursuer glitch, but you're going to go for it. And here, here's a good reason why. Uh, modality in the chat, I will donate $200 if Danny one-shots the pursuer on their first appearance. Okay, I can do that. But uh, I think that means on the roof. No, the that. first appearance means the first time the pursuer appears. <laughs> and if I don't go on the roof, the pursuer does not this appear like there. Interpretation of the Bible level <laughs> analysis going on here. Uh, so, like, if you close your eyes, like if you if you go through the fog wall, close your eyes, can't see the pursuer, it doesn't count. Yeah, that's what you're telling. Me. Well, no, the thing is, you have to go up there for him to appear there. Modality says, uh, Modality says on the roof. He's clarifying. He's clarifying. Oh, but the contract was already made, was it not? Mm -mm -mm. We just get to wreck. go for it. Go for it. I go should for go it for it. Okay, well, let me, uh, let me clear a couple enemies bucks. here. Yeah. If you can't do it, it's fun, fun, fun to do. Uh, and if you win, you win big. You know, it's like a bet. But where uh, it's all about your skill. How do you have 31 life gems? You buy a bunch? Uh, no, that was the starting gift. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to that, obviously. I need to go to look at the donations. Sorry, everybody. I'm juggling a bunch of stuff. $50 from Jay from Nowhere. <laughs> $50 to support the family of the poor murdered shopkeeper. <laughs> Oof. Um, um, but uh, uh, reminder, if you want to donate and you want to click down there at the bottom, it's, of course, down below the uh, chat. There's a little button. If you want to do that, you can go to tinyurl.com slash ds2charity in order to donate. tinyurl.com slash ds2charity. What were you going to say, sir? I wasn't saying anything. I was just looking at this ladder. I'm thinking about this $200 <laughs> that I now have to do. <laughs> and it's really, like, it's in the charity's interest. It is in the yes, cause's exactly. interest. Yes. But it is adding more money. All right, Stephen A. Smith, calm down. It's adding more money to the count, which puts us closer to ladle. Yep. And it's also eating more time, which no, means yeah. there's more t opportunities for there's for more money to be raised that gets us closer to the ladle. Yeah, it's a real opportunity cost kind of thing, right? They should teach this in business school. Um. Oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy now about doing it. We should have thought about this as a donation incentive just to begin with, but I'm glad that uh, Modality came up with it on his own here. Oh, my lord. People love the turtle guy, by the way. People are talking about him. Yeah, great enemy. <laughs> great enemy. <laughs> Scooby is talking about the doctrine of roof appearance. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Modality is saying the offer is uh, extended to 250 here. Stakes are high. It's boating. It's boating poorly. Hey, STVM. Need to get on the. Need to bait out this charge attack here. Okay. Sure. Pretend like you know what you're doing. 
There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> It's worth it. Oh, the chat's going wild. They love it. I need my I need my aromatic ooze. <laughs> wow, good dodge there. So something that I've noticed, I've I've watched uh, Danny playing this game quite a bit uh, over the past little little while, and uh, please everyone notice how much he plays with one third of his stamina bar. Do you, do you need concentration time? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just doing my best here. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, no good. Well, you, you know, if you have uh, solidarity with Danny about this, uh, if you are mourning like he is the loss of that $250, maybe jump in there, chip $5 into the money pile. It's all for a good cause, uh. and it's getting us closer to the $15,000 ladle goal. Remember, when you donate, if you want to put in the notes which DLC you want us to do first, when we get to DLCs, I will rank order them based on how much money we've made. I made an error there, and I should have had my aromatic ooze equipped. Was the error that you did one damage per hit? That's also a problem, is that the, the build doesn't really assume I'm going to get in a fight at this point. <laughs> oh, Lord, this is really... Hey, weird. we got uh, Jay from Nowhere gave 250 bits here. Good try. Uh, Mitty Myers is in the chat. Oh, hey, Mitty Myers. See you soon. Um... <laughs> it's, uh, people are pointing out how uh, def <laughs> definitely not the enemy here. Definitely just an error by you. <laughs> <laughs> Mitty Myers says the error is the game is hard. <laughs> uh, what, that, you know, that's true. Actual facts. The game is hard. Um, Rhetorical Acrobat is asking if this fight is any different on Scholar of the First Sin versus OG DS2. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I've it. never played uh, the original Dark yeah, Souls 2, actually. And it's interesting. There are a lot of people that say there are a lot of sections of this game that are substantially more difficult. Um, just because of enemy placements. And I think Forest of the Fallen Giants is one of those places i think um yeah there's just several places where the enemy placements are just a little bit more irritating we've got 50 dollars from illuminous saying r.i.p for aromatic ooze uh and they've donated for sunken king for the dlc spinning mind has donated two dollars for deaths one and two. Ooh, okay I know. Uh, I'm actually close. happy to look at some of these cinematics because when I play through normally, I just skip them. Yeah, let's watch them. I like this one. This is The Last Giant. Um, I'm sure Circadian Wolf will fill us in on some of the lore. Oh, games, I'll tell you. But... <laughs> the lore on this is great because uh, this is our second, um, chronologically, our second confrontation with The Last Giant. There's a reason yes. why he's angry at us. Yeah, he's like not into it. So he's like the, uh, the giant king, right? Yeah, he's, like he's the, the giant. He is the giant place. lord, and we killed him like a millennia ago, but yep. we haven't done it yet. In our time, and yeah, we'll learn. Uh, we'll, we'll go through this. But this is the first boss that you're fighting in the game. First actual boss. This is the last giant. This is kind of what he does. He just kind of stomps, and you kind of stay away oh. from his feet, and then you uh, hit him in hit him in the ankles. Yeah. Now, notably in the stream, um, when it's appropriate or, or when it just makes bosses a little bit easier to handle, you will be summoning NPCs and whatnot. Yeah, so. there are some. Not every fight is hard, is easier with uh, yeah. with the NPCs. Yeah, but sometimes it's, it makes things a little bit easier and smoother, and we are trying to get through this in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, you are not an expert Dark Souls streamer. No, so I'm are, not a speedrunner. You're speed pretty runner. good at the game, um, but not. I mean, not great. I don't think based so, on the super battle we. Something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sir Game Wolf says, unfortunately, not as knowledgeable of the lore of this game as Dark Souls 1 to 3. Well, I think I've actually got a book about Dark Souls here with me just a minute ago. I also did a little bit of digging in the lore wiki, so I'll read some stuff as, you know, we got many hours to go. So I will be sharing some cool information about Dark Souls. Uh, we got some guests coming up oh. later who might have some cool information about these. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, don't, don't worry about it, Sir Kayumul. Okay, hmm, rhetorical acrobat saying enemies seem a little bit more irritating. Oh, congratulations, by the way. You did it. Oh, yeah, I did it, yeah. 
<laughs> Joe Collar says, hang on, I thought Dark Souls 2 was more Assassin's Creed than Doctor Who. Mm. All right, did a uh, boss remaining. So Little everyone should there. think about this. Everyone who's, who's checking out and watching and doing cool stuff, thanks so much for being here, by the way, for, for joining us for the thing. But all of you should be thinking about um, how much money you want to give to charity for every boss that Danny defeats. <laughs> um just while you're here you know you don't you don't have to think about the total 41 but uh you should be thinking about hey how much money is it worth ten dollars per boss to give to charity i bet it is Werig has subscribed with prime thanks so much Werig, for that subscription that goes into the money bucket now what did you just buy there i bought leningrast's key and i bought a single firebomb um there is a blacksmith in majula and he's locked out of his house and it just so happens that this merchant, Malentia, uh, had his key for a thousand souls. So now that I've got enough money, I can go over here and open his little shop. We got, let's, uh, let me talk about some donations. We got Mary giving $5. Good try on the Pursuer. We got Michael H. Rip, do the Iron <laughs> King first, $25. We got Blaine, who says, uh, lots of ladle lure lads. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, that's a hard one. $25. Loose Cannon says, you really ruined that giant's ankles. Hope you're proud. $5. And Ninja Turtles says, giant extinction event, $25. I'm going to, you know, we've got a few people who are donating $5 a, um, a boss here. I'm going to challenge everyone. $5 a boss. You know, help us out. Help or, us get there. you know... Look, there's a lot of bosses. There are a lot of bosses. There are 40 remaining bosses. Five dollars if you can swing it. If that's if that's a, if that is a um, a boss too far, think about a smaller amount per boss. Four dollars. Yeah. Uh, we're above a thousand dollars. We're one tenth of the way to our initial target. Oh my god. Mm. I know. <laughs> there there was a time when I had hope that I could race this number that is coming. <laughs> And I you don't think I can do the it I think we're getting to the ladle. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I hope that we do. Now, tell us a little bit about your build here. I am getting enough dexterity to wield a rapier. That's priority one. Priority two is I want... I'm going to want enough intelligence and faith to uh, basically to... How do I put this? To utilize a, uh, a spell... Um, called Dark Weapon, which I'm going to get here in a little bit in a couple of bosses. So I don't want to carry too many souls, but I also, let's see, I'm trying to think. So that's the, this is just enough to have the rapier. I have, luckily, yesterday I kind of routed out my leveling order. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you made I, a document for us. Oh, by the way, I need to, uh, let me strike through oh. the first boss. Mm -hmm. So Leningrass, I got to rest to get him to the uh, to the blacksmith area here. Uh, oh, that's really funny. How much money to leave adaptability at twelve? I don't. Think, oh no, I don't think no amount. Of money to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that is the literal. That like by level fifty nine, I will have twenty nine adaptability. That is a. Uh, that is, is that like the quote unquote right number twenty nine? It gets you to fast roll. With as long as you have thirteen attunement and twenty nine adaptability, you uh, roll as if you had fast roll in Dark Souls one. Somebody has done the math on that. Yeah, I think I think I told you that oh. when I played it, and no, you were you, like, you "I can't roll me. through anything." No, you told me that it was important. I looked it up. <laughs> oh, um, hold on! I think something's happened. Something's happening. Oh no! Oh no! I don't know what's happened here. Let me look. Uh. Uh, hold on. I need to to uh, update. Yeah, uh, uh, Judah Ashta, Judah maybe. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Uh, just hang out in Majula and listen to the best music in the game for a while. Has donated two thousand and sixty nine dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no. wow, that is amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> it sounded like uh, there was something wrong in your house. That's how that's how big of an event this was. I was afraid that like someone had like <laughs> my my hand fell off. Your hand fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unannounced no so yeah uh thanks so much uh, um i was just requested to hang out in majula yeah let's hang out in majula. i am going to go over that. here we're going to take a break we're going to have people um li be able to listen to the uh the music here for a little bit mm -hmm. um and uh should I even should I turn up the in-game volume a little bit? No. No. Okay, we're gonna Several we're gonna leave quiet. it right here. I will be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk off this incredibly generous donation. What was the name on that? Uh, uh Judah Ashta maybe Judal Ashta J U D A U. Sorry if I'm uh, mispronouncing. You. Well, thank you so much for that donation. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a walk and <laughs> just and just wrap my mind around the fact that I'm gonna be playing with a ladle later. Okay. You're gonna come back or? Yeah, I'll be right back in like a minute. Okay. <laughs> I guess I won't talk either. Okay, I'm back. I've splashed my face. What is our percentage at? I don't have the Streamlabs shown, showing, so I don't um, see the progress bar here. 31%, friend. Oh, my lord. That is amazing. That's Thanks really so much amazing. For that for that donation. Um, by the way, we got more donations, too. We got from Anonymous, $25. Good luck, y'all. Also, Sunken King. So, uh, currently the numbers are actually sitting at Iron King, um, 25 plus 18. I can't do that in my head, but... <laughs> was that 40 something 43 you may need to pull up the calculator app on your i will i will <laughs> when the numbers get bigger okay I'll, mm -hmm. I'll bring the calculator into it when we need it uh, I, uh iron king's at 43 bucks or no i'm sorry uh, ivory king is at 43 bucks iron king is at 75 sunken king at, is at 75 as well so when you donate, luckily, um, the large donation did not specify a, <laughs> <laughs> a dlc <laughs> That's a, that's a real generous move on that. I mean, also shout out to them part. for two thousand and sixty nine dollars. It's pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, we got that, and we got another twenty five dollars from Scott. Uh, donation to underwrite modalities pursuer proposal. So you know, just being generous and helpful and fun there. Um, this is great. Uh, everyone's talking about how much they like for they like Majula. Majula's great. The JMAG says 31% uh, done, 69% to go. Uh, uh, Just made it on that one. one. <laughs> Joe Kohler in the chat says uh, when you walked away, that's when we hear a door slam in the background and a car speeding away. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought there's no way we're getting to 15. <laughs> you can't. You're like, oh, you got an idea for 15? I was like, yeah, how about this impossible thing? That's fine. <laughs> doesn't matter the same thing as a million well, i'm really glad that last night before you uh, went to bed you like routed it a little bit i was like you might want to check it out you might want to see how you do it and you did and uh, it paid off um let's see here checking out and that's the pursuer you devil you <laughs> i can't believe you did that so how long did it take you to like do that good that's actually pretty easy that's a pretty easy one all you all you got to do is you got to um stand right at that wagon like on the corner of the wagon he always leads with the charge attack and you swing and just head straight for the ballista oh yeah um bosses remaining 39 taking it back down Oh, 
All right, this is another big thing uh, that changed with Scholar of the First Sin. Um, in the original Dark Souls, the Dull Ember is in uh, the Iron Keep. So, like, you can't infuse your weapon until you, like, get to the Iron Keep. Now the Dull Ember is here, which, as, as you can see, is, like, pretty, pretty early in the game, all things considered. Sorry, I got a, got a tweet. It's the most important thing. <laughs> so, uh, you got any ideas about uh, the uh, Lost Bastille here? Ah, I like it. It's fine. Always get the fire bombs because that barrel is not a hundred percent consistent. Yeah, it's really frustrating. It can like go around the corner. <laughs> yeah, there's so many places that it can go. Um, unfortunately, you need the barrel. Um, mm -hmm. You need the barrel in order to even explode the wall. Yeah, because you um, can't do it with just a fire bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. Toggle. I had to get the torch at uh, at the um, the things betwixt. Um, kind of the tutorial area because that's kind of the first torch that you have available and you're going to light this sconce to get McDuff going. Hashtag get McDuff going. Hashtag get McDuff going. Uh, I like the... Uh, are they... They're not dwarves, right? What's that? Like, they're not like a fantasy, like a dwarf. These beings, McDuff? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, it looks like they just a... Have that, I mean, they kind of have that vibe, right? I mean, yeah. They. I think that some of McDuff's names, McDuff, and, you know, dwarfs probably um, lean into that Scottish thing, I guess, for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's kind of just a blacksmithing... I want, do do so, you reckon there? This is like a, a, an extended family of blacksmiths. Uh, what would their last name be? Oh, that's or tough. Chat's gonna need to help me out. Yeah, what are all the names of all the blacksmiths in Dark Souls Two? Please let us know. <laughs> in the chat. Um, here's uh, a fun so. fact about Dark Souls Two: if a chest is uh, wooden, mm -hmm. it can be destroyed, and if you destroy a chest. It's gone. Like, the, the thing inside it turns to rubbish. Yes. So. And you can blow them up, too, yeah? Um, yeah. You can damage them many different ways. Ooh, we got some more stuff. We got B BS with friends. Uh, it says, keep up the good works. Or keep, not works. Keep up the good work. $5. Thanks so much. And Mary says, $20 for two one-shot bosses so far. Ooh. I'm going to add our first guest to the call. Oh, wow. Let me figure out how to do that. Is this going to work? Hello. Hey, this kind of worked. It kind of didn't work. <laughs> Give me one second. I'll be right back. Oh, no. Oh, wait. There you are. Can Only you share, share a game with this? Seems like it's working. Oh, did it, did it end the uh, share screen? Yeah, because it created a new DM. Ah. Uh, interesting. Take two seconds. Luckily, we're uh, not in the middle of the boss fight. Okay, unfortunately, it's, it's, interestingly, it's taken away the application. Uh, but mm. I can share the screen. Just share the screen. So I, I can share the screen. Okay. Everyone, this is for your benefit. So you can, everyone in the chat, you can like that. All right. Let's All right. See. That the chat knows that it is I, Maddie Myers. That's how distinguishable my voice is, apparently. But I guess not everybody knows. I'm Maddie Myers. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Maddie. Yeah. Thanks so much. I love this. <laughs> so, are you a, a Dark Souls two stan? And what are what's your position on the other Dark Soulses and FromSoft games? You want to start with that, Cameron? Well, I think, I think she's asking you. Is it me? Well, okay, if it's Cameron, Cameron speaks for Danny. Danny's very busy right now. Cameron, okay. go ahead. 
Oh yeah, oh, he's infusing, he's infusing weapons. <laughs> Let's not interrupt him. Oh, uh, look, he's got to concentrate. I I'm mean, only looking at five different screens at one time, trying to nope. read off everything that's happening. Uh, um, the everyone says, "Oh, you can read the chat." I was going to say, everyone says, uh, "Welcome," but I think you probably already know that. Um, you, you're a, um, Maddie, uh, you're it. a little bit loud. Can you turn yourself down just a little just bit? Just did. How's that? Oh, it's great. You can tell the uh, audio professional over there. Um, yeah, I think we like Dark Souls 2. Well, let me say this. Earlier today, mm -hmm. Danny contacted me. First time we've spoken in years. Right. Years. Yeah. Well, this is the and first time any of the three of us have spoken to one another. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, that's the wild thing about it. Just the, the rapport. And... Uh, <laughs> And he said, you know the what? The first time any of us have even seen Dark Souls 2 <laughs> yeah. as well. He's just very good at games. This is the yeah. kind of thing. This is the day one stream. This game just came out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, but no, he said, hey, you know what? I've played more Dark Souls 2 than I've played Dark Souls 1 at this point. And I said, wowee, what do you think? And he said, it's better than Dark Souls. Whoa. Yeah. And I think we we have both Good for boy. a very long time been of the opinion that Dark Souls 3 is not good. I don't think we enjoy Dark Souls 3. Either. I Okay, I'm going to have to step in, even though I'm concentrating. No, I'm speaking for you. <laughs> I was told to speak for you. And I, I think Dark Danny, Souls... Danny, you passed the hat. You passed the hat to Cam, and it is what it is. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you don't get to advocate for My yourself. My precious opinion. Power of attorney. Yeah, Dark Souls' <laughs> opinions are basically power of attorney. If, if I think so, oh, yeah. It's... Yeah. Uh, you once you pass that hat along, it's kind of like you're signing your life away. Oh, like now, Cameron gets to decide how you die in the game as well, because oh, it's no. Well, and we all know if you die in the game, you die for life. Well, yes, that's true. You get taken off life support, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, it would be true. nice if that was how Dark Souls worked. If you got to kind of make those decisions about <laughs> how it goes down. Like at the beginning, it's part of the gift you get and you get to make like end of life decisions. <laughs> you get to be like, I want extenuating circumstances. <laughs> I want you to do absolutely everything you can to prevent me from going hollow. I'm going to need every <laughs> trick in the book. Or you uh, can just be like, nope, pull the cord, cut the tubes. Well, it, well, okay. It sounded like Danny. You wanted yeah, to I will say, I don't think Dark Souls 3 is a bad game. I no, think it is. Me zero stars. Uh, you don't like it. Uh, Doesn't his, his work. His Twitter ad is a at bad saving throw. If you want to share your opinions with, with Danny about this, um, um, I think that it is not the it is the worst of the three of of the Dark Souls mm. games. That Agreed. is my opinion. Agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's Bloodborne in there? Uh, I haven't played enough Bloodborne. I've played it once on stream. Oh, that's true. Yeah, with with like on a call stream. with you. That was my first yeah. and only playthrough. Uh, hmm. What about like Sekiro? One. Haven't played yeah. it at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little different. So who cares? That's it's what I good. said. Zero stars from me. Sekiro, no thanks. Hmm. The Pharaohs is Lockstone. Mm -hmm. Ten stars. Perfect. Good game design. Uh, well, we're... I've been playing Dark Souls One for the first time this past year, and I am obsessed with it. I have not played. Well, I played it like a few hours of Dark Souls Two many years ago. Um, but I, I didn't. I don't super remember it. Uh, but I love Dark Souls one, so I'm not sure if I'd like Dark Souls two because they're quite different. No, mm, they uh, they're different in some key ways and and similar in some key ways. I would say um, the uh, the ultimate cop out statement. But yeah, uh, <laughs> don't elaborate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the end. Uh, they're not as different <laughs> as some might say. I I, w I would say. Now, Danny, you want to explain what you just did? This is part of why Dark Souls 2 is really good, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's a locked uh -huh. door, and the only way to get it open is to hit it, which gets the attention of one of the enemies, and then they will come and open the door. Um, two Maddies... knock on the door. Yeah, you have to knock on the door to get in. It's great. <laughs> With your sword. Yeah. You know how you knock on a door? <laughs> clock, clock. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> own a sword, but if it. I did, that's how I'd open doors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we get, uh, here, here's the thing. If we get to $20,000 today, I'll buy Danny a sword. <laughs> yeah. With my own money. Danny, but, would you hang the sword on the wall? Oh, I, behind, used to I would a get a webcam a just so people could see it. <laughs> it I started to get sword. a little embarrassed about having a sword on the wall. And I will confess my most recent move. I uh, gave, gave the sword away to a guy on Craigslist. Um, because I, I was embarrassed about having it. Oh wow! What but kind of sword was it? It was 
Okay, so a friend of mine has a lot of swords hung on her wall. Like, that's her, her vibe. She just uh-huh. hangs swords on the wall. Mm-hmm. And um, at one point, she was like, what do you want for your birthday? And sort of as a joke, because we were in her apartment, I was like, how about a sword for my wall? And then she actually bought me a sword for my wall. <laughs> and so for many years, I had it there because I felt like I owed it to her somehow. Mm-hmm. Totally it's, obligated. Yes, of course. Um, it was a very uh, sort of like a twisty elven sword. It wasn't from anything. It was just sort of a artistic sword. Mm, gotcha. Uh... But it, yeah, I I don't know. It it really said something, and I'm not sure what. Well, if we <laughs> if we get to twenty thousand dollars by the end of this yeah. thing, I will buy Dania's sword a hand forged sword. Mm, I think it should be some sort of Dark Souls inspired sword, like something specific, perhaps like a broadsword. I think sword. it should be like some sort of like the ultra nerd object. So it should be like have a some master sort of, sword replica, for example. Like a, no, like a master sword replica that has like a pommel that references Star Trek. Okay, and, the chat like, is saying the ladle, though, and yeah. I feel like we should consider that. <laughs> that is, that is a good. That's a very good point. Okay, but not well, just any ladle. Out. It would you'd need to commission it from someone. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah we have you to need that handmaid's ladle, ladle <laughs> one to one replica. Uh, well, so here's the thing. The only way that we would get there, and I'll do it. I'll commit. I'll do it with my own money. At, wow. Uh, Twenty thousand. We'll find a blacksmith. We will commission this. <laughs> yeah, I'll yes. do it. But we know blacksmiths. Danny and I know a blacksmith who could do it. Uh, but here's the thing. We got to get that money. So you can go to tinyurl.com slash ds2 charity to give money to benefit the sylvia rivera law project um which is a great cause you can check it out you can go down below the the stream here to uh, click on that little button to donate as well as little as a dollar goes a long way we're trying to get to ten thousand dollars today we got a couple really cool donations and incentives one of them is if we get to fifteen thousand dollars danny will defeat the final bosses of this game with a ladle which is hard to do and yes. uh, we've also got some other fun stuff going on. So in your donation um, uh, message, if you put which DLC you want us to do first, we will rank the DLCs based on how much money each of them gets. Um, some of them are hard to do. Some of them are less hard to do. Um, Danny has a preferred sequence, and uh, you can mess with that a little bit if you want to do that. So check that out. Donate to the thing. Let me read some donations really quickly before we get back to our fun banter <laughs> we got bill jones donating 100 dollars. thanks so much to bill jones and hopefully a few more people donating some some stuff uh after my big call for donations so if you're checking this out and you're enjoying uh what's going on here think about kicking a couple dollars into the uh money hole mm. yeah kick them in the money hole that's what you say yeah kick that's them in. The thing. noted phenomenon <laughs> money hole <laughs> Kick what, what, in. what are you gonna do? Put it in a bank where the government can get it? <laughs> can know the government can know about it? No thanks. Don't let anybody know about it. Put it in the hole. Mm-hmm. So, Danny, true. what should should we go over your preferred DLC order? I feel like I missed this. What's what's your what do you wish people would be voting for? Okay, I was gonna keep this secret, but oh, because oh, because oh, yes. the, <laughs> around this i'm sorry for asking such a direct question of something that was clearly my, just kept under wraps this entire time no my preferred dlc order is the order of release i will say that okay so it okay. is sunken king uh old iron king and uh and then ivory king that's that's what i like i'm used to it mm. if people want to mess with that they can if people want to be nice and donate so that i get my preferred order that'd be even better Okay. Mm-hmm. But you can only vote for your favorite, so you have to kind of goose the numbers a little bit. No, you, you need to be you need to be galaxy braining it. You, you need yeah, to you wait need to until really... <laughs> you need to <laughs> wait until other people in the chat to donate certain amounts in order to get Danny's wishes to come true. But also don't because it's fun. It's fun to mess well, with. Well, look, Danny. if you have ten thousand dollars to give and you just donate <laughs> five thousand to my for, to Sunken King. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> three thousand to uh, Old Iron King, and uh, and and the remaining to uh, Ivory King. That that should work. Um, mm-hmm. So please do that, uh, someone. Or don't. Or, <laughs> or don't. don't. Or don't. Or don't. Uh, <laughs> speaking to something you were talking about earlier, Maddie. Um, mm-hmm. These game. This game is a little different, and I think the the biggest thing is 
how sluggish your character is at the beginning of Dark Souls 2. Um, the timing and uh, the iframes you have on your rolls at the beginning, because now that's determined by a stat, those are really different. They feel really different. Um, I would say that's, the for me, mechanically the biggest difference between this game and the first one. I don't know if Cameron right. has that experience. I think Cameron kind of interacts with these games in more of a, like his preferred mode of interaction is a narrative one. And so he would probably point out kind of the narrative and beat difference and the lore differences between the games. I think, right. I think he's just gone. He, he normally yeah. can't resist. I, I, I feel like I'm being was kind of pigeonholed here. Muted. He was actually just monologuing <laughs> at, like, at the war there and just baffled that we weren't responding to it. But uh, yeah. Right. Uh, as you well know. Yeah, I, I do. I think that I think that is right. I think that uh, I do think that the game's a little bit more sluggish, but that really doesn't bother me all that much. I think it's a little bit more uh, methodical is the word I would use for that. Um you know, I because feel like I don't. Dark Souls think... One is very slow, but that might yeah. just be because I don't mind playing with a heavily armored character and doing a more tank-like knight build. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I've been approaching it, um, just two-handing an, an axe and really methodically approaching Dark Souls One. So I, I don't think I'd super notice. There have only been a few bosses so far where I've I've had to take some clothes off and roll around in order to get through it. Um, but I've I've been pretty methodical. So I don't know if that would be my issue. I know the other thing uh, people say about Dark Souls 2, though, is is that it's it doesn't have the glorious map connectivity of mm. Dark Souls 1 that is something that's very pleasurable about that first game. Yeah, so in, in Dark Souls 1, kind of what happens... Oh, here I am, and it's it feels great, you know? Yeah, how, how far are you into Dark Souls 1? Um, I'm in Blight Town now. I just... Okay. I just beat... Well, I, I mean, I'm doing everything in a weird order because it's actually an open-world game. Nobody talks about this, uh, but it's an open-world game. So well, I beat they, the, they... the Gaping Dragon, and then I went all the way back to the little skeleton graveyard and beat the um, the Mimic guy, Pinwheel. That's what he's called, mm -hmm. that guy. And then now I'm in Blight Town. So, Swamping uh, around. Oh, yeah. So kind of the way that Dark Souls 1 works, right, is like you got you to gotta ring your bells... You, know, you mm -hmm. do your two kind of things, and those are kind of in different directions. And then you kind of pinch point back to what you do at uh, Sin's Fortress, which you yep. will do at some point. And yeah. Then I mean, I know that, some spoilers, so I kind of know I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, Go on. Well, well, no. And then after that, you know, it uh, kind of goes in like four different prongs, you know, out from the the Firelink Shrine, basically. So, like, you got to go down, you got to do Grave Lord Nino, and you got to do... Oh, uh, the Duke and uh, some other assholes. Who cares? Bunch of bosses, you know, bunch of bunch of areas that try to hurt you and make you exactly. feel bad. But um, then you beat them and you feel good. This game kind of starts from that position. Like this game has four prongs, basically. And you go out from the center point from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think some people find that more... Um, because you don't have to like route back through the midpoint to get to the next pieces. They yep. find it kind of less connected, but you could, you could play this whole game without teleporting if you wanted to. Um, it would just be a lot of backtracking, but also Dark Souls 1 is quite a lot of backtracking. It is, it is. Um, it's very so, Metroid-like, as the chat is noting. But that yeah, is another thing I like about it. Yeah, there's a lot of like, I think, you know, when people talk about like the teleporting problem of this game or whatever, there's a lot of selective memory about like what happens after you go to Anne Orlando. It's not like you're ever backtracking through Sin's Fortress. Uh, you know, that becomes purely like a teleporty kind of thing of going back to Fire Firelink and doing that stuff. So, yeah, and I don't um, even have teleporting yet, so I don't, I mean, I know I get it eventually, but it's, I'm sure it becomes a different game once I have that. Because mm -hmm. I don't have to walk everywhere all the time. Yeah, so I don't know. I think, I think the big pieces the big places of um uh i don't know uh, change that happen are are maybe um over uh over emphasized sometimes um i mm. will say that a big part a big thing that people talk about this game compared to the other games is kind of the reactivity of bosses and the way that bosses work and like how like shiny and astonishing they are and i think that's probably right i mean there are some bosses in this game that are just like not not very interesting and if you're only playing these games because it's like fun to fight bosses for you and i know that you know patrick klepik talks about this all the time um then this is probably not like the most exciting of the 
of you know, Soulsborne and these kind of games. But that's not what I'm in it for. You know, I'm in it for King Vindrick. So, um, you know, mm. I think it's good. This is my favorite one of all of them. Uh, no yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm in it for the bosses, although I guess that's ironic for us to say on a, a boss run stream. Very mm. boss but uh, we hate bosses. Um, it's true. Boss. No, we don't like them. <laughs> and that's why we're here to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Um, uh, wow. We, we got some donations. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, to, uh, that, was, that was stressful to watch. <laughs> Uh, uh, Joe Kohler uh, is uh, asking, does this run cover DLC challenge areas? I don't know. What's a DLC challenge area, Danny? Uh, this is all bosses. So, so yes. there are optional areas of the DLCs. We will be going in them insofar as we need to in order to be bosses. Yeah. Uh, well, Joe Kohler is asking that for $25 toward Iron King, putting Iron King as our first DLC currently. At $100. D has uh, donated $50 with uh, this phrase, beneath the white fire of the moon, love's wings are broken all too soon. We never we never learn. Hurt together, hurt alone. Don't you sometimes wish your heart was hard of stone? Share. Oh, yeah. That's share. That's share. Thanks so much, D, for that. The real yeah. dark souls of music. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, it's the so town, challenging. You have to listen methodically and just the really town where I live. This attention. is something. This is like good podcast material, and I've never shared it on the podcast. So this is the benefit of the stream. Um, uh, the town where I live has a placard on the ground because it's where one of the Almond Brothers proposed to share. Wow! wow. You can take your photograph there if you want to. Hmm, that's impressive. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Good for them. Uh, got a lot of cool chat, a lot of, a lot of good discussion. Um, yeah, a uh, lot of debates about the, the nature of various mm -hmm. Souls games. That's all I really wanted to do here. I wanted mm -hmm. to just get it started, you yeah. know? Just, I, mean, I just, I hope a bunch of DS3 fans hop in the chat and just really get on our <laughs> butt. Uh, yeah, Dark Souls 3, more like not interested in playing it again. <laughs> <laughs> You still only died two times. Is that true? I believe so. Hmm. Gotta get that counter up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's Especially a... for folks who are only donating for deaths, which I'm sure there are a few. I, I am well, too. A little fan in the chat says, as someone who's never played DS3, I'm certain it's the best game in the series. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no way to confirm or deny that. Oh, Sear says something interesting. I think this is a good, uh, I don't know, is this an analogy? It's a good analogy. Um, I do very much like, uh, Sear says this, I do very much like the connected nature of Dark Souls 1 because that stuff is my jam. Uh, but I do really appreciate how Dark Souls 2 feels like a full country you're traversing, while DS1 is like you're walking around Mount Olympus and that's it. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Yeah. Where uh, I Olympus am, I do think that the level design of Dark Souls 1, and this is a distinction that it's, it's just me using this terminology. I don't know if this is correct, but I think that the level design of Dark Souls 1 and that interconnectedness and the verticality is my favorite of the Soulsborne games I played. The environmental design of this game is my favorite. Just the way it look at this, even yeah. this right here, this is wild. It looks great. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and there are a lot of areas like this that are just really interesting to look at. That's the next boss that we can see through that window. You can shoot arrows at him from here. It, t it takes huh. about 200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is like a sunken castle. I think the, what, the Blue Sentinels were here? Is that yeah, it was kind of a holy place, if I recall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, it and, looks awesome. Uh, you know, climate change. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I mean, that's mainly what this game's about. Climate yeah. change in my dream lake? No. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Look at these big uh, guys. Not even phased by them. <laughs> Running by them. Who cares? These giants are cool. They're rad. Um, these little guys, you haven't fought one of them yet. Are you going to try to get this chest? No. Oh, okay. I don't even know what's in that chest. What? Who cares? <laughs> Chests? <laughs> we don't open them on this stream. <laughs> this is bosses only, baby. Those uh, hide knights are uh, absolutely brutal to fight, but really cool. They like feel kind of like an Indian. Okay, I need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, uh, missed it. Oh, oh, almost. Oh, if you sometimes if you dodge correctly, um, you can get him to step off the ledge. 
So, oh, fun. Yeah, there are quite a few bosses like that uh, in this game that you can kind of make them do a little steppy in the wrong direction. <laughs> do a little dance over the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Are you going to try to do um, parry skip or whatever down the hole? No. Okay. All of the tricks are so hard. <laughs> They're so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Good to be aware of them, though. Yeah. Just sort of acknowledge how impressive they are and how it'd be cool if we could do them. I don't even think that's not even like a speedrun strat. It's so inconsistent. I'm going to share a little pun from the chat with you, which is which is uh, good. Ninja Turtle says, "I call it cheese." No, I'm sorry. They say they call it cheese because it's fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's that's funny. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, sh shout it out, Ninja Turtle. That's very funny. Uh, we've got a lot of people in the chat. Thanks for everyone for tuning in, by the way, and just, just hanging out. Um, and also for donating. You can go to, uh, go right down, scroll down from this video, or you can go to honeyurl slash gs2charity to contribute to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project um, to support a good cause. And that's what we're raising money for today. And uh, I'll give more info about that in nine minutes because I do it on the half hour. Hmm. It's fun to donate, to though, because uh, the more you donate, the more more anxious, endearingly anxious Danny gets about the ladle run. It's, I so mean, I, I think that we've we've passed it. Now I'm just permanently at the level of anxiety <laughs> I'm going to be at because it is inevitable. I just don't uh -huh. see a way out of this. Much like death itself. It'll <laughs> it'll come for us all. And that's really what Dark Souls is all about, is just remembering your own mortality and, and how weak you are in the face of it. That's what the ladle's about, to me, at least. That is what the ladle represents. Etched on its handle is the little uh, <laughs> monologue that you just gave. Yeah, memento mori of this. Well, the one you're going to get that's going to be designed is going to have like a firefly quote on it. <laughs> what? It's going to have like Rick, oh, Rick from Rick and Morty is going to be on Don't it. Don't you take the sky from me, it'll say. I'm not, what's that from? That's from Firefly, man. You can't I've make never, the joke and not not even know what you're making the joke about. I feel like you're the exact person who knows the quotes from Firefly. And I don't know what that means one way or the other. It says it. it's not untrue, but I, I feel like I'm a reformed Firefly fan, you know? I thought that was I thought it was good at the time, but as a, as a human now, I recognize the uh, parallels with the Civil War that are discomforting the, there are the parallels with the civil war in that yeah that's the whole the chat do you not know this camera no i don't know anything about it i took one yeah. class in grad school where they made us watch the first episode and i was like i'm never watching Oof. this thing again oh it's rough i and plus uh just just the the main character being against sex work even though every other aspect of the show is about presenting a society in which sex work is not only legal but uh, socially accepted but the main character hates it and that's the guy you're supposed to relate to. Is that is Nathan Fillion? Deeply conservative uh, Malcolm Reynolds is the is the main character. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nathan Fillion. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, it what, rules. What did I say? Did I say Nathan Fillion? <laughs> yeah, I think you did. Okay. I, I don't know. I was I was busy at the time. Uh, Open Solar <laughs> donates sixty nine dollars. Uh, nice. Yeah. Thanks so much for doing that. If you want us to say nice. Uh, you can donate any kind of version of 69, you know, $6.90. Um, mm. Look at this elevator. Yeah, Love this huh? elevator. See, this is something good about DS2. These elevators are good. Where, where are we going now? What's the what's the boss that we're headed towards? Uh, right now, I'm actually just going to grab the No Man's Wharf uh, bonfire that's right mm. over here. And I want to do that just so it's going to be make it easier for me to head over there. I'm actually, where are we on our order here? Have you been keeping that up? Oh, yeah, yep. there we go. No, I see it. I see exactly where we need to go. So interesting little fact, there is an Estus flask shard uh, behind this statue. But I'm not going to wake the statue up right now for reasons. Uh, because mm. I, ne I need the fragrant branch of yore that is used to wake up that statue to get elsewhere. So, fun fact. I just went into like a full fugue state and didn't hear a single thing that you were <laughs> I saying. heard it, but it was uh, Greek to me, honestly. But I loved it. It sounded beautiful. So there are I two limited- Fragrant branch of yore? Is that what you said? Yeah, Fragrant there are two yeah. limited resources in this game that are basically keys. And one is the fragrant branch of yore um, and the other is, let's see, where am I going? I'm going back to Lost Bastille. There we go, tower part. And the other is a Pharos Lockstone. 
and fragrant branches of your unpetrifies beings that have been petrified. And usually those beings that are petrified are like blocking a doorway. So it's 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 basically a key. Yeah, we'll see one in mm. just a minute. Are, or actually, are you going to free the fella up here? Um, not right now. I'm actually going to go elsewhere. But I, I'm, I actually, I don't think I even have a fragrant branch of yore yet. I don't. So what I'm going to do first is I got to get one. So I got to... Got it. I got to... Um, do a fight that um, I, I failed the first time around. I got to do this legit. No ballistas up here. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, so the pursuer will kind of show up. Uh, this is a Scholar of the First Sin edition, right? Yeah. Of, of him just showing up. So he's a boss in the game that we defeated a little while ago with those ballistas. And he just kind of shows up occasionally to, like, wreck your shit for mm -hmm. no reason. And, Even after uh, you defeated him, he's just back? Yeah. He's back. It's... Uh, so the question it doesn't really is, seem like you defeated him, if if you ask me. But you know, mm -hmm. whatever you say, you know. <laughs> the cursed version, it's different somehow. Oh, okay. I like his Meta Knight vibes, really Very. sliding around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He uh, this he's kind of a controversial, I would say, thing about Scholar of the First Sin that he just kind of shows up. People don't really like this that you just got to randomly do a boss fight for no reason. But um, not even a real boss fight because the fights I'm doing for the stream are bo bo it's a basically it counts as a boss oh, oh, dang. Ooh. Started talking. It counts as a boss fight if there is a boss name under the screen, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this isn't a boss fight because there's no like the pursuer down there. Yeah. Um, let's see. I need to advance this counter up to three. Uh, got, a, got a donation. Intrepid Vector donates $5. Says, keep working for the great cause of supporting the SRLP and also ushering in the Age of Fire. I don't know what the SRLP is. Hopefully I'm not involved in a plot. Uh, Sylvia Rivera Law Project? Oh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I, What's the tiny what? URL again? Tiny DS2. URL slash GS2 Charity. Charity. There we go. Yeah, tweet that out to your billion followers, man. Once oh, again, right. I have been owned by my lack of Hubris. care in applying aromatic ooze to my radio. <laughs> so you're doing a, uh, we haven't really talked about, we've talked about your build a little bit, but you're doing a rapier build. So I, I really want to get you into a in-depth conversation again. Uh, as this thing just stabs the shit out of you. I know. <laughs> Uh, well, so this is a good thing, you know, Dark, uh, Dark Souls 2, we were talking about, you know, slower, not slow. Maddie, do you think this is slower or, or, or uh, less fast paced than Dark Souls 1? I think it's about the same. But again, I play Dark Souls 1 in a pretty slow armored build. However, I also run everywhere and just escape everything immediately. So mm. I'm not really sure what I kind of I'm, I'm kind of doing best of both worlds in terms of DS1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I run fast as many enemies as I can, but I'm also slow at the same time. What does that say about me? It says I'm a moderate. And that's why I love Firefly. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm trying to write like, a tweet uh, here. Uh, uh, thinking about space and steampunk, you know, the best of two things. That's Firefly. Uh, we got a new, uh, uh, not, a, not a new, I don't, uh, Got another donation. I don't know why I couldn't get that out. Uh, from Sid Minon, get this. Dark Souls 2. That's pretty good. Oof. Did we... Did, did we... Did we, we do didn't it? didn't count for shit. Didn't, do, didn't matter at all. I have to get this. This is the problem. <laughs> what is it? A fragrant Ooh. branch of yore. Oh, I thought you wanted the uh, Covetous Silver Serpent Ring, because that allows you to get new stuff, yeah? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to equip it. I think it's cool. Maximum. We are up to, uh, let me look here. Do, 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 $3,411. No, more than that. $3,436. Oh, my Lord. Whoa. Wowee. It's in the first hour and a half. Thanks so much to everyone who has oh, yeah. donated so far. And now I'm going to go into my spiel where I tell you how you can donate. You can go to tinyurl.com slash Dark Souls 2. No, GS2 Charity. Why did I just do that? <laughs> tinyurl.com slash. Slash. Spell, don't spell it out. Don't spell Dark Souls 2 no matter how badly you might want to. Don't yep. do it. Uh, GS2 Charity. You can also just scroll down to the below the video here. There's a little uh, 
little button you can hit that says donate. And uh, you can do that. We're trying to get up to $10,000 today. And um, any amount of money really helps us do that. We're doing it to the benefit of the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, uh, which is a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. Um, so it's a good cause and uh, something that we're willing to sit here and play Dark Souls 2 all day um, for. We got a couple cool donation incentives. The first one is that when you donate, you can put the your favorite Dark Souls 2 DLC right up beside it, and then we will rank order them based on how much money that comes in, and then we'll do them in that order. So if you really like the old the old Iron King, put old Iron King in there, and we'll do it first. Um, the second big donation incentive is if we get to fifteen thousand dollars today, Danny will fight the final bosses with a ladle, which is hard to do. So, uh, it, you know, it might take a long time. <laughs> so that's very exciting. Contribute some money. Do some charity. Yeah, money. contribute contribute to Danny's torture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun. He loves it. He chose this. I don't know why. But uh, here we are, you know. We're here with, I, we got, I, I try to treat this like the radio. We're here with Danny, who is playing the game. We're here mm -hmm. with me, Cameron, who is doing it. And uh, we're here with guest, special guest, Maddie Myers, if you were just tuning in. Maddie Myers Hello. of uh, many important things of Polygon mm -hmm. and uh, that's my uh, website. That's uh -huh. where I work. That, yeah, that's the one, and uh, of a very important podcast, a gaming. That's right. Podcast. Triple click gaming podcast. If you just can't get enough of the sound of my voice. There you go. Wow. Is that a kazoo? That was that was uh, that was my phone, which does have a kazoo as, a, as its, it's uh, been, uh, tone. Uh, no, uh, uh, Kazoo's been hanging out of the side of Danny's mouth the whole time. <laughs> he hasn't been using it. But it's like a cigar. <laughs> I mean... I was sounding that... off about your podcast. Thank you, know? you so much. I love the celebration. I've got you a... know, I love, the, I love the visual of just having a kazoo hanging out of your mouth at all times as well. And just times, times when you could, could occasionally pop in a, a little tune. Mm -hmm. Every time you die. <laughs> uh, we got $25 from Apple Cider Witch. This is such a yeah! great fundraiser and a great cause. Uh, I'd love to put my money towards Sunken King for the DLC. Great job, Range Touch. Love them Dark Souls. Thank you so much, Apple Cider Witch. Heck yeah. For Thank choosing you, Apple. Sunken King. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this is, uh, Lilifin is talking about the mutant age. Yes, yes. Mutant Ages is my other podcast. I have too many projects. I can't shout them all out. It's just going to sound like I'm going on and on. Mm -hmm. Well, someone's shouting them out for you. Little Finn in the chats. Uh, Thank uh, you, Little Finn. For you. Uh, the J Mags has also pointed out that I committed to, to buying Danny a sword at 20000 So that is technically also true. I don't, know if that's a dumb, true. <laughs> I don't know if that's an incentive necessarily. but Well, it's fun. I mean, we're all going to get to see pictures of it on Danny's wall, presumably, because it's also Danny has to hang it up. I feel like that's the yeah. other half of the incentive. Oh, no, and get a webcam so that when I stream, I will just have it, the only thing that will be in the frame is the ladle, just a live stream of the ladle on my wall. Right. Like not your face. <laughs> no. no face cam, just just ladle cam. Uh, people are talking about Luca Teal and how cool Luca Teal is. That's that's true. Luca Teal is a great character. Um some other stuff here. Ooh, look at this cloud strife looking sword. I know. <laughs> yeah, this is the what moonlight great sword. I think it is. It is definitely referencing that. But he's he's got the fake one. Yeah, it's not a real one. Um, but Wait, what? He's in a real. He's in a real. <laughs> Talk pickle. about sword replicas. Am I right? <laughs> I what know. a nerd. So, so someone can correct me uh, if I'm wrong here. But this character is carrying around this like famous, you know. Uh, Soulsborne game sword called the the uh, Moonlight Greatsword shows up in a lot of these games. Shows up again in Bloodborne, and uh, but he has a fake one. He doesn't. I don't think he knows that he's got like a fake replica of this cool sword. Um, huh. A lot going on in Dark Souls too. Wow. So is it like you find the real one later, and that's how you find out that that guy had the fake one? Or I think you can kill him and get, get the sword. I don't know. Someone tell me. Uh, someone let me know. I'm using um, a fragrant branch of yore. It's important. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. So it can unlock some pathways for you. Why not? Wow. Well, that's very helpful. You you woke mm -hmm. up this lady. Who knows how long? She, she might be from like a thousand years ago, though. She could have been frozen for a long time. Yeah, she doesn't really seem... I mean, she seems a little freaked out now that you're talking to her. 
Um, <laughs> people are saying you can get the real Moonlight Greatsword from a boss in the game, and yes, people are saying that he has a fake one. It's a family heirloom, but he's still like wrecking shit with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I is, mean, uh, yeah, if it is a replica, but it is also itself a real sword, even yes. if it isn't the sword. It's mm -hmm. a sword. Yeah. <laughs> Not the sword, but a sword. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's cool. Are you going to give her a bunch of uh, your gear? Here? Yeah, I'm going to give her the explorer's outfit so somebody can wear it. Because people I seem in chat seem to like that outfit. Yeah, it's a really fun little thing. So you wake her up and she's like, damn, I don't have any clothes. And you can say like, hey, take these clothes. You can give her anything out of your inventory. And then when wow. you meet her again, she's just wearing it. That's so nice. Yeah. And it doesn't presumably doesn't really do anything for you. You just get to feel like a good person. I think so. There, I don't think that there's any mechanical real stuff going on. So yeah, it's yeah. purely just being a, being a solid person. Mm-hmm. Though when I played this game recently, the only like spare gear I had was this hollow infantry <laughs> outfit. And so she was just wearing this like full set of armor <laughs> hanging out in, in Majula the rest of the game. <laughs> Joe Collar in the chat says, that sword isn't even real, I yell as it runs me clean through. <laughs> uh, oh, that's true. Garrulous Monolith in the chat says, her mentor is an NPC in the game, so she's not that too old. She can't be too old presumably, but he's also very old as well. So hmm. So she's probably kind of old. She's probably yeah. a statue for a little bit. Mm -hmm. She's older than she looks, I think, probably, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, or not, depending on how you want to measure time. Mm. That's true. Like, right. if you don't want to measure the time that she was frozen, then mm -hmm. oh, she's you're right. it's the same age. She's the appropriately aged, the exact normal mm -hmm. age. Yep. Oh, where's that exactly Basilisk the age from? she was. Basilisk came from the other room. Oh, that's well, who got she, her. That's who turned her stone. Yeah, I figured there had to be a basilisk somewhere mm -hmm. around. That's guy gags. That's, that's really environmental like storytelling, <laughs> folks. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, oh God, God, I says, hate these guys. I, I don't care for these basilisks. <laughs> don't like them. Let's see. So if you're in Blight Town in Dark Souls 1, you had to, did you get there via the um, the sewers? Yes. Mm, the depths, rather, I, I believe it's called. That's excellent. That's one of my. That is probably my favorite area in Dark Souls One. Yeah, Sitting, I mean uh, the the basilisks are of course near the gaping dragon, and mm -hmm. I, I certainly uh, faced with them many a time. Mm -hmm. It's why I. It's why I know I don't like them. Don't care for them. The uh, we got a few more donations. We got coffee donating for Sunken King six dollars and ninety cents. Hey, nice. Everyone's got to say nice. I said we'd all say nice. Come on. Nice. All right. Can you say nice? Oh, Can nice, right? nice. Sorry, I was uh, I was momentarily <laughs> distracted by looking at my route here. <laughs> just, just. Wow. Uh, oh, just, okay. Somebody's yeah, just, playing the game, I guess. <laughs> just delightfully looking at it. Oh, perfect. Uh, rhetorical acrobat. <laughs> Giving us five dollars, uh, saying Ivory King first is miserable, so donating toward to Ivory King first. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> Great. Uh, and then we got uh, Colin giving a hundred bucks. Thanks so much, Colin. Thanks to everybody, but thanks for this big donation from Colin. Keep up the good work. We're gonna try. Um, so we're oh, no. right along. No, no. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, take that death counter. Death oh. number four, I think. It's four. Wow, four. That's more deaths than there are Dark Souls games. Oh. Oh. Making me feel great. <laughs> Jeez. Ouch. Um, yeah, maybe we can institute, you know, Austin suggested this last year, and uh, we didn't do it because we're, you know, we're not good at, <laughs> at uh, doing charity streams, apparently. But, uh, you know, we could implement, uh, like, 69 on the 6th. So mm. at, the, at the sixth minute of every hour, everyone donate six dollars and ninety cents right mm. that's fun is that fun I yeah mean, it can let's tell me if that's fun it's been a while since i've had it but it sounds like fun i've been playing a or lot of dark souls it so at the ninth minute past every hour is that does that make sense was that because an sense? hour is 60 minutes oh, oh that's way yeah. better than night yeah 60 at nine. Oh, that's good yeah 69 on the nine. Mm. <laughs> That's good. All right. So now we truly are hour. a radio show. 69 on the nines yeah. here at uh, uh, Dark oh, I gotta get my sound. Charity. Let me get my sound poured together. Bonk, bonk. Ooga. <laughs> 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 
Beedly, beedly, bee. It's a very specific type of radio y'all are evoking. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's morning zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Woman woke up with a dog in her car and, oh, didn't know what to do. <laughs> Let us know what you would do if you woke up with a dog in your car. Is this just <laughs> King things leaking into our Dark Souls? <laughs> yeah, we, we do get into this territory more often than maybe we should. <laughs> We're, We're making, making our it. intern Danny here do a real torture run, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna have to play with Leda later. <laughs> we don't pay him to do this. At Ten o'clock, he's gonna be on the ladle. Oh, <laughs> give me some soup, Danny. Oh. I don't know if that's everybody's experience with the morning zoo, but as a kid, I remember like, people abusing to Maddie in the interns. Morning. On yeah, the people are people abusing interns. I, I'm from New England, so I listen to Maddie in the morning. Um, Kiss one oh eight FM, mm -hmm. uh, and they had an intern who they would constantly make do just horrific things, like I don't know, wear weird stuff and then go to a public place and like humiliate himself publicly in some type of way. I don't know. Morning zoo shows were maybe not ethical. We mm -hmm. had 99X now. was like the big one, which was like the alternative station in the late 90s for the Atlanta area. And in, for 99X hit like kind of national notoriety for like just making shit up like that. And so they would they would do like morning zoo stuff, but it would be like. Um, so the chat's yeah. asking what morning zoo is, by the way. So perhaps oh, it's we like should this go, kind go of like bunch detail. of weirdos uh, like doing. Um, <laughs> Like just torturing each other yeah. yeah it's it's the soundboards that that cam and i were just making fun of uh it's it's basically like so remember uh having a morning commute remember that mm -hmm. remember driving in the morning to a job this would be the radio talk radio you'd listen to and it would be trying to be funny uh but yeah. it wouldn't be of course <laughs> um yeah well so, so ours uh eventually like devolved into one of the hosts uh, pretending that he got in a road rage incident on the way to work and like had his uh, got hit in the face with a wrench. One Whoa. of them, uh, one of the things they did was uh, have a bet and making someone cut off a finger, and then they pretended like they went through with it, and it was like this whole like wow. scandal that they didn't really cut their finger off. Yeah, it was like it was the, the, the late nineties. They didn't do it. Yes, I feel like it would be a scandal if they had done no, it. Like no. what? No, so it was like, people want blood, Maddie. It's the Wow, same. okay. So people uh, were like, I would listen to this show in which the hosts pretended to cut off one of their fingers, exactly. and it didn't really happen, and I'm pissed, and I'm not listening anymore, exactly. and I'm angry. Yeah, so it was not, not as fun. Uh, Sir Katie Wolf in the chat says, for anyone not familiar with GS2, Danny is currently talking to a severed head. Yeah. It looks good. I he's, love it. He's been it's here cool. for so long, he's, he's kind of gone completely zen. He just looks at the night sky. And he's warning me, hey, my body's still out there. And you need to watch you need to watch out for it because, oh. because it's it's it knows only murder. He used to be a mercenary and he actually fought for Vendrick, but came from a different kingdom. So he's had a lot of time to uh of course he wow. gives me the decapitate gesture. Um <laughs> he's had a lot of time cool. to just like think about his life. Um yeah. and uh Probably one of my favorite NPCs in this game. He's a possible summon for several fights if you kind of complete his uh, his little quest. Um, really cool stuff. But anyway, um, when you complete his dialogue, where he tells you what I've just told you, he um, he's really thankful that somebody's taken the time to talk to him because no one's done that in a very long time. And uh, And he gives you his helmet. Kind of his only possession. Aww. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> other than himself. Which, I gotta read this, but uh, rhetorical acrobat in the chat says, my body is fucking brolic and sick. I'm chill, but my body, his <laughs> biceps are fucking huge, <laughs> man. <laughs> I like the idea of a guy who's like constantly talking up his body. But a severed uh, head talking up his body. A severed head. He, yeah. He's so cool. He can dunk. It's rad. <laughs> yeah. Be on the lookout, too. man. I got oh, no control over that guy. You know, I'm really surprised that uh, there wasn't more um, uh, anger about you uh, being um, dismissive of Sudoku, Danny. Boy, Ooh. you're really just bringing it up again, huh? I, I'm bringing it up because it, it's almost like uh, someone talking up their body, a separate head talking up their body, you talking <laughs> down um, uh, Sudoku in that, that recent 
episode people can go check out. You can go to youtube.com slash range touch to see everything else we're up to. <laughs> Cameron. Welcome back to Danny Gets Tortured. <laughs> Intern Danny doesn't like Sudoku. We're going to make Danny drink this gallon of milk while he plays <laughs> Dark Souls 2. It won't be on stream, but after the stream, I'll be forced to do a Sudoku puzzle for every time I died. You think the numbers are going to add up? <laughs> Wait, why don't you like Sudoku, though? Because it's always that they always add up. Every every line always add up, adds up to the same number, and the whole block always adds up to the same number. That is the really, game. Yes, yeah, you're really describing how the game works. <laughs> what is up? <laughs> I, I hate that math is internally consistent. Well, there's, and there's, I want it to stop making sense. But there's no surprise. You know what it's going to add up to. Chaos. He wants a dice roll in the middle of Sudoku. <laughs> Damn, you can do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. What about Minesweeper? Do you have a similar issue there? Oh, that's yeah. random. Well, yes, but it always adds up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like the well, numbers. yeah. I mean, in the in the sense that in the sense that there's only a certain probability that something can happen, and it's either right or wrong. It's very binary in that way. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, Minesweeper's okay. There's more action than Sudoku. <laughs> That's true. You can die. Yeah, you Maybe can. Maybe Sudoku should have bombs in it. What? <laughs> what then? The uh, the thing is, I th I do think Sudoku does kill people. It's just it happens to coincide with them like naturally passing or otherwise passing while they're doing one. But but I, you I would like... argue in that instance, Sudoku did kill the person. Oh, I, I, here's the thing: Did they die of Sudoku or with Sudoku? Who knows? <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know how we got here. I feel like we were just talking about Sudoku, and you were like, "Sudoku does kill people," and I don't. <laughs> well, that's the you were you were asking about Minesweeper, the game about getting blown yes. up with mines. Well, okay. but not literally. <laughs> that's I've not. Got a, uh, I got a donation to read. <laughs> okay. Detour this conversation a little bit. Uh, we got Allie, who's giving us twenty six dollars and sixty six cents. Dark Souls Three was my favorite Souls experience. I also just got sunscreen in my eye. Wow. Wow. Here. Rip. Yeah. Getting sunscreen in your eye is rough. It's because it's oily. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's got, it's got chemicals in there that protect your skin. Getting like it your on eyeball? your sunglasses, also bad. Very bad. Very Just hard to get it off. Really. Yeah. Hard to get off that lens. I don't know the last time I wore sunscreen. Hmm. I'm not really an outdoor guy. It's true. Well, you're, you're out there more now that you got that garden, right? Just get sunburned. You know, it's mm. probably not good for me. Yeah, I wear sunscreen every single day. Every day. Even Don't when you have no job. plans of going outside? That's right. Oh. Put it on my face every Skin day. Care. Wake up, put it on my face. That's um, what I do. That's remember, why I'm never going to age. At nine minutes after the hour, we're going to do 69 <laughs> at the nine. <laughs> which you should, yep. you should give $6.90 at the six, the ninth minute after the hour, because that's fun to do. I'm trying to that's drum right. up some some uh, uh, movement. I'm trying to yep, drum and up if, some if, donations here. If you've got a little more cash on hand, you could give a whopping sixty nine dollars if you, you care could. to. You could. You could do that. You could also like multiply it in weird ways. You could give like uh, I don't what six hundred ninety dollars uh, and sixty nine cents. I don't know. No, I was well, that's the buy just hundreds. I was thinking like times two. Times oh, three, but I don't really know how to do right. That. So then it's not sixty nine anymore. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but well, it's divisible by it, and that's the thing. Uh huh. Hey, yeah. there's a talking cat in this game. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. She speaks French too, so canonically, Dark Souls Two <laughs> happens. She says enchanté, so canonically, Dark Souls Two. There is somewhere near Drang Lake. There's also France. Hmm. Um, let's see, we got a couple of new donations here. We got Seer giving $100. Thanks so much, Seer. We got Happy to Donate for a Good Cause while I'm watching a good, good game. Putting this towards the Iron King DLC so we can have a chat with the best boss, the Fume Knight. People love Fume Knight. People love Fume boss Knight. In the game. Grace says, I'm committed, I'm committed to being nice to Danny, so I'm voting for Crown of the Sunken King. $20. Thanks so much, Grace, for Ooh, your donation. Thank you. What's our what's our uh, in the running in terms of which DLC is winning at this oh, time? That's a good point. A good question. So Iron uh, uh, Ivory King, I'm not even going to bother doing the math because it's very low. Iron King is in the last. 
in the in last. the last. In, what, what is the right? Uh, I'm my language <laughs> center is already breaking down. <laughs> I've said so much, so many words already in two hours. Uh, in the, you could say the in, lead, last place, in last place. That would place. work. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, Ivory Crown in uh, last or Ivory King, whatever it is, Snow Place is in last place. Iron okay. King, I believe, is in first place with um, two hundred dollars. Sunken uh, Crown Water Place is in um, second Middle. place with a um, hundred and twenty-six dollars and ninety cents. Okay. Yep. Is that the correct order, Danny? I've already forgotten. Um, uh, no. I, I am glad that Ivory is not first. I will say okay. that. It's if not ideal, make, but it's, it's it's not terrible. If you want to make Danny's life harder, mm. give some money. And we do. And and, do, and uh, make it Ivory Crown first. The end. Hmm. The chat's doing some math, uh, dividing sixty nine by various <laughs> things. Okay, great, good, 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 good. Good to see. Good to see. Or at least I assume that's what's happening. Thirteen eighty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great. Great work. All right, we got thirteen eighty. I'll write that down. Twenty seven sixty. It's really funny. Every time we do one of these streams, I just end up with a sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper covered in numbers. <laughs> that after we do this, I have no idea what they mean. Just looks like a beautiful mind in your bedroom. Just <laughs> yeah, numbers basically. everywhere. Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh, wow. all right, all right. <laughs> Finally, ooh, look so at if this no guy. No one goes for the blonde. Look at this scorpion. Yeah, he's cool. I do remember that from His beautiful mind, by the way. Wow, I like Wait, this guy. Wait, you can guy. talk to this dude? You have to buy the Ring of Whispers from the cat. <laughs> and then what put it that? on in order to talk to him. Whoa. Modality says, yeah, this guy rules. <laughs> it's true. He does rule. And everything about this level, like, oh, there's a little, like, arena. So I'm going to fight him. So I think 90% of players just come down here and, like, stab and him. And hit him? Down. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Modality you can just talk to guy. him. So here's a question. Did Aldia create this guy? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was created by Aldia. We'll talk about Aldia later, but Aldia did all kinds of uh, shenanigans with mutating people and sticking animals and, and people together. And I think Aldia made the dude. Hmm. Wow. Or this is a real full metal alchemist uh, sad situation here, huh? Or is it possible that uh, the same person that created the Duke's dear Freya, like the Duke, created this person right that that Could seems be. possible to me but i i think aldia continued that same work because he was studying seath's work and that's what sir Wolf is saying i thought this guy was seath's creation could be could there's be some lore consonants between the duke and seath for a whole bunch of reasons yeah oh uh, yeah seath is the duke mm -hmm. I, there's an upside down dragon i mean come on um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know I, certainly you're right we don't know Maybe these games aren't connected. Maybe they rhyme more than they are in concert with one another. So he wants me to kill his ex. Well, his betrothed. His, his bet fiance. Well, fiance. I don't. Th I think they're separated right now. <laughs> but they're still technically betrothed. Mm. Things went awry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one way to put it, my guy. Hmm. <laughs> Everyone should start saying that when they break up. When things went awry. Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, boy. She came uh, after we, me, we and we've been locked in combat ever since. Still engaged. Wow. Well, you never want to close the door, you know? <laughs> the wounds we exchange are never lethal. What a way to discuss a breakup. <laughs> People should start busting this out. Just bust out this monologue every time. Like, things aren't working out. I have something I want to share with you. And just start reading. <laughs> Dude, the past is a distant fog. My name is Tark. Oh, can you summon this dude and get him fighting and stuff? That's why I'm talking. So if you talk to him, he will aid you in the battle against his ex. Against his fiance. <laughs> Which is just absolutely wild. <laughs> Uh, we got a couple more donations. Ninja Turtle says, a talking cat! Four twenty, four dollars and twenty cents. Thanks so much. Hendrix Trog says, gonna donate to any boss that best fits Danny's Star Trek classification. Mm. That's six dollars and ninety cents. Thanks so much to Hendrix Trog for that. Uh, man, you might not know this. Very famously, Danny once proclaimed that there are only two types of film. They're actually kind of like moving image. Yeah, there are two uh, genres of moving image. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and that's a scary movie or a Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And everything ah, can be categorized okay. as one of yep. those two. Yep. 
Um, we can just run some in front of him real quick. Let's, uh, you know, let's see here. Um, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Star Trek. Okay. Mm. Uh, all depends on, also maybe depends on your relationship to like colonialism. Mm -hmm. but for, for me, but that's for a Star you, Trek. I, I could, I okay. would, I would seed if somebody was like, hey, that's actually a scary movie. Scary. Okay. Uh, uh, Princess see. Bride. Yeah, Princess were great. Oh, mm, I think that might be in scary movie territory. Really? Yeah. Rodents of unusual size. Yeah. There's, There's all that trickery with the the, the wine. poison. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. Scary. Hmm. Yeah. Pity Chitty Bang Bang. Star Trek. Yeah, that makes sense. What? what? Oh yes. <laughs> Is this him? Man Scorpion Turk! Yes! Oh. I wish my first name was Man Scorpion. <laughs> I like that they were too were like, Man God, what do we call this guy? We're don't, Man Scorpion. All right. Don't yeah. call me Mr. Tark. That was my dad's name. <laughs> call me Man Scorpion. <laughs> if you like Man Scorpion Tark, you should go to tinyurl slash DS2 charity. Donate some money here. Oh, it's his ex. She's small. Yeah, she's just in the ground. <laughs> yeah. Nothing weird about that. Partially. Real Kitty Pride situation here. Oh. oh, oh, love it, love this. Is there an X, uh, an X man or or a X character uh, who is partially a scorpion? I can't think of one. Uh no. I feel like the Mojo Verse has some aliens that are kind of scorpion like. There's a lady with a bunch of arms in there. Mm -hmm. There's also aliens in the Marvel universe, so I feel like um yeah you can kind of go with there. There's the Brood. Those are some. Sort of mm -hmm. scorpion-like uh, aliens. Yeah, they got those like sharp mouths. Yep, and they can just stab you and yeah, yeah from, they take uh, over your brain, kind of like the aliens and alien. Yeah, who is that? Uh, they go to the Brood universe. I was reading some Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. They're going to a place where the Brood mm -hmm. took over. I mean, alternate yep, universe. Yep, that'll happen. That's what the Brood does. You gotta take over if you're a bad alien. Yeah. You gotta. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, Maddie, you haven't necessarily, uh, in Dark Souls 1, confronted a uh, boss similar to this in a way. No, mm -hmm. I haven't yet met a scorpion. Mm -hmm. I hope I do someday. So I this is a little bit of a riff on, a, uh, on an enemy. I, I, th I think most people would acknowledge. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Ooh. I think that you got to defeat one, someone like this to ring a bell. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Cameron going Love from incredulous to like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. ringing a bell. Yeah, Everybody right. does. It's mainly what you do in that game. People who don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every, everyone is disappointed in me. <laughs> in <a chat. laughs> Joe, Joe Colors is classic half lady, half insect archetype. Oh. Half I would say it is. I go. feel like a sexy lady who's also kind of a bug is a thing. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. That's um, someone's, like, thing. I think I accidentally hit the wrong button, but then I minus twice, so it should be 37 at this point. Uh, well, let me look here. Let me do some math. You didn't count down for some reason. Uh, we've defeated four. There's 41. So, yeah, that's right. Okay. Let me do a little strike through, and then I have some donations to read. Yeah, and um, you're going to close out my section, I think. Yeah, almost, almost to the to the top of the hour. But let's yeah, let's round good. off some well, donations. Actually, how much how much money in the next five minutes would it take for you to hang out for another thirty minutes? Hmm. Do you have? A, I say... mean, you might have a hard out, and you can't do that. I don't have a hard out. I don't have a hard out. People are well, willing if, to donate enough. If 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 we get what a hundred dollars in the next five sure. minutes, you'll hang out for another half hour. Sure, I will. If you want sure me to be here for another? Or half or hour. let's say let's say you don't. Let's say you're really irritated. <laughs> I would say keep that hundo in your pocket for a little second, and then I'll be gone, mm -hmm. and then you can just throw it throw it in the hole right after I leave. <laughs> but definitely true. still donate it. That's true, one way or the other. Yeah, but, I mean uh, either yeah, either way, get that hundo in the hole. Yeah, you can you can buy some more Maddie's time. Uh, you know, you we'll, can we'll hold on to each one oh five, if that's okay. Um, sure. Okay, so we got a couple uh, good, great donations here. Uh, they're all good donations, but these are this is a pretty big one. Unvincible says, thanks for the fun stream. Happy to chip in for a good cause. My vote's for Sunken King first. Need to write that down. I just love its vibes and architecture. Gotta do lot. some math on that 8.5 by 11 later. Gotta. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Uh, 
but that's from Uninvincible, Uninvincible, $250. Oh. Whoa, holy shit. That, that axe does a lot of damage. Nice. That was almost $5 right there. I know. Un but Uninvincible, $250. Thanks so much for that. And that's $250 for Sunken King, which gets it at the top. Sparkle Tone says, when you see her, please tell Lukachil I'm gay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's $69. Thanks so much to Sparkle Tone. And Jacob says, oh, the parchment used as the backdrop for miracles in Dark Souls 3 shows a scene of Gwyn addressing an audience of Silver Knights accompanied by, of all his children, none other than Gwendolyn. Wow. <laughs> and, and that it was poetic. Is, yeah, for $6.90. Thanks so Love much it. to Jacob for $6.90. Thanks to everyone for donating. A couple and, of uh, nice donos there. Yeah, so let's check. But those all came in before buying more of your time. Of course. No one of course. has done that. A person would need to note in their donation that that was <laughs> what they were donating for. They would. I also had them pulled up beforehand. Uh, you've got uh, four more minutes to donate. We want to get up to $100 in this next five minutes. Get another $100. To keep Maddie on for another half hour. Mm hmm. And, and if you don't manage it, I'm going to go to REI, buy a life jacket. Ooh. What you got going on? You're going to go, uh, what, ski? Here's the situation here. Got an inflatable kayak. Not to brag. Pretty excited about it. Wow. It's pretty cool. Got to get a life jacket, though. Yeah. So the donate link, tinyurl.com slash DS2 charity. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at this huge <laughs> sphere. <laughs> Whoa! You, you know, I feel like there aren't enough spheres in the natural world that <laughs> just yeah. roll down yep. things. Yep. It's more of a Dark Souls slash Indiana Jones situation. Yeah, it's a huge missed opportunity by nature. I know. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, well, also, maybe it didn't start out as a sphere. Maybe it rolled a lot and it became one over time. Mm -hmm. Erosion. Some sort of dirt slab that, that over time. <laughs> Do you think every Yeah, like, it was actually slab? just a slab and yeah. it was like good on good on good on. And then thousands of years later, it's a beautiful sphere. Mm, just rotating. Boom boom boom. <laughs> Down the, it, it dreams in its in its uh rock mind of what it could be doing. Mhm. Mm Danny, who are we uh, cool. who are we on the mid to here? We are on the way to the Duke Stirfreya. The next boss is going to be Magus and the Congregation. Um, and the reason why we're just kind of rushing there, and then we'll kind of take a little break and, and do some leveling up, is the resource I need to level my rapier all the way up is kind of uh, most plentiful and most easily acquired in this next area. Mm. Uh, we, we've got ooh, about 20 bucks to keep in Maddie on. Ooh. We've got two more minutes. You can go to tinyurl.com slash DS2 in order to donate that next $80 to keep Maddie on for another half hour. <laughs> Look at these spooky scarecrow guys. They're, they're, uh, they're laborers. Yeah. yeah, they're just miners. Wow. This is uh, Dark Souls 2's uh, Cornwall. <laughs> uh, after uh, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher came along. It's a mm. huge, huge problem. That's right, England. <laughs> I'm we sure know you, history. I know what you're doing. I we know about all the awful things, things you did to those miners. A few decades wall. ago. We know about it. Yeah. I'm educated. Ooh. Oh, these spiders are great. They're so cool. You know what's even better? They're, this entire area and all of these spiders, they don't care as mm. long as you don't open this one chest. Yep. Just mm. FYI, everybody, a uh, little bit of a spider zone coming until the next boss. And so if you wanted to not look at it, maybe listen for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's got big spider spider issues here. Uh, yeah. Arachnophobes in the chat. Keep those eyes tightly <laughs> shut. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know. You can just listen for a minute if you need to. Yeah, they oh, are sculptulous. We've got it. We've got it. Here we go. You're what, uh, maybe staying on for another half hour. Oh my goodness! Whoa! We got, we got, got several here. Uh, oh my god! Correct. No, up. no spiders in this fight. We're going to be fighting a little, uh, just a church study group. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Resident Evil Four all of a sudden. What is this? Yeah, we got some cult, cult members they here. It. They stole it from Miyazaki. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, there's another kind of church study group later in this game, too. Uh, when you're uh, in the 
the little dark place where the uh, the people tell you, hey, don't use light here. I forget what that's called. The crypt. Yeah, the crypt. There's I like how it's just literally called the congregation. Like, they're really yeah. not beating around the bush here. You are and just the killing magics. the members like of this church. Um, okay, so I need, I need to read some of these donations. We got Verdicts. Keep Manny on the stream. Let's add this to Sunken King. So we got another $10 for Sunken King. Um, thanks so much to Vertex. We've got Anonymous. Thank Early you. 69 on the 9 to keep Manny on. $69. Uh, $6 <laughs> 69 on the 9. Heck yeah. Uh, thanks so much for Anonymous. We got Ju Juda, Juda Ashta. Guy, I got, I got a. Can you send me a DM maybe <laughs> on Twitter to tell me if I'm saying this right? Uh, I feel like you've donated enough money where I need to know. But, <laughs> yeah, we need to know. Um, uh, uh, Twitter.com slash C Consulman. If you want, very seriously, send me a DM and I will check it. <laughs> Um, and uh, has donated a hundred dollars to keep Maddie on. Whoa! Put all of the donations to it. Thank oh, you. This is a problem. All of their donations, in retrospect, to Old Iron King. Whoa! Oh no! <laughs> that means there's twenty-one hundred dollars. Two thousand one. What? That is <laughs> a wild. I, I, should we allow people to retroactively? I think I they've don't. donated enough money. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. And they, also, I, I would like I'm, to point I, out Modality's contract about me beating the Pursuer on the first try <laughs> was retroactively altered. <laughs> that is true. We alter contracts retroactively all yeah. the time here. Yeah. We don't care. It's dark if you've agreed to something here. verbally, the other person can make <laughs> you do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, well, they're on a delay. I mean, you know, stream, <laughs> stream chat's weird. Okay, um, we got uh, even more. Moose says, thanks to you for streaming. This is my favorite souls. Would like to put my money towards Sunken King. Mm. Uh, impressive number of king things in this game. That's actually true. A hundred dollars. Thanks so much for that. Sunday afternoon one says no life jacket for another thirty minutes. This is just a pure life jacket hatred donation. <laughs> wow. Of uh, sixty nine dollars. Wow. Thanks so much to Sunday afternoon for that. Michael H donates ten dollars for Maddie and for Sunken King. So wow, you know this is interesting. So much Iron King's everybody got, like, in the chat. You know, Iron King's got some like uh, deep pocketed donors, but Sunken King is uh, uh, the donation for the people. Mm. Yeah, you know. Sunken King's the proletariat's DLC is what <laughs> yeah. we're learning here. Absolutely, the, work, so. the workers' DLC. Uh, remember, for your donations, uh, you can go to tinyurl.com/ds2charity uh, to donate. Uh, we've got a couple of really cool incentives. If we hit fifteen thousand dollars before we get to the final boss of this game, uh, then Danny will defeat the final boss with a ladle which is going to be very fun. Very easy and for Danny, who has yet to kill a crystal lizard. Um, mm. Oh, it's going to be... You're going to need to upgrade some weapons at some point, yeah? Yeah. You got some souls um, in the bank. Other do donation incentives are to... Uh, when you donate, put in the notes which DLC you would like us to do first, and then we will rank order those at the end, uh, based on how much each uh, has been donated. I love this area, by the way. It is so cool to me. This like village that's like in the rock walls and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think it's rad. very cool. This this room right here is so cool too. Look at this Resident Evil looking. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is we're getting full on into the uh, the spider area. That's the next. That's all that we're going to be seeing in a little bit. So just letting people know. These people uh, don't care about you. They're just doing their job in the spike pit as one does. And it's mm -hmm. only when you try Mining to spike. it's only when you try to get the company's resources that they that they care and they're trying to But they they don't realize that's not their war. That's the Duke's war. <laughs> it's too if bad there isn't a way to awaken to that. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. Just, really. You know, if only if only you could talk if only we could talk to them. If only we could talk to the Dark Souls enemies, you know? <laughs> the, the classic review. Mm hmm. Uh, we got another <laughs> few donations coming in here. We got uh, from Scott, we got $20. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, we got a donation from another anonymous, but it doesn't have an, an amount. Maybe I can look at that up. I think there's a little bit of a glitch here sometimes. Uh, we got a donation from B that says Will this Dark Souls run be embodied by Balthazar, Tonk, or Eleanor? Who can Ooh. say? Thanks for doing this, and yay, Maddie. Fifty dollars. Thanks so much. Wow, we're really cleaning up much. here. Yeah. Look at us go. We are above uh, forty-five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. We're almost we halfway. Are. That's why. Four thousand five hundred twenty-seven dollars and twenty-seven mm -hmm. cents, or twenty-one cents. Sorry. 
Oh gosh, I messed it up. It's six nine on the nine. We messed it. We missed it. We were talking about other stuff. But it's still kind of there. People could have donated though. People could have still donated. They, they have. That's how I. Okay. Do. Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. Thank goodness. We're gonna be better at it. I'm gonna set an alarm on my phone. Oh but, my god. Uh, Is it gonna play a song? Should it play like a fart noise? I can just I can just make the noise. Gotta have some type of morning zoo action for sixty nine on the nines. Okay, so gotta I'm have like a timer. kazoo. Retroactively donate six nine on the nine. That means six dollars and ninety cents at the nine minute mark of the hour. Go back and do that one minute ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm gonna set I'm gonna set a timer for fifty minutes, and it's gonna surprise the shit out of me. Well, technically, you should set it for forty to nine minute. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna set for fifty so that I can. You know that's gonna that'll give me the 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 uh, the time to build. Oh oh I see I see. Yeah yeah yeah. It's more for me. Let's see here. Uh, we got some six nine. We got Seer, six nine on the nine. Woo! Can we put this donation toward wearing the Velstout helm while fighting the Fume Knight? Oh that's interesting. Are you mm. willing to do that? Yeah. So the Fume Knight and Velstat have uh, some bad blood between them. Let's say. Velstat, mm -hmm. the faithful defender of King Vendrick. Fume Knight, kind of a relic of the past, like uh, the guardian of the old Iron King, which was a king that was brought to heal by Vendrick. So Fume Knight and Velstat didn't get along. If you wear Velstat's helm into the fight with the Fume Knight, Fume Knight immediately goes to second phase. Mm -hmm. um, and second phase is substantially more difficult. He's got a little bit more of a... Varied move set. I don't know what kind of donation incentive sounds about right for that. What, what are it you, sounds what? like you don't want to do it. I mean, I would prefer. Sounds tricky. Why don't we do this? We'll do as we're getting close to it. We'll set a monetary goal. And yeah, we hit it in that goal time, and we will yeah. count this donation towards that. Oh, okay. Let me get another column in my eight and a half. Just miles. so this person. <laughs> are there columns? Is it that well oh, organized? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's columns. How are you? How is okay, I was just, I was just sort of picturing again a, a beautiful mind esque, just numbers in in any which way they make sense to you. But were yeah, you to there, take a photograph of, of it after the stream, people would not be able to make head nor tails of it. Yeah, there is some of that. Also, mm -hmm. that's in the mm -hmm. margins of the columns. Okay, okay. The columns got to be clear, though. You got to know what Sunken so so King donations are. All right, so let's see. Fume Knight got its own column. Six six dollars ninety cents right now. We got. Amelia. I respect like the by hand add up as well. You're not doing an Excel sheet here. You're by hand adding everything up. Oh yeah. Go on. I've got, I've got two screens and they are chock full of information. I've got a track. I can't add an Excel sheet to that. Mm -hmm. Um, we got Amelia. Who donated? I th says I think I'm late to this, but keep Manny on the stream. I recently played Aww. through Dark Souls 2 for the first time and had a blast. I'd like to put my donation towards Sunken King 2360. I believe 23. Nope, that's not. I don't know what it is. Okay, <laughs> Sunken King. I thought that was maybe a uh, maybe multiplier. a 69 divisible. Yeah. It's not uh, the 69 divisibilities. I have these written down too. Are 1380 <laughs> and the 2760. So great, uh, Amelia. If you want to do that, you owe us now. <laughs> Uh, Joe Color uh, said also 69 on the 9. Ah uh, for $6.90. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ah ooga. <laughs> oh, ring a ding, ding, damn. Oh, shit. Uh, there's a lot more donations. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mary says donating 69 on the 9 for Ivory King. Oh. Hold, it down for, hold it down. $69. Thanks so much to Mary for that. Ooh, we, we got are climbing uh, we got up to B. that 5K. Climbing. He got us on the 11. Give us $10.11. and 11 cents. No thing mr pylon says gonna miss some of the stream so i'll get a bunch of 69 on the nine out of the way now 69 dollars thanks so much mr pylon oh my goodness Kasid says loving the stream so far catching up on ten dollars per boss kill and 69 on the nine 56 dollars 90 cents thanks so much to Kasid. Uh, i love the explanation of the specific number it's I very helpful it. i want i want people to get as much text oh. in there as they can nothing i love more than reading it whoa and yeah, uh, that's oh gonna boy. be a uh, yeah. So Danny in the hole means money in the <laughs> hole. Mm -hmm. That's a good, good way to think about it. So uh, you you have killed the prowling magus. I need to sorry. I need to edit the my file here. Now you're going back to what are you doing right now? I've got to get. Are you just fiddling around doing nothing? <laughs> no, I'm definitely doing That's something. Wow. Um, so it's interesting. Five. There it's is like a pixel perfect jump to make that. 
You, you mm-hmm. see it's got these uh, these kind of pieces of wood here um, in between me and the, the, the platform. Um, unfortunately, it is like pixel perfect. It's something that you got to practice for a speed run. Okay, so maybe do I go? You can do yeah. a gesture and walk off the cliff. You know that, right? Is that true? Yeah. That probably makes sense here. Let me switch this. I think we got to have this one be our buddy. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, so close. I need to, I need to hit that. that I one. feel like that, well, that should have worked. I know it was just a little <laughs> too far, but it, I don't know. I mean, you didn't fall didn't all the way in the hole. Oh, you mean you shouldn't have died? <laughs> yes, yes. I just mean the fact that he actually hit something as opposed to falling all the way down. Mm-hmm. Uh, Made it seem Mr. a little Pylon, more satisfying. Mr. Pylon, I got your donation for Sunken King. Um, what is... Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm trying to catch up on, on chat. People are saying there's a challenge for me. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Modality says, this pixel perfect jump is training my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Modality says you need the cat ring, of course. Sparkle Tone says, Danny goes splat, donate for that. That's true. If you love it, I when love Danny that. goes splat, donate for $2. that. There we go. Ooh, there that we was go. good. Yes. Got to break your fall. We're at six deaths. That's fun. You know, it's really funny. funny you can land on this too and it just bounces you out and through the hole. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Got some golf claps here. You can get the uh, you can get a ladder uh, once you discover Mister Ladder, Ladder McGee. Um, mm. <laughs> you can That's get a you can kick it trip. down, kick a ladder down. Yeah, you can kick a ladder down and have uh, he one. He builds one. Yeah. All right. He says, "Give me a bunch of money." <laughs> <laughs> well, really? He says yeah. that. He says, "Give me a whole bunch of money. I need it for the ladder." Yeah, I mean, you got to make it out of something. Why not make it out of money? Yeah. That's what the it's ladder's just, made out of. It's just Canadian dollars all the way down. <laughs> now, why did you enchant that? Just for fun? <laughs> uh, to, I needed to kill that lizard in one hit. Did it drop anything? It did. It dropped it through the planks here. We're currently at $4,782, or a little bit short of our halfway mark. Uh, two, Three hours in? Uh, two and a half hours in of our stream today. That's awesome. Um, I will talk about the donation incentives at the half hour mark. Wow, these blowy uppy guys. They're, they're, uh, they're something. They are. They don't care. They've had enough. <laughs> they have. They are just flinging themselves towards you. And they'll die, but they'll take you down if they can. Is that your, this, you're veering back into Morning Zoo a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've sent our injured Danny to an underground crypt full of dudes that blow up. <laughs> They Kamikaze! Hate, they hate life. Now, on these morning <laughs> shows, did the intern ever, like, mention OSHA or, like, resist? Yeah, they Constantly. <laughs> yeah. They were, like, yeah. I, I, like, they were pushing their glasses up and saying, I don't believe OSHA protocols allow for this. <laughs> I don't think that's allowed. Um, in the interview, I s- said I wanted to learn about audio engineering, <laughs> and uh, I don't think this has anything to do. We don't care. We don't have to. They're making the morning me pounds of imitation crab meat. <laughs> uh, OSHA doesn't say anything about imitation crab meat, Jeremy. This is my favorite ladder in the game. <laughs> there are several of these that operate this way, but that's my favorite. It's pretty good. Oh, so, Maddie, what do you think of Dark Souls from this obviously very normal play experience? You know, it actually looks pretty fun. Mm-hmm. I, I I might try Dark Souls 2 after I'm done with Dark Souls 1. Of course, it'll take me a thousand years to finish Dark Souls 1. So, roughly okay. 2024. Maybe I'll give DS2 a try. That's fun. But yeah, That's no, fun. I've been having a good time watching this. I like that scorpion guy. There's like, like a those shitload of hidden rooms. Blow up, you guys. <laughs> if you like hidden rooms, if you like hidden doors, there's like a... Oh, I love a game. hidden room. And in love Dark Souls room. 2, you can't open a hidden door... By uh, attacking it, you have to hit the use button, hmm. which is, you know, interesting that they made that so, choice. These are my favorite little dudes in the game. Um, I also like the gutter a lot, actually. So this gutter, the gutter is completely dark, as you can see, and you have to like light sconces to, to light your way. I don't know how much Danny's going to be doing to that, but that's the way you like play it normally. 
It's very methodical, very plodding. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are these little totems everywhere who just spit in your face <laughs> and poison you. It's awful. Oof. Oof. People are talking about it in this chat. Yeah, donate, people don't care for these statues. Donate $5 if you hate the statues. <laughs> I mean, it won't do anything. I'll monetize it. Just a solidarity donation, really. Yeah. Hate them. So if you, if you hit their little heads off, to, can they not poison you anymore? Yeah, they stop shooting. Uh, they stop shooting at you once you um, take their heads off, which is actually pretty realistic in real life. That's how. It yeah, that is true of a statue in real life. Yeah. yeah, a statue can't poison you anymore if you cut its head off. Everybody knows that. Yep. I'm smashing statues constantly. I'm banned from the pottery festival. Oh, is that why? Yeah. You just yeah, because that you, comes up a lot. Yeah. yeah. You had just. We're constantly uh, trying to invite you to that, and you didn't actually reveal why until now, why you were yeah. banned. Yeah. Well, they send me a letter every year, whether I want to go or not. And so I just feel like it's important to let all my friends know I can't go. Mm hmm. Even oh, if it doesn't come be up. Be aware of Miscreant. They're like, I really love, they're like really cool parts of the gutter where like dudes with torches will see you from far away and then like they'll run away from you and you're like, oh, that's an interesting thing. But they were just running toward a ladder so they can get to you more easily mm -hmm. to come back Ooh. and kick your ass. It's great. So you get to see their torch kind of like running around. Ugh. I would strongly encourage you if you're playing if you're playing Dark Souls 2 and you're not playing it in a marathon setting, you should make an effort to explore all of the gutter and light all the sconces because it really is pretty cool. There's a lot of items here and stuff, and it really is pretty cool to like navigate the whole thing and do it. And like see it all lit up, presumably. Mm -hmm. See how yeah, big it is. Yeah, yeah. And you can be like, oh, I was I've been over here before, which means this is where this is, and there's a lot of cool like plotting. Oh, things. this thing is here. Whoa. Yeah, man. Deal with it. That guy just jumped out of the mud. He's a big hand. Oh, he's like a big hand. It's some real ocarina of time yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Joe Culler says when you light all the sconces, a small thing happens. I don't think I've ever tried to light literally all of them. What uh, what happens? I imagine the same thing that happens when you light them all in the thing in the uh, the place betwixt, like in the tutorial area. I also don't know what happens there. Which it's is you get happen. invaded. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Would we call that a small thing? People are saying a nice lady comes and says hi. <laughs> that's I mean, that's about as likely to happen as anything else in a Souls game. That's true. Uh, oh, we got a bunch of donations here. We got Spinning Mine uh, says Death's Fire in six. Two dollars. Thanks so much. Alex says going to drop five every time Danny falls in a hole. So that's mm, $2. Just a, spe a su specific subset of deaths. Very, the whole very deaths. specific. Yep. He says, donating to keep Mandy around and or a five-sentence summary of Dark Souls 2. Mm. Mm. Five-sentence um, summary. Yeah, I've got five. I'll do, I'll, I'll do some five-sentence summaries later. One has already been purchased. Ah, okay. It's a big thing in our uh, podcast, Just King Things. Mm -hmm. Wonderful show. Five-sentence summaries. Thank you. Some force has strengthened the Estus Flask. If you look at the lore, the implication is it is the ashes of the protagonist in Dark Souls 1. Nah, it's me. <laughs> it's, it's actually Cameron? Yeah, it's me. Let's nah. Well, think about this. I've been alive since Dark Souls 2 was released. There's no way of proving it's not me. And there's no Ooh. way of proving that if I die, it won't ever work again. Think about that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Donate and there's no way for you to prove dollars. that. I mean, there is a way for us to prove that. Correct, correct. Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a philosophical solipsist. I don't think that anything else exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I mean, you have no way of knowing. Yeah. Oh, God, I hope I don't exist. Which really be right, Cam. calls into question why you are so very abusive of a intern you don't even think is real. <laughs> well, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. That's, what you, that's why. <laughs> I'm an intern nihilist. I'm a philosophical solipsist, which also implies I'm an intern nihilist. Mm. Uh, I believe that interns move toward destruction, uh, you know, cosmically. <laughs> Somebody get Thomas Ligotti on the line. No, what are you doing? 
I'm doing what, some what bookkeeping. Is this? Okay, well, explain it. Like, okay, wait, I, I need Maddie to. Maddie and I are having to fill all this time and space. God, you're. Just yeah, come on, we're we're riffing around. like like crazy. It over is here. true. It is true. It is uh, riffing uh, riffs per minute RPM very high Fair right enough. now. <laughs> I need to purchase a specific spell, and the only person that has it is this person, Lysia. Well, don't sound so excited about it, Jesus. And well, I'm not because the only reason I'm getting it is because there are several fights that are just sucks. incredibly. <laughs> these, the, these fights are really, really tough because there are there's like one regular boss and a bunch of ads. It's both of the rat fights, oh. and there's a wait. Is it a big rat and then some little rats? That sounds great. That's is one. That there's multiple of those fights. Oh God! That's yes. the first there's one. Fight. Rat with a mohawk. Um, and then Ooh. the other one is the uh, so there, there's the royal rat authority and the royal rat vanguard. Um, and I'm pretty sure Does Royal Rat Authority refer to the rats as a group or well, just one rat. rat? Circadian royal Wolf can can enter in if there's some Marxist implications about the Royal Rat Vanguard. But all I know is the Royal Rat Authority, there's a big rat. And the Royal Rat Vanguard, there's all the rats are the same size, but one has a special mohawk. And you mm. gotta find the one with the special mohawk in this old tomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mary said just a, just a minute ago uh, that if you killed that lady, she would donate $100. To Whoa. Lysia? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I'll do it. I, I, that might have been so we don't need you. her anymore? I don't know. I mean, we're trusting, we're trusting Danny on this, or we're not. Danny could be I'm really ra- the thing is, I'm really racking my brain to like remember. See. Wait, do I need this person again? <laughs> yeah, this? like is this is this a trick? Is this a trick? Kind? Because I already know that um, that Mary has donated towards the Ivory King, which is specifically contravening my my preference. So it's hard for me to trust Mary's. Uh... <laughs> hmm. um, let's see here. So on the other hand, a hundred dollars for a good cause. Mm. So that's the thing. Uh, Circadian Wolf is giving us some information here. Uh, Circadian Wolf says, I understood the Royal Rat Vanguard to be simply the Vanguard of the Rat Army. Mm. Mm. So that's helping you out there, yeah. Okay. Not in like the Leninist sense of a Vanguard, like a Vanguard party. Seer seems to be offering some uh, input about the, the usefulness of the lady here. By saying, if you kill the lady who will cast the miracle to change the doors, is that anything? Mm, yeah, so I have already paid the lady to change the uh, to change the pathway. Um, okay. And now I have a bonfire on either side of the pathway, so that that's pretty important. Okay, I, I've been working towards. Let's see. I need to attune my spells here, but I I've finally leveled up. Mm-hmm. I've been spending a lot of time just like collecting things. And I have finally leveled up to the point where I can uh, make my little rapier have have like a, a little dark cloud around it. Ugh, ugh. Hey, you want to turn this oh, off? Looks cool. Dark cloud? <laughs> yeah. So now the game is dark cloud. Now that I have made my uh, rape. So now it's just about. I need to talk to each one of the villagers and ask them. <laughs> What they need. For what their they house. need, and like so, Leningrass needs a, uh, a a stream next to his river. Oh but um, the armor that I've killed, um, uh, he's actually a vital component to everybody's desires because everybody wants to live next to him. Yeah. Yeah. So this is mm. kind of a problem. Um, uh, Dark Cloud would be absolute hell to do a marathon charity stream of. <laughs> Let's go back into another one of these proc gen dungeons from 2003. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you like orbs and killing the same enemy 40 times. I really like orbs. I gotta admit. I mean, I do. I like cracking those orbs. I love orbs. You know, I keep trying to do like an orbs ranked post for all the various websites I've worked for. For some reason, nobody thinks that's a good idea. Mm. Uh, uh, is that Dark Souls 2 boulder you saw? Is that going to go in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay gonna be a lot of orbs on this list you should do it people would you know what's a cool orb um the diablo health orb it's on the the ui that fills with blood do you know what i'm talking about oh yeah absolutely that is a cool orb great orb love that orb these are real people look at these real people yeah people hang out here in level Mm -hmm. i've done that so now that i have defeated the dragon rider the hides knights have awakened uh, which, you know, not my favorite thing. 
But yep. uh, I'm taking a little break from the path to the Duke's Dear Freya to go fight an old friend from uh, Dark Souls 1. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, Maddie, that's well, the end of the half hour. It is. It Whoa. is a uh, life jacket time for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that you're able to get it. I'm keeping, I, 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 it <laughs> I seems like you really ground. think that you need that to keep you safe. Um, <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I feel like if I'm going to take a kayak out on the water, mm-hmm. I need a life jacket. It's just mm-hmm. just the thought I have. Oh, like you're not Tammy. I am, oh I'm goodness. in a rough sh- shape yeah, here. Hold on. Really are. I, I'm sorry to leave you at this intense time, but you got this. I hope so. You got this. You got it. Okay, well, thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye. Do you want to give me plugs before you leave really quick? Uh, sure, I'm Minnie Myers on Twitter. But you, you can find everything else from there. there you go. See ya. Ciao. Bye. I have, uh, I've really messed this up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. Yeah. Doing it. Uh, let's do a reset. That didn't count. That didn't count. Ca- oh, you get to teleport away? Yeah. Okay. This one counts. Okay. Um, well, what a great first guest. Thanks so much for, uh, for Cameron organizing it. And thanks so much for Maddie for stopping by. I thought that was a really fun time. We got some other great guests coming. Um, not too many because, you know, we've, we've talked before, you know, Danny and I had a long conversation about this. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what makes these streams special? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that makes this, uh, these streams special is that slowly but surely we develop what i can only describe as space madness <laughs> um as we are uh as we get toward the end of these games i mm-hmm. mean if you can if you go and listen to the morrowind stream you can hear me audibly panicking when i'm trying to read through the <laughs> the uh the verses at the end of that so there's i think that's part of the fun in some ways um but, but you know most other charity streams they have like a bunch of guests and things like that so we had austin last time and that was that was great um, and so we, we had the conversation of like, what's the right mix? And so we've got a couple more guests coming later today uh, and into the evening. Um, some people who have never guested before, which is quite cool. we got another guest coming up at 3 o'clock, Ooh. which would be great. And, uh, and we'll have another guest, I think. At, uh, I, I said the time earlier, but I've forgotten. But in the, later in the evening. But I think the last couple hours will be certainly just the two of us. As things get going. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yes, yeah, so we've got another couple guests coming in, and I think it'll be fun. I really should have. Now that we have started this, I have realized that there's someone I should have asked to invite and didn't and didn't think about it. But next time we do a Dark Souls one, I will reach out to them. And that's Illusory Wall, the person who does all those really cool Dark Souls videos where they're oh, just figuring yeah. out how these games work. Should have. I don't really know them very well. I think we've uh, uh, exchanged emails maybe one time when I was working, uh, when I was writing about their work. What the hell? Yeah, it's, it's Ornstein. He's whipping my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're also past the half hour mark, uh, which means I need to tell you about what we're doing here. You can go to tinyurl slash ds2charity to donate to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Sylvia Rivera Law Project is, uh, they offer legal services to... I want to make sure I get the phrasing right because I do it every time. It's a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. They're a great organization that do a lot of really cool work and have been for a number of years. And, and we've supported them in the past. We think they do awesome work. Um, and so that's what this charity is for. Um, so uh, go ahead and give whatever money that you can to that. That would be awesome. We have a couple really cool donation incentives. One is that we're just trying to get to $10,000, which is great. When you make a donation, you can make a little a marker in, in the comment to the donation to tell me which of the DLCs you would like Danny to play first. Um, and if, if you don't care, then don't put anything in there. But if you want to say, make uh, Danny's life really hard, you can have Old Iron King be the first one, or perhaps even Ivory Crown. That's also a pretty hard one to do first. Mm. So, uh, you know, think about doing that. Think about making Danny's life harder. We also have a big donation goal that if we get to $15,000, Danny will... Um, fight the final bosses of this game with a ladle instead of a sword. It's and, true. Uh, swords are sharp and maces are heavy, but ladles are just cooking implements. And so that will be <laughs> exciting to do. I think we still got 35 bosses left to go. We got a lot of stream left to go, but we're well on our way. Think about donating some money. 
Also, we do 69 on the 9 in the stream, which means Ooh. you donate $6.90 at the 9-minute marker after the hour. We've got about 30 minutes left to go, 35 minutes left to go for that. Save your dollars. Get ready. Ready to do it. Exciting. That is pretty exciting, actually. Yeah, so you just beat that boss, huh? I did, I did. Uh, not uh, kind of when you take Ornstein out of Ornstein and Smo and mm -hmm. take away the phase two, there's not that much there. TBH. Yeah. Um, Circadian Wolf uh, making the observation that, yeah, that, you know, Ornstein's element has kind of changed from lightning to... Uh, to uh, to dark there which mm -hmm. kind of a lot of stuff happening in this game as far as like things getting really corrupted or whatnot All right, people let's... would also keep every time i say it they keep reminding me that yes if we get to twenty thousand dollars today i will buy dania sword actually i'll buy him a, a, a ladle i will commission a ladle to be made that that danny <laughs> will be <laughs> obligated to hang up in his home correct now in that in this uh imaginary ladle do you um do you think that you would uh, like have like a leather handle so you could use it as a weapon? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, like a like a like a strap of, of sorts, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that makes sense. Like Thor's hammer, kind of. Oh, sure. Yeah, because I'm going to spin it hmm. in order to fly. Because <laughs> that's going to be a property that you bake into it, right? Yeah, letting everybody know this is, again, this is a zone with spiders in it. If you don't like looking at spiders, I totally get it. Uh, you might want to just listen to us chat for a little while. We'll let you know when we're out of the spider zone. But the big end boss here is, in fact, a giant creepy spider. So Very creepy. Gonna a, it's going to be a thing. Uh, can't really do anything about it. Yeah, uh, not an optional boss, unfortunately. Nope. And also, nope. this run is not working that way. This is so great, by the way. So, like, there are all of these uh, in this area here. You know, it's like these houses that are built into this cliffside of this big cleft. And uh, people have, like, hidden all kinds of stuff and, like, blocked off passageways and things like that with uh, bookshelves and desks and stuff because they were being invaded by the spiders. These mm -hmm. miners were being killed by the spiders. And you're here, like, in this kind of post-apocalyptic hellscape where they've all been taken over by the spiders. Yeah. No, this area, and this is one of those areas where I I am not perfectly fluent in, like, how to perfectly navigate this spot. Because mm -hmm. it's just really tricky to me. Um, yeah. There's a lot of little hidey holes, and there's kind of two separate areas. Here we are on, like, the kind of the second area of the two. Um, I, I, this is one of my favorite spots in the game at a level. I do think that uh, I, the first and probably even the fifth time I played it, I found it very difficult. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. kind of, there's a lot of stuff that can kill you. There's a lot of different enemy types, etc. Easy to get in a situation where you've like pulled a bunch of monsters. This basilisk and... has a tiny head. Oh, he doesn't have I don't know why. Balls. Mutant. I don't Weird. know why. But, uh, but yeah. You know, it, just easy to make a lot of mistakes here. Yeah. Uh, get yourself in a bad spot. Um, uh, I would really says, like two more Titanite chunks, which is why I'm kind of hanging around here, because I know that they are here. I just, uh, I need to find them. Uh, <laughs> Voodoo Person says, this game came before the smart inclusion of abstract away arachnid designs. Uh, sliders. Mm. Now, um... Garrow's monolith says, "Fun fact: They all do. This one's missing his false eye sacks. That's that's I think what Danny means. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they're they're fake. You know that, right? If you zoom in, the head is really small, and those eye sacks are just like big globules. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. So Danny Wolf says they're normally casters here. Did they remove them in Scholar of the First Sin? They are. Not? There are, but I am just I am the way I'm navigating this is uh, avoiding." caster aggro which is in the area like that way on the other side of the wall mm. let's see I they're also in the next area in the room you're going to too correct um i think that what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop back up and give the uh this basilisk a second try i really need to kill like at least one of these basilisks and it's tough the way dark souls is very cares a lot about weapon hitboxes and if you look at the the rapier attack animation 
there is n virtually no way to hit anything lower than uh, your waist. Um, so you kind of have to switch weapons in order to do this. Which I've leveled up my mace to plus one specifically for this. I'm going to see if I can enchant it here. All right. Ah! <laughs> What'd you do? Were you not I looking? I was tweeting. I was tweeting. Oh boy! Well, oh buddy, I went what into the. There? Oh boy! What happened? No, no. Here's a little. Let's do a little checkup. Let's do a mm -hmm. little Danny checkup. Do you need? Uh, do you need some water? Are you? Are you basically blaming the fact that I missed this jump on no, it's just uh, a good, dehydration? It's a good, no, it's just like a good little stop. Not a stopping place, sir, but a good break point if we need to. Mm -hmm. Do you need some water or a snack? I do. Let me get this. Well, let's do it. You can let do that. I'm going to tweet. I'm, I'm just going to. No, let me. I, I need to get this crystal lizard. Oh, okay. You weren't saying I need to. Okay. Ah, overshot it. Jump in the hole. Jump in the hole. Jump in the hole. No, jump in the hole. No. Oh, no. Jump in the hole. Get killed, get killed, get killed, get killed, get killed. Oh, oh yes. no. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, my goodness. This, uh. uh get this some water. Bad. Come on, get some water. Okay. I, I've been convinced. Get some water. Well, I'll, I'll chat with chat. Yeah, chat second. with let chat. Me, let me make our, uh, you know, I got, I've got some Gatorades I'm going to break into later. I'm going to get right in. This is the sports. Of okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to tweet here. I'm going to say uh, we're almost halfway to our, our goal today. I'm going to talk through my tweet. Uh, we're almost halfway to our goal. Come hang out with a great community. As uh, Danny and I stream through Dark Souls 2 for a great cause. If you have anything, uh, if people have anything they want to, oh, this is twitch.tv. Nice. Nice touch. Uh, people have any questions they want to ask right now? This is a great time for me to answer some questions or something while Danny's, like, hanging out doing his thing. Tweeting. Um, people are saying that my... Ooh, Voodoo Person is saying, how many of the 35 remaining bosses can you name? Uh, the Lost Sinner. We haven't done that one yet. Um, that's one. Um, King Vindrick. Uh, are you back? No, you're not back. Uh, I don't know if we have to kill King Vindrick or not. I think we do. So, if so, then King Vindrick. Uh, Nashandra. Um, the Old Guardian, I think, is one. The Elder Dragon, perhaps, is one. Uh, um, uh, oh. uh, ooh, Jacob Von Guten, no, Danny has not visited the gender coffin yet. This is oh, okay. Sir, Sir Kenny Wolf says that Danny has to kill Vindrick in order to activate another boss, so yeah, so you do have to kill Vindrick. So yeah, I have like four, four of them. Are you back now? No, okay. <sighs> You gotta keep doing it too, right? Because you need that this item. Yeah, I do kind of. I mean, I could get it later, but I just want to do Freya with um, a fully upgraded weapon. Okay, well, I'm going to also run and take a very quick break. Mm -hmm. um, I want I want to get a snack really quick, and I want to uh, re-up my coffee. So get, you just you just chat and tell people your thoughts for the next three minutes. Of your yeah. Time. So for three minutes, I would really like. I know this lizard. The issue is. Um, and I'm looking, and I th what I need is I need to be able to one-shot it. And I think I can do that if I... Maybe it's the Aromatic Ooze again. It all comes back to the Aromatic Ooze when you think about it. Like, every death has just been a suboptimal application of Ooze. Which makes sense, lore-wise. Okay. We've got that. I'm going to jump over here. Use a Radiant. Uh, 
Oh, and he's in the and he's in the hole. Not working on that. Oof. Have I jump attacked? Oh, I think that might be it. Let me practice that. I only really use the mace for these for these things. Okay. Like that. Okay. Yeah, and I did a stabbing attack. That didn't work out for me. At all. I might try it, though. Can I... Lo oh, I can lock on. Hold on. Ah! Uh <laughs> I can't believe it. This doesn't bode too well. That was tragic, it was. Okay. I think I've got it on this one. Oh, we got it. We finally did it. Thank goodness. Very important. Oof. All right, so that puts my inventory at two chunks. I'm actually a chunk missing one chunk. Oh, yeah, so the next chunk is on the next lizard, which should be a little bit easier to get. Um... And I say that because I think he kind of gets hung up on some geometry over here. Oh, no. Too far. Oh, no. <laughs> rough. Rough, rough. That's fine. Hmm. Do I homeward bone one more time? I think I'm going to do it. Do it one more time. Get the rapier all the way up. And then we should be able to kind of really cleave through some of these, uh, these bosses. I've got three homeward bones, so I need to be cognizant of that. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and thanks for everybody that's donating. If you're donating right now and you are not being recognized, I want you to know something. I want you to know that uh, we do recognize you, and I am not able to get this lizard. Oh, well. I think I'm just going to go for the, uh, the boss here because there is a Titanite chunk that I can get. Oh, wait, I just remembered something. There's a chest. I think that there's a chest I can get to pretty easily in the Shaded Ruins that has the last one. So I can, and then I never have to worry about a lizard again. So that's completely worth it to me. Do, 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 should be here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Nick Brett, I have not experienced that uh, bug feature however you want to put it, but I was aware that basically, yeah, both heads can break because I guess they break based on the number of times they're hit and not, uh, and not necessarily something else. Riveting. Well, thank you. I, what were you talking about? Uh, you can make the Duke Steer Freya unkillable inadvertently. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh my God. What have you done? That enemy just destroyed a Titanite chunk. <laughs> just for no reason. Just like completely, yeah, made it rubbish. <laughs> that sucks. Mm. That's a, we're getting a real Dark Souls 2 experience uh, on this run. 
Okay. Um, is there another Titanite chunk here? Okay. I'm um, rejuvenated. You're I rejuvenated. What did you have? Did you have an apple? No, I didn't. I got. I had to get, I had to get some more coffee. Mm hmm. Because it's before 5 p.m., so I'm still drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. I got a Gatorade. Mm hmm. Uh, it's. Uh, I accidentally got. I meant to just. I meant to get just like classic orange, but I messed up. You know, I bought strawberry lemonade, which I'm like not jazzed about. That feels like antithetical to the purpose of delicious Gatorade. Strawberry lemonade. Yeah, it just feels like such meat flavors. But uh, I, I got dried tangerines. You ever had a dried tangerine before? No. Me neither until about two minutes ago, and they're delicious. I got some uh, uh, wafer crackers that are grilled cheese flavored. And I got a whole box. I bought these yesterday of Builder's Protein Bars from Cliff. Oh, you were talking day. down protein bars earlier. Well, I, I, well, you were, you know, you said you got to get some protein bars. And I said, don't do it. But then I was at the store buying snacks for today. And I thought, you know, what? maybe it's right. Maybe protein bars are worth that. So I bought those. I got them all here on my desk, ready to go. Um, and uh, got some oat milk. I'm just trying to give everyone. This is my daily carry. Mm -hmm, your daily carry of uh, <laughs> protein bars. Mm -hmm. And we got some donations, too. So let me read those. We got... Um, I don't think, I, I think this is a new one since the last time I read. We got Alex, another five in the hole from when you fell in that hole. Mm. We got two more uh, dollars uh, from Spinning Mind, uh, who says uh, from death seven and eight when you died. We got uh, from Coffee, five dollars for Danny falling in the hole. Mm. Also, Sunken King for the proletariat. I've lost my pen. Oh, here we go. Let's see. So, Sunken King, we got another five dollars. It's true. It, they are slowly but surely uh, coming up on it. I can do that math later. Michael H. donated $25 for the correct application of Aromatic Ooze and Sunken King. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so thanks to, to Michael H. for doing that. Thanks, everybody, for donating. And uh, you can go to tinyurl slash ds2 in order to... ds2 charity, sorry. Uh, people will, will post the link, hopefully, in the chat and uh, to, to do it. Now, I want to promote something. And that promotion is at nine minutes after the hour, we're going to do... 69 on the nine. Oh yeah. Which means you should donate six dollars and nine cents or sixty-nine dollars or some sort of multiplier such as thirteen dollars and eighty cents or twenty-seven dollars and sixty cents. And we're gonna do a bunch of those all at one time and it's gonna make the number go way up because we are very close. We are uh, only twenty-six dollars away from the five thousand dollar mark, so we're only twenty-six dollars away from the midpoint of where we're going. So what are you doing right now? I'm cracking all these souls so I can spend them. Did you beat the Duke's Dear Freya while I was gone? No, I did not. I was trying and failing to get the third and final um, Titanite that did I you want. Did finally get it? No. I did, get, I did kill one lizard. So I, I've killed two lizards in this game. I've killed two crystal lizards. And I think that that uh, deserves some amount of praise, some amount of recognition. Mm -hmm. It's not accounted for on the bosses remaining, but... I'm Not finding me. it harder than many of the bosses <laughs> that, that we have uh, that we have faced. If only you could uh, aim a ballista. Ah, and directly at the uh, lizard. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm slurping Gatorades over here. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, back, and I'm going to give the the Crystal Lizard on the way to the Duke Deer Freya's boss fight one more try, but then I'm just going to go for the boss, um, even without the, the fully upgraded you rapier. You can't buy these from someone yet? Not yet, no. Who do you buy that from? Stone, so uh, Liningrass Daughter. Can I give you a, a little uh, tip on killing these lizards? Yeah lock onto them mm -hmm. and then jump at them mm, do, do a, like a do, jumping attack a jumping two-handed yeah that okay if you do a two-handed it'll one shot them i think i played the whole game with this mace recently uh linograsts is the linograst is the um blacksmith blacksmith and we find out in the lore that uh oh i just completely forgot <laughs> hold on hold on do it Yes! If you two-handed it, it would have been done. Yeah. Oh! It's That's a jumping fine. attack. 
I like that basilisk can see you and it knows it's like, hey, I can't do anything about this, but I'm gonna shoot out my terrible poison anyway. It's true. All right. Well, it's fine. We're gonna be rolling in Titanite Chunk in just a little bit, so it shouldn't be too big of a issue. I don't need it because I'll have plenty of it later. Arachnophobes beware. We're in prime spider yep. season here. Yep, we're back in spider zone. I like how they move at like 10 frames per second when you're far enough away from them, like the ones in the back. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got Mary saying, catch up on boss donations, Ivory King. 20 bucks for Ivory King. Toast Orb says, can we start an incentive to have Danny turn off the HUD and do a funny little dance in front of a scenic, a scenic vista? That's $15. Mm. I don't know. I don't even know how to do that, TBH. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Sorry we'll about that. Yeah, we'll stay we really appreciate the $15, though. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone, who's donated so far. This is awesome. Um, and I think that we are, with these donations in... Yeah, we're at... Oh, wait. We just got a big donation from someone. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I just hadn't... Okay, what's going on here? I think someone just donated a big donation, but it's, like, not showing up yet. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes a big enough donation just, like, uh, really oh. chugs the system. <laughs> There's too many dollars yeah. running through the pipe. Uh, did you... Um, yeah, maybe it's showing up on the thing, too, and I just... I don't have the stream up, so I can't... I can't quite see it. Although I will... Let's do this. I do know what the donation is, and I'm about to... Um, it's re it's from Maddie. Whoa! In the, in the thing earlier, and it says it's a big donation. It's not showing up yet. Uh, this is from Maddie Myers. Thanks so much, Maddie. Uh, message: I punished intern Danny plenty when I was on as a guest, so I'm going to contribute my funds towards Sunken King, which I think is the preferred D first DLC order. If not, then whoops. <laughs> It is. It is. Thank you so much, uh, Maddie. I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate that gesture, and thanks so much for your donation. I really, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for doing. It. Thanks for coming by. I, hope, I think everyone enjoyed that. I think everyone liked that. If, mm -hmm. um, if you enjoyed Maddie uh, coming through, I'm sure that uh, she'll come back the next time we do one of these. Maybe. I have uh, to say, and maybe this is something I should say off air. It is. Uh, it can be a little mentally taxing sometimes to uh, be responsible for half of the conversation when you're playing mm -hmm. a game like this. So it's n the the guests really offer a nice uh, a nice opportunity to kind of uh, play the game a little bit and uh, spend a little less bandwidth on the uh, on mm -hmm. the banter. So that was really uh, that was. Do really you know nice. who is continuing to keep up half the conversation then? Uh, who who? Do we have another intern? It could be anyone. <laughs> who knows? So, uh, oh yeah, so you're you're in a spider's web here, right? So this is really spider city. Yeah, this is the spider level. We've we gotta have it contractually. Mm -hmm. It's kind of high medieval fantasy or low fantasy, however you want to define that. Cool. Uh, uh, Maddie in the chat says, "Now it's life jacket time for real." <laughs> oh, nice. Well deserved, someone says. Hendrick Shrog says. DB Eric, we're having helping out the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Um, what we're donate, donating here for today, you can of course go to the donation page at tinyurl.com slash DS2 charity. In order to learn more about it, we got a link to it there, of course. But it's a legal aid uh, organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. Uh, so as a pretty distinct uh, remit, it does a very specific thing for people, and uh, it's a thing that we think is important. So this is what we're fundraising for. We are now up to $5,374. Uh, so we are above our halfway mark. Um, oh, Spoiler alert, we got a little bit more than halfway to go on the stream. <laughs> yes. Oh, way more, way more than halfway. Uh, we uh, Here's the big stuff since we're on the half hour mark. Here's what's up. You go to tinyurl.com slash gs2charity. That's going to give you the ability to donate to the stream, to donate to a good cause, to donate to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project that I was just talking about. The uh, things that you can do for that. When you donate, you can earmark your donation to be for a specific DLC. 
or Dark Souls 2. I encourage you to look that up if you care about it. Um, when you do that, uh, that's going to determine the rank order that we do it in. Danny's preferred is Sunken King first, which means you can be a contrarian and donate to Iron King or Ivory King first, which will make his life much harder mm -hmm. in several hours. We also have a $15,000 goal, um, in which case Danny will defeat the final bosses of the game with a ladle, which is not a weapon. It's not it's a weapon. weapon. It, it is an item. It's a, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's also, I guess, a, a, like a, a third goal that's very far off, that if we get to $20,000, I will commission a blacksmith to make a ladle with my own money for Danny uh, so that uh, he can hang it on the wall behind him while he does streams. Mm-hmm. That's what is up. In just nine minutes, we're going to be doing 69 on the nine, which is where I encourage you to donate $6.09. Nope. $6.90. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, or a multiplier of that, 1380, 2760. <laughs> you love this ten. multiplier. This, this is a real... Well, the people did the numbers, so I feel like it's, uh, you know, useful to do. So you donate that at the nine minute mark after the hour. We're nine minutes away. You could hear my alarm maybe going off just a second ago. So all those things are true. That's what we're about here today. Thanks to everyone who's donated so far and let's keep it going. And nice little transition into the next little uh, boss cinematic here. Yeah, Spider City, like truly Spider City. Yeah. What do you think about this? I really like this boss fight. Um, I remember the first time you were fighting this boss, I gave you the advice, okay, you just got to get to the spider's butt. But spoiler alert, the spider doesn't have a butt. <laughs> uh, Alex the Love Witch in the chat says, 69 on the 9, 5 in the hole, road to 20k. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you just got to... So the, uh, the Duke's Dear Freya is pretty cool. The... The thing that's implied here is that um, the Duke's um, the Duke itself is is Seath from Dark Souls One, or some sort of thing that maybe rhymes with uh, Seath. Rhymes so with the, Seath, or maybe a reincarnated version of yeah. Seath, maybe a part of Seath's soul. Um, yeah, something going on like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is just like a creature that was either made by Seath, maybe, or, or or perhaps made by the the Duke that came after Aldia. Mm -hmm. um, who has a similar relation between like Gwyn and um, uh, uh, Vindric, the the big king from this game, has a similar relationship to Aldia, his brother, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Gwyn had to see, basically, uh, kind of a relation, similar relation there. Yeah. But, uh, so, so what you got to do here, this mo this uh, boss is uh, almost entirely immune to damage anywhere other than it's like. But in its face, which are the same thing. Yes, because it has two of those things. Yep. <laughs> it has two butt faces. Mm -hmm. So what's your strategy here? It looks like you're just letting the... Yeah, I think the key here is let the, uh, let the NPCs kind of aggro one side. Because it can only attack from one side at a time. So uh, that gives you an opening to uh, attack kind of the other side, as it were. It's important for you not to touch the legs because the legs, uh, if you touch the legs, it slows you down for like a second. Um, so you definitely don't want that. Looks like Ash and Knight Boyd's there. Let's get another attack. There we go. That was a pretty good one. Got a jump. And a good opportunity to do an attack is if, uh, if the Duke's Dear Freya does the laser attack. Mm -hmm. um, which, of course, it's a spider, so you're going to have a laser attack yeah. at some point. Huge parts of uh, spiders in the real world, too. It's There's the laser issue. attack. Mm. Yeah, and it can kind of block its face here, too. Yeah. It says, don't touch me. Someone is asking here... Well, I'll let you finish this boss fight. It's okay. Before we do that. No, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, so, who we got here? We got Manhunter Ohulahan, what's his name? O'Hara. <laughs> and Ashen Knight Boyd. Ashen and Knight Boyd is, can take a ton of punishment. Why do you have this torch? What's going on here? Uh, if you have the torch out, the small spiders will not attack you. They'll run away from you. Because there's small spiders in this fight. Ashen Knight Boyd's doing a fairly good job of, uh, 
taking care of them for me, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. I love a big spider over. From yeah. Are there any? Uh, oh, there's any... there's a head. Yep. So that's one head down. But so you you got to kill one head, then you got to kill the other. No, you don't have to actually... It is bad for a head to fall off. Basically, the heads fall off if it's hit enough times. Uh, and that means it can't attack from that side anymore, but it is possible in very specific circumstances to remove both heads, but it still has some health left. Well, and I can't... PDMs. It's really hard for me to describe like how bad that is. It's bad. Mm -hmm. STVM says uh, there's a canonically a France and a uh, Ireland in this world based on the last name. And there we go. Yeah. Cool. That's it. So that's like one of the, the quote unquote Lord souls. So that's one of the Lord souls. Unlike all of the other great souls, in order to embrace the great soul, you have to go here. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that the, the kind of lore here is very interesting. We just fought a spider, but the soul we're embracing might be this dragon here that the spider's hey. been kind of feeding off of. So I think that's why, in order to embrace the great soul, we got to come over here. Every other great soul, once you kill it, you embrace the soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, uh, now that was the Duke's dear Freya. We can go visit the Duke now. We got a couple other donations coming in. We got BTLR uh, says roll one d three to determine which DLC this supports. Um, you think that was the Duke? You think that's him? I think that's the Duke. No, that's just some guy. Um, that but haunted... donates ten dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a haunted sword flying around for a second there. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Ninja Turtle donating four twenty. Thanks Ooh. so much, Ninja Turtle. And we got GB Eric donating ten dollars. Thanks so much to DB Eric with two thumbs up, double thumbs up there. Nice. Mr. Kenny Wolf says it becomes very obvious in New Game Plus because Freya drops the old Pale Drake soul. Yeah, mm -hmm. New Game Plus and Dark Souls 2, they all drop a uh, Lord soul that is resonant with a Dark Souls 1 Lord. Yeah. Squirrelet War says, I don't think I ever noticed that dragon. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to surprise you. Stay tuned. Maybe here in about 10 hours, uh, we're going we're gonna to be going back to that dragon, actually. What? Yeah, we're going to go back to the dragon. What? There's a special secret there. Let's see. Where am I here? I am level 63. I've got 29 adaptability. I'm just taking this to up to 20, and then we're going to be in leveling vigor for a while but it's good to have stamina because it lets you roll people are uh yeah, I need one more people are noting that you have to kill dark lurker i do have to kill dark lurker and that is, that is one of the bosses it is a lot of setup it's a lot of setup to kill Dark Lurker. But I am going to... I'm basically going to... I'm not even going to be using the rapier. I'm going to have, like level up an entirely different weapon in order cool. to do Dark Lurker. So where are we percentage-wise as far as like game is concerned to you? Well, there are 34 bosses remaining. Because you haven't done this... You've done this. Yeah. Like several times now. But mm -hmm. you have not done it all in one sitting yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, we're one Great Lord Soul down... The rest of them are going to go a bit quicker. Um, now, because a lot of what we've been oh, doing... Oh, i got to interrupt you. One minute. One minute until 69 on the 9. One minute. This is when you want to donate either $6.90 or $13.80 or $27.60 or any multiplier of, six, of 69. It's happening in one minute. Dang. I lied, it's happening right now. It's 209 right now. Do it, do it. It's, it's, the, the it's the nine. It's the nine. 69. Ah! Nice. Nice. Ah! So for every um, for every donation we get in, Danny is, uh, is required to say nice for it. So I'll let you know. Okay, you got to let me know. You got to prompt in. me here. How many times do you have to say nice? Let's do it, y'all. Let's get up there. We're halfway to our goal of ten thousand dollars, and we are shooting for fifteen. Yeah, that's our like big one to make Danny do something that is unfortunate and yet fun. Dang, mm -hmm. you're killing these Viking dudes. I guess they're pirates. 
yeah, they're kind of Viking pirates. There's definitely a Viking stuff going on. But yeah, they're responsible for um, for moving all the all the souls to the Lost Bastille. That's why they got this boat. Where, where do they come from? Where do the lost souls come from? Well, it was just the, the undead, like the curse of the undead. As the as the so like early on, Vendrick. But now they're undead. Yeah, early on, Vendrick. Oh look, it's Lucy hey, Lucille again. Mira. I thought that might be you. I like Lucille's big hat. Hmm. Your Canyon Wolf says that these uh, pirate people are called Varangians, which is the name of the Scandinavian mercenary, mercenaries kept on call by the Byzantine emperors. Mm, so they are both. They're Scandinavian pirate people. Uh, people love Lucatiel. Yeah. Of Mira. I'm going to do my best to see Lucatiel in all of the places. Um Where's the next place she shows up? Iron Keep? No, there's got to be a place in the middle, right? No, the, so it's... Uh, she's going to show up, I think, just before the Lost Center. I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, she is. She's in, like, by the bonfire. As a... As a um, oh, yeah, but I've, I've already done that. I've already, like, talked to her there. Yeah, you've already started... Yeah, she's summonable. She's summonable uh, in the Lost Bastille, like, in that Sinner's Rise area. Mm -hmm. um, she's in the Black Gulch, just before the Rotten... And I think that she, the one associated with the old Iron King, might be um, uh, Smelter Demon. I don't think she's is, is she before Smelter Demon, or I think she mm -hmm. might be. Is she in Earth and Peak? No, she's in Smelter Demon. She's in Smelter Demon. Yeah, okay, pretty sure. Like ninety. I mean, as a summon or as a like person you can talk to. As a summon, not as a person you can talk to. Gotcha. Dang, Earth and Peak is cool. I'm, I'm gonna be glad when we get there. That's a fun part of the game. I think this is my least favorite area in the whole game. Oh, really? Uh, if uh, most of the time people like the natural quote unquote natural path of the game generally has you come here uh, before or like right after the Lost Giant, because like the pursuer is one way to get to the Lost Bastille. This is the other way, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's very easy to come here under leveled. I would not want to do this run where I went here next. Like, that's one of the yep. reasons why I, like, leveled up all my stuff so quickly. Now, why are you clearing this? Um, I do want, like, a couple of extra experience here. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's just very dangerous to run through, as you're kind of seeing. Yeah, no, no, no. But, like, is there a boss here? Uh, yeah, there is a boss here. Oh, uh, that was your I, question. I thought yeah, you were yeah, being... Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I asked uh, an in... Uh, a non-specific question. Gotcha. Who who's the boss here? The fl the flexile sentry. Yeah, uh, a really great uh, a really great boss design, uh, where the ship is filling up with water as you're fighting the sentry. Do you remember cool. that? I don't think I've ever beaten him. Oh, it may be that you came here and like fought here a bit, so. and then we're like, you know what? I'm just gonna go do the uh, the I pursuer. Think, yeah. Well, I think the first time I I did it. Because I've only beaten Dark Souls 2, I think, twice. And the first time I got here, and I was like, oh, I'll come back to this later. And I just got to the Lost Bastille. And I think you and I were playing at the same time. And you were like, yeah, you can just get the Lost Bastille in either way. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to go back there. Uh, yeah, by the way, you've called this boat, which is cool. Yeah. And uh, this last time I knew that. And I was like, I, yeah, going to the Lost Bastille the other way is just so much faster. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I want to read a bunch of donations here. Go for it. Charlotte says, very happy to donate for such a well-deserving cause. Put my money towards Iron Keep being first, because Fume Knight is such a meanie. Okay. Uh, Kasid says, Sunken King with 16.90. Uh, awesome. Thanks to Kasid. Mary says, 69 on the 9 for Ivory King. Oh, my goodness. Mary is just keep <laughs> continuing to pile on. Michael H. says, 69 on the 9, y'all, and Sunken King. Okay. People are people are going for you. Anonymous, 690. Thanks so much. Boodoo says, bad at math. This is the easiest for $69. Thanks so much to Boodoo for doing that. Jacob says, $6.90. Nice. Miggy Ross says, Sunken King for Danny with $6.90. Thank you. Go Astronaut Go has donated $6.90. 
Thanks to you, I'm still going for it. Scott says, I couldn't find the decimal button, so this is $6.90 with 10 cents for Sunken King with $7. Awesome. Thanks so much, Scott. Thanks to everyone who's donated so far, and uh, we're going to do that again in an hour. We're going to do another 69 We're going to uh, push it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's get all the way up there to ten and maybe even fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, I do note that Voodoo's saying that donation is to Runner's Choice. Runner's Choice is Sunken mm. King. Okay. Really, the, the as uh, Maddie said earlier, the proletarian's option. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Bread says I never found out Flexile's gimmick till many times after beating them. Is is there a gimmick that you know of? Uh, oh, wait, no, just wait, wait, do wait. most of the rest of the game before that and then level up so that it's easier. <laughs> You're poisoned. I am. Um, Flexile Century, is that the Dark Souls Voldo-like boss? Do you know who Voldo is? Oh, I don't remember Voldo. You know who Vol uh, from um, Soul Calibur? Does a lot of kicking around, flexing and whatnot? Is that like doll scene? No, that's from Street Fighter. Oh, that's okay. Oh, the the gimmick is the the water. Mm, uh, yeah, the, there are a lot of Dark Souls levels. Period, where kind of the whole point of the boss fight, or yeah, there are a lot of Dark Souls bosses where the boss isn't the real obstacle; it's the arena. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking th this is a great example. Dragon Rider has like a small platform that you can grow if you if you go around and like flip some switches. Uh, and um, there's also Mytha who take who fights in a um, in a really uh, in like the poison area, and you can drain that poison pool that you fight Mytha in out of uh, poison. But we'll get there. We'll get there in time. No, we won't. <laughs> we not gonna happen. No. I don't think we'll get there. Let's see here, we got a couple. We got a couple more. We got Quentin missed the nine, but here's my sixty-nine. Thanks so much, Quentin. It's okay, you can donate whatever you want. Bolthauser says, "Great work, y'all. Going to give this game a reappraisal after this." P.S. Sunken King. Good luck, Danny. Nice. Thirteen dollars and eighty cents. Oh, I haven't been saying nice to those things. Well, we didn't. We didn't quite know yet. I was going to give you the final count. Gotcha. So don't, don't you know? We'll give it a couple more minutes because people are they trickle in too. They don't quite hit the supporter thing. Mm-hmm quick enough you know it's, it's just it's have amazing. you been finding that you're having to refresh the page or does it kind of update no i have to re refresh the page that's okay i'm just gonna leave you all here if you're not gonna if you're just gonna be stuck on the geometry that's fine by me hopefully you don't follow me yeah let's talk to uh this person what the heck who's this guy he senses power He's got a big, he's got a big beard. He does. He's like, well, you're my, you're my student now. <laughs> Have you ever talked to a man in a in a cavernous uh, dock, like a dock inside a cavern, and be like, yeah. you're you're my student now? Yeah, I'm in academia. What are you talking about? That, that's literally just how it happens. It happens constantly. Uh, all right, so let me tell you how many nices you got to say here. Twelve nices. Do it. Oh, nice, 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 nice. How many am I at? I don't know. I'm not You've been doing. counting. Nice, 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 nice. I gave you a couple extra. Okay, so that was a uh, twelve or more. <laughs> and uh, you know, let's I need to. I need to. Um, I need to. I'm just trying not to fall off the dock. That would it's be okay. really embarrassing. It would be. And you would and you would owe money. So in speed runs, um, they uh, they'll generally they'll go and talk to this guy, mm -hmm. and then the jump to this dock. And in order to like land on the dock and not roll over it, uh, you have to like do a stabbing attack on on the way down. It's like pretty mm -hmm. cool. Sounds sounds very cool. <laughs> so is he down here? Yep. Do you have to defeat the boss in order to use the uh, the boat? Yes, you do. Okay. So in order to, so you do have to defeat a boss to get to Lost Bastille. It's either. Oh, it's this guy. He's mm -hmm. cool. Doesn't he show up again somewhere? Yeah, in the Lost Bastille, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, 
He's neat. I'm dead. Cool. Good boss. Just take your little counter down? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Dark Weapon is very powerful uh, in this game. Speedrunners, if you're doing any percent in Scholar, they use the Dark Rapier. And if you're doing all bosses, you use the Dark Rapier most of the time. And then switch occasionally to uh, the Red Iron Twin Blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much like the Duke's Dear Friend. There are a lot of enemies in this game don't have a butt. Uh, which is not very Gygaxian, because the first thing you got to ask in your game is, where do people use the bathroom? Well, you no, it's actually pretty Gygaxian, because it saw if things don't have a butt, then you don't have to ask that question anymore. Well, no, the question like is rel the question the can war. refer to where both, in terms of physical location where bathroom is, but also mm -hmm. where in terms of what orifice does the poop come out of. Well, but here's where the thing. do people you, use the bathroom world, means both things. In a world of magic, <laughs> in a world, uh, in a world of magic, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a world of magic, um, but in a world of magic, they could just use all of their energies and whatnot. They have a perfectly efficient system. Mm. So, so they're solving the Gygaxian problem with the flexile century is a perfectly efficient body. Mm -hmm. Dusting my hands off, going to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking off at 2.30 p.m., you know what I mean? Fair. Apples are still good, y'all. Although apparently they've Are changed. Apple? That's what I've read. What's changed about an apple? They're like pretty unrecognizable with all the selective breeding and whatnot. What, is that? what does unrecognizable mean? You mean you just can't find a good a red delicious anymore these days? No, no. I'm saying they, they were smaller before. Oh, yeah. We want big <laughs> apple. Yeah. Why would we have small apple when we could have big apple? Oh, people are saying, yeah, that's most fruits. Yeah, that's probably true. Mm -hmm. People are, now everyone's, now you got everyone talking about fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta get chat, you gotta prod chat, you gotta, that's interaction. I read about it in it's time. Very, it's funny, this is like what, uh, so like it started with like, that's most fruits. And then they're like, oh, it's like how carrots are orange. And then like people are just saying fruits now. Yeah. Banana. How about Raisin grapes? <laughs> Think about it. Think about grapes. They exist. Uh, uh, Theofo says, don't forget the apples that are copyrighted these days. I think all apples should be copyrighted. Personally. Mm -hmm. Every individual one, too. Not even just are we talking apples. about the company or like varieties of the fruit that are copyrighted? Individual apples that are fruits. I think they should all be copyrighted. Just to protect the... The mom and pop farmers yeah, that are making them. Yeah, the brands, yeah. It's an important, important part of it. People are talking about all kinds of bananas, grapes, pumpkins, Libby's pumpkin puree. Ooh. I like a, I like a nice pumpkin. TBH. What? Like to put in a pie or just to eat by itself? A uh, pie, specifically. You ever tried to eat just a pumpkin? No, actually. Like raw? I don't or in anything. Like I don't know, you cook it, I guess. I've never tried. I've never really thought about you it. You just never just shoved a a full pumpkin into an oven, just preheat the oven to 350, pop it in there. I no, I put it on broil. I just put that <laughs> thing in there. Yeah. I like the char. Um now, now people are just saying things like fruit good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really devolved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, fruit good. Oh, you know what? I, I wondered this last time I played. I was like, I know that you can open that grate, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I got to go around. Got to go around. Got to go around on the other side. This is a charity stream to benefit the, the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. You can go to uh, tinyurl.com slash ds2charity or just scroll down below the window and click the little button to just giving to donate to that great cause. We are trying to get up to... Uh, $10,000 is our first goal. Our second goal is $15,000, uh, upon which Danny will fight the last bosses of the game with a ladle. And uh, also, when you donate, you can earmark your donation with your favorite Dark Souls 2 DLC. If you um, just put the name of it in there in the donation thing, I'm, I'm adding everything up. And then whichever one has the most, uh, Danny will do it first. first. Oof. 
in his list of what is there there are three there are three dlcs yeah the first of three dlcs people are just cantaloupe <laughs> so they're we're on fruit chat yeah the real the real dark souls starts here common fruit All right. We used our second fragrant branch of yore for the for the run through for the playthrough. Um, in order to get to this boss, this is actually if you've defeated the pursuer, mm -hmm. this is optional. Um, I'm pretty sure because this boss is yeah. How? Oh. So remember the way we came in through the Lost Bastille, uh -huh. turned down that grate. Yeah, you can. Um, you can go that way and like get to the servants' quarters, which is the next, um, oh. the next oh, bonfire, man. an this alternate boss. route. Sucks. Yeah, it does. If you're not like super leveled up. Yeah. I, the, I like that they get. You probably won't see it because you're carving through this thing pretty quick. But I like how they jump. Yeah, I, we should see one jump maybe. I think. Okay, so that one just came down. Yeah, they do like a big vertical leap. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, we've got some more uh, donations here. we got Space Crimes. Says, good luck. Donates $5. Thanks so much, Space Crimes, for that. And we got Mary is gay. Uh, if I donate 690, 69 times, will Danny say nice 69 times? Ivory King. Dang. $6.90. And yeah. You would. <laughs> nice. But only if you do it. I'm, I'm just going to intersperse it throughout no, the stream. No, you <laughs> can't do that. You can't build up like a bank of saying it. You, uh, you got to do it on. Oh, no. Oh. Hubris. Hubris. I know. You were being too clever, you thought. No, I, I just... I, that's the thing I like about Dark Souls is it felt like a solid full three seconds before that happened. I was like, oh, I feel this coming. <laughs> like, I, I kind of everybody. saw it slowly coming. Give Fs in the chat, everybody. Fs. I'm, I'm slow clapping here. What are you doing? Where are you going? Going back. Uh, this was not the closest bonfire to that. Oh, because you didn't stop it. You didn't mm -hmm. chill out there. I see what happened. Doop, doop, doop. Dark Souls rule number one, never go for it, Joe Caller says. In the yeah, chat. I know. That was uh, that was greed. And I was also just not being super mindful of the stamina I have. Voodoo person says, it's like locking your keys in the car. You see it happening oh, in God. slow motion, but you can... <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> that does, That generally doesn't happen. That's 10. I've had, actually, I've had that exact thing happen to me right there. Really? Yeah, there's something really weird co trying to run around that guy. Yeah, I think that it's it's him. when he has a specific... Um... People are asking if you need to hydrate again. You need a sip of water. <laughs> yeah, I might need to. All right. But but yeah, there's something going on with the hitboxes of that dude and the the angle there that where that will happen. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've had that literal exact action happen to me. Yeah, I think I think that if he does a certain attack animation, it kind of shoves you a little bit. Rickane Wolf says you should have opened the hilarious shortcut door for this boss, then you wouldn't have gone past there. Oh yeah, there is a ridiculous shortcut for this boss. I like you're getting these big sword guys. I like these dudes. They're, they're it's a great are... design, and they are still relevant way later. Like when you find mm -hmm. them at uh, Castle Drang Lake. Modality says that's a hole. <laughs> Sorry to the uh, person who's donating from holes. I think gravity has gotten me definitely a majority of these times. Like, easy, matter of fact. You are going to... I'm just letting you know that... What, what, Mary, to save you some time here... If you just donate whatever the final amount of 69, 69 times is, he'll say 69, 69 times. I feel like just giving is probably taking like a huge cut of this if you make them all individual donations. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works either, but I'm just, I'm, I'm intuiting. So if you just add it all up and donate that as a bulk sum, he'll do it. Because uh, this is about money, ultimately. I understand. I understand you want it for the gag. 
People are saying, uh, we got Ninja Turtle says, DS2 gravity is ruthless. Yeah. Ruthless. I'm going to watch you wipe on this boss again. Oh, the, oh. the spin to win? Yeah, I like that spin attack. They can hit each other, right? No, I don't believe so. No, these can't. Unfortunately. Wrong one. Hey, we got a guest coming soon. Go to tinyurl slash DS2 charity in order to donate. Yeah, I like these. I like their design. Mm -hmm. Can you get their armor? I don't think you can. You can. Oh, really? It's a rare drop, uh, and oh. there are several locations where you can get it. But, yeah, I think some of the best armor in Soulsborne. Oh, yeah. Just so really cool. You can from someone after you defeat them. I, I can't remember, actually. Well, I've killed the shopkeep that lets you do that. Shopkeep. So. The armorer, as it were. Scramble says this armor is very funny when scaled down to PC size. A booted person says that just giving doesn't take any amount. Um, I think uh, you're you're asked how much you want to donate to the platform on the donation mm -hmm. page. It's actually changed. I don't know if that was the case a couple years ago, like the last time we did it, but. Um, just for full disclosure, we're using Just Giving because the Sylvia Rivera Law Project is registered there. There are a lot of other kind of Twitch um, donation platforms that uh, yeah. make it a little bit more difficult. We've hit $6,000. Oh, my goodness. $6,060, actually. And that's actually a big donation. Or not all of it, but a big chunk of it is... Uh, from Mary. Oh my goodness. Who is going to force you, who has donated six dollars and ninety cents sixty-nine times. Okay. Who's, so you're gonna Do I need to get a nice like a scrap paper here? No, I'll, I'll keep count this time. No, I I I need to do it. Let me get a let me get a pen. It'll make you feel better. Yeah. You need to drink some water too. Yeah, let me do that. I'm gonna drink a water. Let's see. I'll, ju I'll just go through some stuff. Counter turns in the chat says you can buy boss armors in the lava castles, I think. That's mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe you can from that merchant who's there. That merchant's I cool. Certain, I think it's certain stuff you can buy. I don't think it's all the boss armors. Because um, he also sell, sells weird stuff like the Jester's outfit. Okay. okay. Are we ready? I'm ready right now. Nice, 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 nice. 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 Nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, 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 nice. All right, that's 30. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, 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 nice. There's 60. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, 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 nice. That is 69. Nices. Was it everything that everyone hoped for? Jay from Nowhere, Jay from Nowhere donates 69 bits and says nice. <laughs> okay. Lilifin says it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> it was good. Great work. Thanks for the donation. We got two more donations since you started saying the word nice, weirdly mm. enough. Jim says, see you later. Oh. That's fun. Hypo says, this next boss is going to get got in one shot. $100. Thanks so much to Hypo and to Jim for those donations. That's Belfry Gargoyles. That's tough. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You got to do that one. Um, did, now, you know, without saying much about him, did you tell uh, your Dark Souls loving friend Jim about the stream. I did. Could be that Jim. 
Oh my gosh. Maybe one day you can share the information about that Dark Souls adventure mm -hmm. on the podcast. I think mm -hmm. that would be very fun. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Scroll at War says, wait, Pursuer's just chilling here? Yeah, <laughs> they're just... The there's pro I think there's probably four. No, there's five just in the Lost Bastille. People are complimenting your uh, play there, by the way. Well... Here's the big difference between the, the Pursuer at, uh, at the beginning and, and the Pursuer just now. One, I've had more than a few Pursuer fights to practice in, in like, today. So there's that. That's true. Also, uh, my weapon's very good now. So there's that. Look at the head. Do you know about this guy? Uh, I know him from that little animated thing. Some people in this game, they don't want you... To, do not... Do not create light. He just doesn't want you to touch the bell. It belongs to the princess, so don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Is this the same guy who yells about the bell later? Yeah, probably. In, in, the, in the Iron King zone, when you go to that bell? That's, uh, yeah, Belfry Soul. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm being invaded because I am uh, I'm messing mine. with the bell. Oh, this is the little pink person. Oh, this might be a real person. And this is a real person here. You're not really messing with the bell yet. This I'm not, real, but I'm... Guilty until proven innocence. I'm here. trespassing is the issue. Oh, he's been vanquished. I think he must might have fallen. They're just giving you some... Or they, they're just giving you some... Oh my uh, gosh, I just got a Titanite chunk. Yeah, for free. <gasps> Maybe do, they're doing that. Do you think somebody invaded and somehow... Was that you? Was that someone in here? Let us know if that happens. SQVM said, this is just DS's tingle. <laughs> Ninja Turtle says, R.I.P. Papa. <laughs> Which is that person's name. Um, we? we got um, we got Andy giving $9.97. Um, real uh, cost at the supermarket thing here. Topping this off, um, P.S. Ivory King. Michael H. Uh, is uh, giving 69 flat, $69, for Sunken King. Michael H. Thanks to Michael H. And uh, let's see where we are here. We're at $6,239, which means we're sure less than $4,000 away from our first big goal. That's awesome. wild. It is. Actually, when I went to get some snacks, I saw my wife, and I said, uh, she said, how much would we raise? And at that point, I said, oh, we'd raise about $5,000. She went, $5,000? <laughs> Incredulous that we could have done it. Uh, Hypothermic Guy said, did you say you had a guest coming on later? Yeah, we do. we got a couple guests coming later in the day. We have a guest coming in about half an hour. Three o'clock, we should have our second guest of the day. Then later in the evening, oh, we'll have our third <laughs> so these these are just the gargoyles from uh, Dark Souls One, yeah. Um, there are more of them. Yeah. Yes, I I can see that. They love a rooftop, huh? They do. They like that's where they live. There we go. Oh God, I've enchanted the wrong item because the. <laughs> Come on. You got it. A little behind the it. eight ball on this one. You really prefer to um, to kind of stay so that there's at most two. Mm -hmm. Well, if in, uh, it would take, it would there would be no amount of money that would allow that. To happen. Um, everyone is really impressed with that roof saving me earlier. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Got a little behind. I think I'm gonna, so I now have the final Titanite chunk so I can put another plus two into the rapier. So that'll be pretty important. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hypothermic guy says, you're in here trying to ring their bell and they don't like it. They don't, they don't enjoy it. It's not their fault. The bell's been rung, people are upset. People are saying rip, they're saying F. <laughs> Sound like core, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, we got another. Uh, we got an anonymous donation mm. uh, for one hundred dollars. Thanks Whoa. so much, anonymous, for donating a hundred dollars for 
toward the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Thanks so much for helping out today. We're getting on up there. We're making it happen. Um, Dane's doing something. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm getting souls so that I can upgrade my rapier, and then I'll go ahead and level up now that I'm in Majula. Just trying to be efficient. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, yeah, I'm mad about it. I'm, I'm going to alt F4 this whole operation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are asking for ominous Dark Souls hee hee hees in the chat. Oh. People are going for it. Well, like it. well established to be um, suboptimal, the Dark Souls what's, hee hee. What's, what's suboptimal about it? It's not a. It's not the most efficient way to express your bemused, but also menacing amusement. <laughs> Is patches in this game? I can't remember. Uh, different name. Different pate. Is kind of the the Dark Souls two. Oh patches. yeah, did you talk to Pate earlier? I did. Yeah, you were near him, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, were, our, our, the the BPM was way higher. The BPM was way higher. <laughs> and I was ig ignoring some of what was going or on. Or RPM, wasn't it riffs? Rate, rate per minute. Oh yeah, riffs per minute. You're right. Let's see. People are saying that. People are saying that. Uh, Pate is voiced by the guy who voices Darth Maul in episode one. That's wild to me. Bears. Who was the 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 stuntman for Darth Maul? Me. <laughs> Cameron. Yeah. I was like 10 years old and I was whipping that thing around. Star Wars episode one. I'm sure I've said this on other podcast uh, excursions, but we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, Star Wars Episode One was the first movie that I ever saw twice in one day. That's wild. Did you just stay in the theater? No. Went home. Someone else went. Rehydrated. Went yeah. Chugged a Gatorade. Went back. Went back to it. Yeah. I think my, my aunt took me. Mm -hmm. And we went back, and I was, like, so jazzed about Star Wars. We're like, I got to see the Star Wars. The Star Wars. Like, like, my grandparents were like, I got to see the Star Wars. And we went again. It was a cultural event. It was. I guess. There were a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, I, what I remember, uh, the cultural event that I remember most strongly about it was the Taco Bell tie-in. Mm. With the, those little, like, heads on the cup. I think we talked about this exact same thing on the first Dark Souls marathon we did. I, <laughs> I, think, we, I think we had this exact conversation. I can't believe that. I don't remember it, but I, I probably just memory hold a lot of that. I was I was delirious by the end. <laughs> uh, uh, modality says ten years old, going back to watch it again with the director's commentary. Dang. Do, do, do. People are talking about how I was really cut in half for that shot with Darth Maul. That's true. That's oh true. yeah. Hendrick Strzok says, my dad let me leave school early to see the Star Wars one. That's cool. Dang. Don't Kick Food in the chat says, I sat behind some people in the theater for episode one who bought tickets for every screening on opening day. It's not money. It's $100. $100. Hey, Jordo's in the chat. Hey, Jordo. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that the second one goes over there. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I'm glad other people remember the cup tops. Mm -hmm. um, that was a big, big thing for me. I remember like trying to collect them. That was the thing. I really oh, wasn't man, expecting the gargoyle to uh, take the immediate swing on landing. Um, that really surprised me. Let's see. We got Spinning Mind donating deaths, deaths for deaths 11 and 12. That's two extra dollars. Wegg the Gravedigger says... <laughs> consider you not the give question mark and that's probably jordo thanks so much to weg the grave digger for that 25 dollars joan says uh <laughs> change your name and gender at least twice a year for security be sure to use a gender manager so you don't have to memorize which which gender you're using mm -hmm. that's a big that's a big important part of it is uh making sure you use uh, a <laughs> the uh auto-generating gender <laughs> mm -hmm. uh system in the in the gender manager 
Uh, Neil and Elizabeth say, I've never gotten past the rooftop gargoyles in Dark Souls 1. Excited to see these gargoyles get what's coming to them for $50. Thanks so much to Neil and Elizabeth. Notably, you know, Neil and Elizabeth uh, are good friends of range touch and also to, to uh, me and I mean, us in general. Um, but, uh, uh, and great contributors over on the um, Discord. Um, Elizabeth does a lot of helping people out, chatting about stuff over there. But uh, very funny, oh they were God. our last big donation to get us over the goal in um, our first Dark Souls stream, I remember. It was like on the wire. Mm -hmm. It's true. I have a vivid memory of that. Yeah. I've got to spread these, these gargoyles out a little bit. You really want one to do a flame attack to kind of root in place for a bit. Yep. There we go. Oh. I like, uh, remember everybody, watch Danny play with one third of his stamina bar. It's the best thing about watching him play this game. Now you can always uh, reroute a little bit. No, it's true. If I if I if I find this one rough, it might just be I need more health. Yeah, we can always come back because this isn't blocking you off. No, which is nice about Dark Souls One actually, or Dark Souls Two, because um, the paths you can take just are really it's really varied. You don't have to fight the last giant until the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally unrelated, basically. Oh, got it. Okay, so I'm going to do a reroute here. Okay. Um, Lost Center? Yeah, I'll do the Lost Center. I think that uh, this one's going to be a lot easier with more health. Usually, uh, I think last time when I was just kind of playing through, I over-leveled Vigor um, for, like, the beginning. And it meant that I had to, it, like, took longer for me to catch up to where I needed to be in terms of the other stats that I wanted to have to, uh, you know, have the equipment that I, I was looking for. But, uh, yeah, um, this, is, uh, this is substantially more difficult without a, without a larger health bar, I would say. So mm. I'm going to pop back. That's okay. It's easy to come back to. It's an optional boss, period. Mm -hmm. so not for us. Not for but, us, but... Um, let's see here. Friendly Truffle says, the first time we went to see Fellowship of the Ring was the first showing in our area and the manager came out to say that the whole weekend had sold out and that was the first time he'd ever heard of that happening. So he wanted a commemorative picture. Um, I, the, the story is not followed up on in the chat. I'm assuming <laughs> that uh, perhaps it's cursed. <laughs> or, uh, perhaps it now exists in that manager's attic. And You want to uh, see the uh, best door in the game? Sure. Is that better than the one that opens onto nothing? Oh no, we we skipped that door. I that, like that. That is one. a better door. That, that one's pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that's not the best one, but they're they're about equal for me. Uh, let's see here. So um, people are talking about the the Clone Wars podcast. I think they're uh, oh gosh, what another? I'm blanking on the name of that. And Austin and Rob and, and uh, more Alan. civilized era, more civilized age. Mm. You know? A more civilized era. Maybe you're right. I can't remember. Actually, it's one of the two. I can't remember. It's a, it's a quote from the films. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So people are uh, talking about uh, ladle incident for the gargoyles. Nope. Uh, Nick Brad says the gargoyles are 100% the GPS race. Usually do them way later. Yeah. So that's okay. Uh, a more civilized age. Thank mm. you. For, for um. Something that they haven't talked about on that podcast, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, mm -hmm. More Civilized Age, is I read the novelization of mm -hmm. all of the Star Wars films because they released the books like... A little bit before. A little bit before. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and for... They described... This was something that my fencing uh, instructor in college ranted mm -hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Is how Little Lloyd Fauntleroy and his fencing instructor. Yeah. You took it as like an elective. Yeah. No, yeah. it's required. Just, there, there's a way of hearing that and being like, oh, Danny's fencing instructor. Danny's fencing oh, instructor. It's private school. But no, you just took no. it as an elective. No, I took it as it an elective during credit. college. Yeah, I, was, I didn't want to do hard gym. Mm -hmm. But little did I know fencing is very difficult. So yeah. really cell phone there. Mm -hmm. um, in any case... 
uh, he he ranted about Star Wars. He's like, they're wielding them like heavy sabers, but one would imagine they're light. And if it would be a light blade, then everyone would be fencing because that's what we found out is like the most effective way mm-hmm. of going about this stuff, right? Yeah, and sure. in the book, in the novelization of episode two, it specifically addresses this because Dooku's handle for his lightsaber is curved like a fencer's mm-hmm. blade, right? Yep. yep. And it, uh, and he even mentions, yeah, uh, during like the, the scene where there's the lightsaber battle um, mm-hmm. with Dooku, the, uh, the book is like, yeah, he fought like the Jedi used to fight before they altered their fighting style to like basically reflect blaster fire. So the implication is in the Star Wars universe, there was a time when people did fence with their lightsabers. Mm-hmm. But, but because of like basically the elimination of the Sith, I imagine, and the fact that there was just not many lightsaber fights going on, they started s- swinging them around because that yeah. fighting style is better for a, reflecting. Like an, an alternate causality for why that change was made? What's that? Just an alternate scenario for why the, that lore change was made. Oh, what, what, what is it? Uh, fencing instructors wouldn't shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, let's get that in a novel. So they'll, they'll shut up. They'll quit bringing it. Because if that, if that, your fencing tutor said that to you when you were like in college mm-hmm. around the time those came out, then he has been saying that to everyone his entire life anytime it came up. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You can't, it's hard for you to think about. That, that's, yeah, that's not what I'm into. That's 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 a true nerd. That's a true. Do- that's a that's a sword nerd and a, mm-hmm. and, and a real Star nerd. Wars nerd or a Star yeah. Wars nerd. A rather. real nerd. A real wow, nerd. coming after Sudoku first and then coming for sword nerds after that. Jeez, man. If uh, if Maddie's a that. fan of Sudoku, I can't even because Maddie also at least former sword owner. That's true. Probably has done some combat training. We should ask. We should have asked if Maddie's done any combat training, but. Um, uh, Michael is in the chat says, uh, well, countdown to Danny and I starting a fencing podcast. So it sounds like y'all might have some stuff to talk about. Ooh. Um, everyone's talking about it, talking about lightsabers. Uh, they apparently discussed some stuff about lightsaber styles on a Patreon Q and a episode. Oh, I need to catch up on that. Yes. Yeah, so you maybe should check that out. Uh, <laughs> don't feed the chocobo says actually Sudoku was closer to fencing before blasters were introduced. Oh my lord, we we're all over the place here. Uh, modality says which Jedi power battles character would do the best in Dark Souls? Ooh, uh, Plukun. Uh, yeah, Plukun. <laughs> That's <laughs> not even a question. <laughs> it's immediately Plukun. <laughs> and, and people in the chat are saying Plukun. <laughs> That's right. Um, so uh, yeah, give me two seconds. We're about to introduce our next. Uh, guest in just a second. Is it? Would it be a bad time to start a boss battle? No, I don't think so. So uh, let me um, uh, let me do. I need to run to the restroom really quickly, and I'll read some stuff, and then uh, we'll do this boss battle. Okay, dope. I'll let a uh, chat decide. Should I? Should I? Like these, um, like these sconces. Well, can I even? I, that's a good question. No, I can. Got a little flame butterfly. If y'all want, I can do the fight sans sconces. Yeah, so interesting. Th- this boss fight takes place kind of in the dark. And uh, you can lock onto the boss, but only if you're quite close. Do it sans sconce. Let's see. I'm gonna wait to start the battle before uh, I'm gonna wait until Cameron's back. I'm back right now. So let's uh, before you do start the boss, let me just add our guest in. Oh yeah, because I might need to share the screen again, right? Exactly, and I'm not quite sure how this works with this new DM we've done. So let's do. Oh, yeah, it should have just worked. I think it should be good. I think uh, he should be able to just jump in the call here. I'm, I'm looking at your... Okay, here we go. 
There we go. It looks well, like I am streaming. I am sharing the screen. You're you're doing you're doing okay. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? <gasps> I can. Is that um, is that Lutz's music? <laughs> I think it is. I think you're a little bit low. Can you turn up your mic volume just a little tad bit? How is this? Mm, people let us know. Keep, keep talking. People were complaining keep, about the way you oh. sounded, Cameron, but I don't, yeah. Michael's okay, coming I'm in gonna, perfect. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> I'm I'm perfect. I'm so glad to be here and perfect. Uh, it says that uh, people are saying that uh, Lutz sounds great and I'm too quiet. I'm just taking up all the air. Uh, Danny, can you up me in the... Yeah, yeah, I can up you in the mix, as it were. Whoop. Okay, try about now. But about now, everybody, can you hear me talking about Dark Souls? Dark Souls, it's a, it's a boss. That's Michael great. Lutz is joining us uh, right as we uh, face the lost sinner. Uh, Lutz, mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about sinners? Um, I mean, they leave some room to be desired, I guess, kind of, you know, as a fundamental thing. Uh, but, you know, I can't hate them. I just hate the sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's a thing that got drilled into me. Mm-hmm. Well, by drill. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Like, drill was my Sunday school teacher. This explains a lot about me. It, it really does. Between <laughs> this and the dad who works in a casket factory. Yep. Those are the two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael's two things. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so this is Michael Lutz. I mean, people, people know. People know who Michael Lutz is. And, uh, so. yeah, we only all get together in one room for live streams for charity. It's true. That's yeah. a thing. That's a thing that we <laughs> have agreed upon. That's an important part of the range touch thing. Um, but this is what we do. Yeah, Michael's going to be coming and join us for an hour or so. We might, we might, uh, I don't know if you were around earlier, Michael, in the chat, but, uh, we bought more time with Maddie. Ooh, earlier today. Oh. Maddie Myers was on earlier. With money. We bought more time. Yeah, with money. So with money might, to might, uh, a worthy cause. Yeah, unless you have a hard out, we might try to buy more time with you. I, I do not. This is a, a kind of rare occasion for me where I have no other commitments today. So if people want to buy my time uh, through charity, then I am here for it. Mm -hmm. So people are saying Aragolin himself, uh, which is fine. If you're, if you're listening to this and you don't know what that's a reference to, um, we did a show a year ago. Like a, a Dungeons and Dragons actual play show called Sword Coast Coast to Coast, and uh, Michael was a part of it. I don't want to spoil it because it actually is pretty cool. There's like 40 episodes or so, and you can start from the beginning and listen all the way to the end, and it's one kind of big complete story. I guess I could write all that down. And it would just be a novel. That might be interesting. <laughs> just do it like a straight up uh, like Dragons of Autumn Twilight thing. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in Icewind Dale. But, uh, but yeah, but Michael is involved in that in a really cool way. And so is Jordan, who is in the, um, in, in the chat here. Oh, you beat a boss, by the way. I did. Yeah. So you can check out Sword Coast, Coast to Coast if you just Google that. And uh, it's a cool thing. If you want more range touch content that we don't talk about as much, just because it's, it's over. So uh, <laughs> it's not, not as uh, on, the, on the brain. Let me check out some, uh, some things here. Oh, hey. So we got uh, some donations from Lesbian Gun Show. In, uh, who says, I love video games. That was for $50. Uh, Spinning Mind says, uh, this is for Deaths 13 and 14. It's $2. And Ninja, Ninja Turtle says, Great Soul Embraced, $4.20. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Oh, and I also, uh, Mary, who was in the chat, was also in it, of course, too. I'm forgetting everyone who's in the chat today. But uh, it's great. Also, Hendrix Trog, who was in the chat, was also a guest on the show for a couple episodes, which is really great. Um, so yeah, hypo there, there's like 40 episodes or something like that. People are saying, please make a novel out of it. Well, um, you know, when, I, when I've got time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey everybody. Guess what? We are a mere 11 minutes away from 69 on the nine. Are you aware of this phenomena, uh, Michael? Oh, I've been listening. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I'm aware. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's when you donate some multiplier of 69 nine minutes after the hour so that's going to be for for me 309 might be some other time for you but it, in a few minutes in just 10 minutes from now 
you should be ready to donate $6.90 or $13.80 or $27.60 or some other multiplier of six and nine um, in order to benefit the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, which is what we're raising money for today. Our initial goal here is $10,000. We are well on our way to, to hitting that goal, but we really want to hit this goal of $15,000 by the end of this stream because that will make Danny beat the final bosses of the game with a ladle. Now, you might be thinking, hey, a ladle is not a sword, which is the normal thing you fight with. And I say, indeed. Um, so that's going to be hard, and it'll be really funny to watch, and it'll be good, and he'll have to pay more money because he's going to die more, almost certainly. Oh. So it's all benefit for everybody involved. Um, when you donate, you can also uh, demarcate your donation with which DLC you want us to do first. Um, there is the snowy one, the ivory <laughs> crown. There is the <laughs> flamey one with uh, the iron crown. And then there's the water one, which is the sunken crown. Um, Don't forget Danny, the go-kart one. Uh, and yes. there's also uh, the rainbow one <laughs> <laughs> with the go-kart. Um, but uh, Danny does not want to do ivory crown first. So... If you want to donate a bunch of money to the Ivory Crown and make him do the thing that he doesn't want to do, welcome to Dark Souls 2. Mm. But uh, this is all, of course, for a good cause. It's for the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. We're spending all day hanging out here with you, doing this in order to raise money for a good cause. Uh, Sylvia Rivera Law Project, of course, provides legal aid uh, for... Uh, or it's a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. Um, so it's a good and necessary cause, and uh, we want to make sure that we raise some money for them. So... As little as a dollar uh, makes the world move, and in eight minutes, you're going to have the opportunity to donate even more than that. Some multiplier of 69. <laughs> oh, that's my spiel. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael, in the chat before we got here, before, before you uh, got into the, the zone, as it were, mm -hmm. you, um, you, were, you were talking about fencing. Yes, yes. I also did fencing in college. Oh, my goodness. It turns out. Uh huh. Did your uh, did your instructor have as strong of opinions about uh, Star Wars as mine did? So here's where uh, it is revealed how much more of a nerd that I am than you. Mm. I didn't take this as an elective. <laughs> this was just like a club that that students ran that I was a part of. Oh wow! You didn't yeah, get credit I mean, for this. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You've got commitment. Yeah. Yeah, and no one complained about Star Wars. Mm. Weirdly enough. Although, I guess, I don't know. I went to a school with a very strong Japanese studies program. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it, a lot of our, like, combat metaphors tended toward the anime. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, much in the same way that all visual media uh, can be either a, uh, a Star Wars, or a Star Trek, rather, or a scary movie, all combat metaphors we know are anime or Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are the only two. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got I have the high version. ground, people can shout. <laughs> uh -huh. For either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's Forlord. I like this guy. Oh, uh, this is the reason. So I finally figured out why there are so many more entries in Speed Souls or in like the speedrunning community for the regular <laughs> Dark Souls 2 than Scholar of the First Sin. And it's specifically because of this summon. Oh, uh, because he just shows up randomly and, yes. and it adds to your time? Yes. And, like, you can't leave the area yep. until you deal with him. Looks like he's dealing with you. We got a, a big donation from Nathan no. Ritchie. Poisoned. I'm poisoned. Who says, who says, praise the sun or something. I don't know. I have not played a soul. I haven't played a Souls game ever. Uh, who donates $100. Thanks so much, Nathan, for that $100 donation. We are at, where are we at here? Let me do a little refresh. We are at $6,584. That's Damn, wild. Man. That is. Wow. Um, Intrepid Vector donates $6.90 and says, Would Balthazar and Ticklevard link or abandon the fire? Same mm. question for Lutz's Fallout characters. Um, reminder, in six minutes, we're doing 69 on the 9. I'll explain it again when we get there. But uh, everyone get ready. Get your donations ready. Are you uh, uh, going to answer that question? About, yeah, I'm uh, Ticklevard would link the fire, of course. Yeah, Balthazar would not, I imagine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What about mm -hmm. uh? What about Eleanor? Yeah, I, I think Eleanor might, but the the latest uh, incarnation of Eleanor, which is to say, Lucky Nell, mm -hmm. I I'm not so sure about her. She's a real wild card. That's my, that's what I'm gathering 
from the from the show. <laughs> you really can't. <laughs> Lucky Nell is kind of almost. Uh, there's a, some chaotic neutral vibes going on. Yeah, I think there's a. You know, Michael and I haven't talked about this, but I think there's a fifty fifty shot that we get to the end of this uh, Fallout New Vegas playthrough, and Michael reveals that every decision he has made has has happened because of a dice roll. <laughs> <laughs> with like no input from him <laughs> we'll just have to see Garrulous Monolith says that Eleanor would become the Lord of Hollows which is like kind of the third oh, yeah. in uh, Dark Souls mm. 3 it's time for you to hang out with Koth don't they show up don't, don't the Primordial Serpent show up in, in that ending they yes do. they do I believe so Oh my lord! This is why you can't. <laughs> people hate speedrunning it. There, there yeah. are there are uh, third party like software that you can just run, or, or I think either that or you monitor your RAM usage, and speedrunners can just abandon a run if they see that the forlorn is loaded, like well <laughs> before the forlorn appears. Fun stuff. Jeez. Video games. But uh, Michael, my understanding is uh, that you're you're quite a aficionado of like Dark Souls lore. Is that accurate? Well, I I would I would not say I'm an aficionado. I'm not as into this stuff uh, as much as other people might be. But I do enjoy the the thing about me, I guess, fundamentally, is that I'm a fan of fans. Mm. I really. I really like looking at the ways that people put together Dark Souls lore and kind of the ways that they tell these stories and sort of following along with them and finding the, the differing interpretations that come about. Uh, you know, so I did just, you know, a little bit of research here uh, to have some cool facts to read out about Dark Souls 2 uh, mm -hmm. to, to folks as as this goes on. Uh, so I can start... Like from the wiki, maybe? Or are you getting on Reddit? Where'd you, where'd you oh. find it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the wikis, Reddit, uh, a couple of old, uh, you know, articles on uh, some some gaming websites, mm. uh, theories IGN. like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a secret cool. journal or two. Yeah. Maybe a live journal. Mm. <laughs> Tumblr, popular Tumblr posts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Is dude just in oh. here? Yeah. He's guarding He's uh, Sublime Dust. This is a hard okay. Sublime it's Dust Santeria. to find. <laughs> it plays that the whole time it's in your inventory, and that's why no mm -hmm. one picks it up. You can hear it distantly as you approach. <laughs> yeah, that's how you generally find them. Um, I've just got the volume a little too low uh, for the, the, the viewers to hear. Do, do, do. Well, uh, do you want to share maybe one fact with us right now, Michael? Um... Let's see. Here's here's an interesting one. Uh, in a long retrospective inter interview with Game Lint magazine, uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki says that he was inspired to make the original Dark Souls while wandering around an abandoned castle, and he thought it would be cool if all of these skeletons were attacking me. <laughs> in the same interview, directors of the sequel, Tomohiro Shibuya and Yui Tanamura, credit their inspiration for Dark Souls 2 also to imagining Miyazaki being attacked <laughs> by skeletons. <laughs> that totally makes sense. Yeah, people mm -hmm. talk about the, uh, I mean, you know, I'm on record many times at this point about the, uh, you know, talking about that car, you know, experience that Miyazaki had of people running into each other with cars mm -hmm. uh, to get out of the, the snow. And, like, there's so many of these other anecdotes that seem really important to the development of this game that no one talks about. Um, <laughs> do you know where that castle was, by any chance? Did it say in the interview? Uh, well, I mean... It, that's the other thing is that you have to go into the comments to figure that out and there are people who have different theories on it and it has to do with like what is the name and like you know maybe someone left and founded this other kingdom it's it's really complicated and i'll get into that with some later facts that yeah, is sure. a good fact i think we are one minute away from nine after the hour we are in one minute you should donate some so six dollars and ninety cents or perhaps $13.80 or $27.60, some sort of multiplier of 69. You can go to tinyurl.com slash ds2charity in order to do that. Do it right now! It's actually 309 right now! Ah! Do it right now! Ah! 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 Yeah, movie sign! Do it right now! It's the, uh, the Pee Wee Herman um, mm -hmm. 
uh, when they when you say like the the forbidden word or however they, they yeah, we that. can't we can't bring up Pee Wee Herman because Michael will roast me for not remember the minutia of the plot of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the all the Pee Wee Herman charity streams. Yeah. Oh, they're so pissed. They, 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 they actually that's another thing. I know I talked about being a uh, banned from the pottery festival, but also uh, Herman Fest every year mm. prevents you from <laughs> going there just because they heard that one episode of the show. These are skeletal lords. Skeleton lords. I mean, they're skeleton lords. Yeah. They're also skeletal. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can really see. <laughs> uh, the information from that interview kind of trickling into the gameplay <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. It's kind of, it's almost like you planned this. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, also, from the same interview, uh, Shibuya and Tanamura on meeting fan expectations for the sequel, quote, It's very easy to feel nervous when so many people loved the first game. Who could forget classic moments like their first glimpse of the Hydra in Dark Root Basin or distinctive characters like Big Hat Logan? We'd much rather you pretend the first game didn't exist while playing this one because it would make things a lot easier for us. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. The you thing never is, want to be compared. I don't even mm -hmm. have to remember anything about Dark Souls 1. I can just like fire up the, the VOD from last mm -hmm. time. That's true. Yeah, you've never played it again after that, right? Uh, I know. Every time I you want to play Dark it, yeah. Souls, you just you just fire up the VOD. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of skeletons here. It's not a have small you, amount. Have you thought about killing mm -hmm. any of them? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Miyazaki was just like, I gotta get these things. What if yeah. we gave him a sword? You yeah. Know? I can't believe that no one's thought of this before. Oh, this is important. This is an important uh, ask in the chat here. Uh, Intrepid Vector asks, uh, "Can you uh, divine when we're going to get Bloodborne 2? I don't know if maybe that came up somewhere. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, look through your information. We got yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll uh, double check some of my sources. I have notes here, so yes, I'll I'll let you know what I can figure out about Bloodborne 2. People are asking where Large Marge more uh, lore in Dark Souls. Where do they intersect? There's no basement in the Alamo. Uh, Large Marge was scary when I was a kid. Yeah, I think that that's one of the scenes that my parents would always skip, like from the VHSs that we would rent. Wow. Mm. Yeah. They said, oh, little, little, baby, little baby Danny. Wait, so you went to the... Um, uh, the gutter, but you didn't go and kill the boss there. No, I only went there to uh, to kill the crystal lizard to get the Dark Knight Stone. Wow. Yeah. Let's see, nothing over there. Okay. Awesome. Everyone's doing a great job. 69 on the 9. Y'all are killing it. Oh, shit. Nice. Hit, okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you're going to have to say nice a couple times here. Nice. Need some donations. <laughs> Illuminous uh, donates $6.90. Says nice. Nice. Okay, Jason says nice times three, $20.70. But I only have to say nice once. Sure. <laughs> okay, nice. Paul says, hey, folks, love all the stuff you do. I'm stuck doing some work on the weekend, and watching cool people play Dark Souls makes it go down much smoother. Oh, and, nice. And uh, play me crowned first. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that before I tell you what the amount was, which hmm. is six hundred and ninety-four dollars. Whoa! And, and also twenty cents. Holy shit, Paul! <laughs> um, thanks for that. Uh, hopefully, you're well paid at this job you're having to do <laughs> on the weekend. Uh, sorry that you gotta work inside. That sucks. Holy um, shit, indeed. Thank you so much for that very generous donation. It's a very generous donation and really does kind of put the Iron King, I think, near the top. So mm -hmm. currently right now, if you donate or when you donate, you can uh, denote which of the uh, GLCs we would like to do first. And we got a really big donation earlier for $2,100 uh, for Iron King. Um, and but uh, so that's the one with the, the deepest pockets. You know, they, they've all pushed for the Iron King. But uh, the Sunken Crown... Um, is, uh, you know, it's the proletarian ones. So like some smaller, lots of smaller donations. Uh, some, some big ones, but some smaller ones. And so if you uh, have proletarian solidarity, you might want to say sunken crown um, going forward, just letting people know that. But there's still way more donations. We got anonymous giving $6.90. We got go astronaut go. 
um, who says uh, GLC order vote is for runner's choice. So that's um, that's going to be Sunken Crown, right? Uh, yes, correct. Any donor's choice would be Sunken to Crown. Uh, Mary. Sunken King. Mary Nice. Right? Sunken mm. King. Mary Nice says Ivory King on the nine with $69. Thanks so much to Mary again. Griffin says, excellent, $5. Thanks, Griffin. <laughs> Jordan Mallory says, did I do this right? And donated four twenty. dollars No, Jordan. <laughs> you messed that one up. But uh, 69 Um it's not the cool number, it's the nice number. That's mm. important. Anonymous donates uh, $6.90, $6.90. Michael H. also donates $6.90. Thanks so much to everyone who's donated. And that's not not even all of it. We got the big nice, who comments nice, $6.90. Nice. And we got Scott donating $7. Thanks so much to everyone who's donated 69 on the 9, 9 minutes after the hour, donating some sort of multiplier of 69. Um, generating a lot of good money. Good, or, uh, nice great. money, even. <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't say that. You know, that's, uh, you can say that if you want to. I wouldn't say that. So, have we talked about how this game might smack of gender? <laughs> hmm. Well, not yet. You want oh to? Oh my gosh! I've been <laughs> <laughs> absolutely wrecked by a uh, by a sorceress in lingerie. <laughs> Just completely. yeah, they're cool looking. I, shout out to them, just doing whatever the hell they want to mm -hmm. here in the Earth and Pink. This is one of the co the what, the Earth and Peak. Uh, this is one of the coolest places in the level, I think. You really like this uh, this spot? I don't like all the poison and shit. That's not what I'm about. But I do <laughs> like this like big uh, what you call it the windmill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wind turbine, and what you do there is pretty cool. But we'll we'll, we'll uh, if people haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it. We'll check it out in a minute. Plus plus wind turbines minus <laughs> minus poison. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, we're up to $7,425, by the way. Wow. That's a that's, lot. That's quite a bit. I've really got to step on it if, I, if I'm if i going to beat 15000 If I can just finish the game right at 14900 that'd be pretty great. Yeah, that's a, so that's a big thing, because if uh, we get to $15,000 here today, then Danny will um, beat the final boss of this game with a ladle. If we don't do that, he won't have to. So if he, uh, so if you really want Danny to fight the final boss of this game with a ladle, you should uh, donate a bunch of money uh, because that yeah. will get us there, or, or get all your friends to donate a little money. You know, kind of mm -hmm. either or. And um, you know, if not, that just makes his life easier. So check that out. Yeah, we're, we're kind of a win-win. We're about a third of the way through the game, you would say. Uh, somewhere in there, yeah. Boss-wise, we're about a quarter. But mm -hmm physical time because some of the bosses are kind of squished up against each other later it's correct yeah is she fully topless no i don't believe so oh, okay, okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> is that the <laughs> deal breaker <laughs> are you about to pull the plug? <laughs> <laughs> no it was just i was i was, I was surprised i'm out of bounds how'd you do that very carefully yeah they shouldn't let you do this wow I mean, Dark Souls is about doing what you want in an open world. It's true. <laughs> hey, do you do you see that mountain over there? You can die under it. <laughs> <laughs> you can go out of bounds, get crushed there. I like these guys with these hammers. The big hammer like, fellas yeah, that oftentimes like, clumsily you know, go through poison urns and kill themselves. Yeah, I like that. And also, <laughs> they are definitely topless, by the way. Yes, that's true. No ambiguity on that one. Uh, we got Stranger Peace donating $6 said queer theory reading of dark souls question mark also sunken king i love oh, nice. everything y'all do thanks so much stranger peace for uh helping danny out here god i'm gonna have to tally all this up at some point hey this is the covetous demon i think he is cool yeah Great. it's a great boss oh, fight i don't want to gender the the, the uh, creature but uh I, I like uh his like little face dang he's like a, a grub worm got spiky armpits mm -hmm. i good. bet he's coveting some legs <laughs> <laughs> Coveting not being a tadpole. Coveting the next stage of... Oh, uh, dang, got me. old development. Oof. Destroyed. Yeah, destroyed. It's laughing about it, too. Damn. I know. Generally, oh, oh, oh. generally, I don't have a time, have too hard of a time with covetous demon, but I was, it's hard for me to get in a groove there. I'm going to say that well, about everything going forward. Generally, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with this. But. I mean, another interesting fact that I found out about this game, mm -hmm. just to explain kind of what maybe happened here. Yep. 
Um, the Dark Souls games are famous, if not infamous, for their high level of difficulty. And in Dark Souls 2, the developers thought to accentuate this series trait by releasing chemicals into the atmosphere and groundwater that made everyone on Earth worse at video games. Mm. So this is really in the difficulty discourse. It's really about, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, bragging about how you didn't get contaminated. Right, uh, right, exactly. <laughs> It's like, oh, I haven't drunk any water since. Like, when did this come out? 2014? Yeah. So, like, everyone, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to note that earlier when you were killed and you said the game smacks of gender, many people said you were destroyed by gender. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, said, sometimes when you smack of gender, gender smacks you back. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I had chat paused on accident. Oh, no. People keep bringing this up. Actually, one person. Uh, Coffee Stomach keeps bringing this up. I did say earlier today that if we got to $20,000, I would commission a ladle weapon from mm -hmm. a blacksmith for Danny mm -hmm. to hang on the wall. That's true. I'll still do that. That's only going to become important when we get to after $15,000. 15000 is the big goal mm -hmm. you know, that we got currently. People were really surprised by your airwalk maneuver that you did. Um, <laughs> Stranger Peace says, Miyazaki's contamination will be taught in history books. <laughs> Just a reminder to everyone, uh, if you want to donate, you can go to uh, tinyurl.com slash DS Charity. Wait, what? DS2 Charity? DS2 Charity. Yes, two chair. I, don't know I specifically I made it <laughs> dark. I need, to, I need to write it down. I really <laughs> did try to do the easiest thing because at first I was like scholar, but I was like, oh, that's you know, scholar charity. I didn't want. Yeah, I didn't be, want people to think that this was something it wasn't. <laughs> We're <laughs> feeding hungry grad students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are trying out some riffs here on the uh, drill tweet. We got this whole game smacks of gender. I say as I slay the coven. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I that's that's one I haven't seen before. Uh, hold, let me let me get this tweet out. Jesus, quit dying in the middle of the uh, this this uh, uh, <laughs> this whole game smacks of gender. I say as I slay the covetous demon, <laughs> turning the earth and peak into the earth and piss. <laughs> you got to chuckle out of Michael. That's I think that's all you get. Dancing infernal. Uh, people are really reacting to you being destroyed by your arch enemy gravity. <laughs> I like these headless uh, oh. assassin fellas. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that save was that uh, save. astonishing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, that was the coyote time, <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> Spending mind saying this, Danny, Danny always making sure to do two deaths back to back to make donating easy. It's, it's, it might be. <laughs> um, let's see here. You want to talk about some lore? Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. It. Okay. So let's. I've, I've. You know. Outside of other research, here are some lore facts that I managed to dig up. Within the Dark Souls community, the precise connections between the first and second games are a hotly debated topic. Some commentators even go so far as to believe the games are entirely unrelated and the titles are only a coincidence. Mm -hmm. However, some fascinating clues as to the nature of their relationship include the following, and I'll, I'll save uh, most of these, but point number one, the one that is almost uniformly mentioned in every single online discussion, is that the protagonists of both games are cursed by evil bonfires. <laughs> mm, it's true. <laughs> you know, this is something delightful um, about this lore that you're digging up. Is that that could be on every wiki? <laughs> yeah, like I could see that being on every wiki. You know, mm -hmm. put that on TV tropes. Evil bonfires I... in all these games. I mean, not not to not to break uh, uh, Kate Babe here, but. Uh... <laughs> Some of these things are very close to actual <laughs> discussions that I've been reading. <laughs> uh, to fill with root says, I think that's just a coincidence. Mm. <laughs> um, says, so you think about it, they're the real villain. 
I have to give me like the the elevator pitch for you know Stephen King. He's got a new novel. It's about uh-huh. an evil bonfire <laughs> that curses people. What what is what are like the broad strokes of that novel? Ooh, that's a good one. So it could be. No, it's an evil bonfire that curses people. That's pretty actually out of Stephen King's oeuvre. Oh, I know really? In, in the culture, mm-hmm. you know, we might think that. But yeah, he doesn't really write that kind of novel. Now, if it were a bonfire that was able to resonate with a small child mm-hmm. who uh, had just a little bit of an inkling of uh, some sort of second sight, that might be a little bit more mm-hmm. to, the, to the point. A psycho well, fire. Mm-hmm. People are saying, <laughs> oh, shit, psycho <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why did you do that? Oh, I, I can't. I couldn't remember if there is a human effigy in that <laughs> in that vase. <laughs> I'm just imagining like Charlie McGee stepping into on Orlando and instantly lighting every bonfire. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Jordan Mallory says it's a sentient bonfire that follows a guy around. That That's <laughs> maybe closer to. Um. <laughs> oh no Stephen King rewrites Duel again but this time it's a bonfire uh, Stephen King has written the story for Duel I think uh, three times mm-hmm. one time with his son Joe Hill which we oh. will fortunately on the show not have to read it's oh why not because it's a terrible story and it's not technically in one of his books so I don't think we have to read it uh, so, right. so just King things is, is Stephen King not the not the whole Novel, family. Novels that are published with Stephen King's name on the cover or Richard Bachman. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. Hey, it's uh, whoever the hell this is. Mytha. The the yeah. baneful queen. We all know. Yeah. You know, Mytha. <laughs> now, here's a question. Is she topless? Or is that a very stylized scale shirt? I don't know. I mean, I think she looks pretty literally topless, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. Very oh. uh, tippy topless, as it were. Mm-hmm. Really, just pretty laissez faire with throwing the head around. Mm-hmm. You would think that you that would be your prized possession. A mm-hmm. lot of things without heads in this game, in a broad sense. No, that's true. I think that's. Uh, is that number two? Or are we on more? Well, there's oh, Vingarl. Dukes, uh, the Duke Steer Freya's head fell off during that mm-hmm. fight. One of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Vingarl. Juice mm-hmm. your Freya, this person, these headless mannequins running around. Oh yeah, just a lot, a lot, of, a lot happened. Mm-hmm. That would be the genie counter of Dark Souls Two. It would. That would be like the, the big <laughs> way to do it. Uh, we got. Let's see here. We got two more dollars from Spending Mind. It's for Death Fifteen and Sixteen. And uh, Scott says I have to head out, but at Danny's current rate, about three bosses per hour. Here's six point now for the next ten hours. It should take sixty nine. $69. Thanks so much to Scott. We'll see you later, Scott. Um, I'm assuming this is the same Scott who runs... It might not be. Could not be the same Scott. So, so I apologize to Scott. But uh, there is a Scott who runs the... Uh, what you call it? The Game Club over on the Range Touch Discord and does a great job with that. This so, is... Uh, I think that up, once you take that elevator and you walk out here after being where you were... Um, this is like one of the coolest yeah. like moments in DS2. It's just being yeah, I, like mm-hmm. agreed. Mm-hmm. I think it's very cool. People get really mad about it because oh, you're on a mountaintop. How do you ride a how do you ride a, a elevator to a fire world? It's in a it's in the, like the the top of a volcano or something. I mean, it's chill out. Who cares? It's a video game. <laughs> 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 Me, me uh, on a on a seven year project to read every Stephen King novel. Who cares? Just quit thinking about this card. There were forty one bosses when I started uh, uh, Scribble Scribble mm-hmm. System. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, yes, um, a lot of the bosses will get kind of cleared out all in a whack. There will be several that were like, "Woo!" Yeah, zipping through three or four at a time. So, and please chat if I miss a counter. Uh, just let me know. Just uh, yep. just holler about it or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone is saying, I'm glad that opinion has flipped around. People are saying the volcano. Uh, Tuki, Tuki Ozi is saying in the chat, the volcano is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob Von Guten says, new game study study buddies episode. Chill out. Who cares? It's a video <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> 
final episode. That's the yep. final. You can't do studies, yeah. game studies after. Yeah, after quit that. thinking about it. Who cares? It's <laughs> Go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you're so it's really interesting. You know, I when I play this game, you know, as a casual, as they say. I'm changing clothes a lot, but you don't really need any additional clothes here. Yeah, so an interesting thing about this game is that armor doesn't matter a whole lot. And this this is coming Mm. from somebody that in Dark Souls 1, I really leaned heavily on having very, very heavy armor on, right? All the way up till the end, I was wearing Havel's armor. But uh, yeah, it, it, the, the, basically the equation for determining how much damage armor mitigates was changed in Dark Souls 1 and made it of limited use. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much would it take, how much money would it take for you to wear the Jester's outfit while also wielding the ladle in the final boss? Mmm. 16. 16? 16, dollars 16,000. Because we're, we're okay. getting to ladle at 15, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is not really a big, as you just said, armor doesn't really matter. So mm-hmm. it's really just a reputation thing. Like, do you want to feel like a clown while you're doing it? Now, here's the, here's the thing. I don't know off the top of my head because I haven't been practicing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how to acquire the Jester's armor. You just buy it from this guy. Is mm-hmm. it really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. From the, the, this person. Yeah, the vendor up here. Yep. This is Sharon. Mm-hmm. Uh, no confusion about appropriate fighting styles from... Fence or Sharon. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, since you uh, were just talking about different types of Mm -hmm. armor and so on, here's another bit of, like, trivia slash lore. Mm -hmm. If defeated through the use of ice magic, the Duke's dear Freya will sometimes drop the Soda Jerk's beret, which is identical to the one dropped by Seath the Scaleless in the previous game. Mm. This implies that Freya and Seath shopped at the same (laughs) store. Whether or not this was in An Orlando, we can only speculate. Mm. The lore implications. Yeah, mm-hmm. do, we, do we know what the item description is? You know, is it, is it uh, let me pull text? it up on the wiki here. I have some, oh, I can do, uh, let me read some donations while you're looking. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, let's see, we got Illuminous. This is actually a question for Michael. What tobacco does Lutz smoke? I know that you're, a to- uh, I was going to say you're a tobacconist, but that's actually a job, so you're probably not that. <laughs> um, and so thanks to Illuminous and uh, to Don H. Don H just donated, or, uh, Illuminous donated $20. Thanks so much to Illuminous. And Don H donated $6.90. Nice. Very nice. Uh, an answer. Yes, very nice. In answer to the question, I tend to smoke Cavendish blends. Oh. Is that a real thing? So, there you go. Is that real? Yes. Yeah, no, that's not a thing I'm making up. <laughs> okay, uh, right, look, I don't know. Uh, so, Did you figure out that info on the wiki there? Yeah. Yes, yes, no, I pulled up the Soda Jerks beret. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, the item description is uh, this beret was w- worn by a soda jerk in the shadow of an Eiffel Tower. Oh. oh. An Eiffel Tower. Mm hmm. Uh, well, so, there are other worlds to these. So. Sure. Right. The. Okay, so this is. Oh, you didn't do any summons for it. You didn't summon Luke to I did not. Interesting choice. This is Smelter Demon, who is one of my favorite bosses in the game. Because I like when Smelter Demon uh, reaches into its body and powers up its sword. That's the coolest thing uh, an enemy or like character in a piece of media can do. Mm-hmm. Is, <laughs> is like self-charge. Dang. Also got cool, like, I like this like, uh, you know, unattached center that's mm-hmm. just around the flame. Yeah, it's magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a sucker for that. Yeah, he's doing it. Oh yeah. no, he's just exploding. He's exploding. Oh no, he's not. That's uh, that's turning on the furnace. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Squirrelet War uh, says this uh, <laughs> this boss broke me in mind and soul. Yeah, get out of there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it changes the lighting. It's great. 
It's got a giant's face for some reason. I'm sure there's a lore reason for that. As well, a lore re uh, as a Michael and I as lore reasons veterans, we can mm -hmm. use that word and it's acceptable. Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, fun fact, the kingdom of giants in this game was inspired by the New York Giants football team, oh. who also succumbed to a horrific curse countless recurring millennia ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't even want to talk about it with them. They hate it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I said. I said in the Discord yesterday that I once made the New York Giants incredibly mad at me, and it's because I brought this up. People are asking, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I didn't want to spoil it, but I knew it would come up. I knew Michael would bring that up. You say, yeah! If you're... If you're a sports fan in New York, you know not to talk about the Giants curse. Yeah. Uh, really funny when uh, Danny was playing this game uh, a little while back mm -hmm. in preparation, maybe for doing this. We were we were thinking about what games we wanted to do for uh, prepared to give this year. <laughs> we were thinking Dark Souls two, and uh, uh, you were like about to do Smelter Demon. You're like, oh, let's just do it. And uh, then I watched you wipe on that pause for like a full two hours. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was when we it was just a, like a nascent idea of oh well maybe this will be the next charity event. Let's play some. Yeah, it was a full it was a full evening of Smelter Demon. You kind of have to get the the uh, timing right on a lot of those attacks. It's a little deceptive when you actually need the iframes. This is one of the reasons why I spent all of those points in adaptability to get uh to get fast roll iframes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real kick in the butt later because there is another smelter demon in one of the DLCs that's the same enemy, similar attacks, a different hitbox for the attacks. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's gaming. That is gaming. Uh, someone made a reference to a holder demon and folder gaming. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, oh, damn, I missed it. Today we're raising money for the <laughs> Sylvia Rivera Law Project, uh, which is a organization that provides, I, I can never remember the exact phrasing, it's a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. Thanks for coming and hanging out and checking out what we're up to. We're raising money today in order to make this happen. So we're trying to get to $10,000. We're at 7000 some odd dollars right now. And uh, we're making our way there. We're trying to get to 10K. Um, and uh, when you donate, you can tell us which of the DLCs you want Danny to do first. Uh, either Ivory Crown or the Iron King or the Sunken Crown. Um, you can look those up and see which one. The most difficult one to do first would be Ivory. Uh, and so if you want to make Danny's life real hard, you can donate for Ivory. Um, and just you know, put that in little, the comment box when you donate. Here's the deal. When we get to $15,000, if we get to $15,000, Danny will fight the final bosses of this game, who are pretty hard, with a ladle. That's right, a ladle. <laughs> for soup. Uh, not for stabbing. And so, uh, but we got to get to $15,000, and we're about halfway to that goal right now. We're actually literally right at halfway to that goal right now. So think about it. Think about chipping in five, six bucks, some money here, a lot of people donating. A little bit of money will get us to that goal, and it's all for a great cause. So think about doing that. I dropped yeah, my and uh, in in to jump back to that interview that I've been referring to. One of the quotes from Miyazaki there, uh, when asked, like you know, what is your overall goal with the Souls franchise and sort of the lineage, is I want people to fight giant monsters with a ladle, a ladle for soup, not for stabbing. <laughs> That's oh, wow. that was a really good callback on your part, Cameron, to like get the quote. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got it all written down in front of me. You know? mm -hmm. It's a big part of the stream is making sure that you know we get it perfectly done here. The pursuer, the pursuer and Lubu, there is some consonants there. Yeah, some, something. <laughs> there's something there. It's not wrong. Well, except the pursuer like shows up out of nowhere, and you don't get an option to pursue or not. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you really ran by that guy, which is unfortunate. But that little turtle guy will knock that hole out of the. It is, yeah, out of the bridge, and that's cool. Um, cool hey, Jordo, you're in the chat. There's any chance you can just get like the fanbite account to retweet or tweet about this charity stream? Can you abuse your power that way? That's podcast oh. producer for fanbite.com. Damn. Duke. Destroyed. Yeah. Oh. I think I'm going to be a little bit more conservative on the next time. <laughs> 
I can hear you stretching. Do you have any water? In yeah, you? I think I'm going to take a sip of water and, I, and also maybe stretch. I'll be right back. Yeah, please stand up and <laughs> drink some water, and, and Michael and I can talk about whatever. Yeah. Michael, if you, you've never played a Dark Souls, have you? What? I've played Dark Souls. No, you've never played one, have you? Oh, you're right, actually. I never have. That was a false memory. No, uh, did you play the first one, maybe? <laughs> yes, I played the first one. Mm, what's your favorite part of the first Dark Souls? Um, gosh, actually, um, I, I actually, uh, um, mentioned this earlier, uh, but kind of like the first time I did see the Hydra in Darkroot Basin, mm -hmm. uh, where you like walk into Darkroot Basin and just kind of off in the distance, you're just like, oh, there's like a waterfall or a lake over there or something. And, um, it's moving and spitting and I'm just not going to go over there. I'm going to go this other direction. That was a really fun kind of, uh, moment in, you know, phenomenological gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like a great vibe. I think so many of those. I mean, obviously, you know, Danny, Danny talks a lot about uh, being able to see things in the distance in Dark Souls 1 and that being a big thing for him in particular. But uh, I, I think those particular, like, moments in any of these games where you're like, what the hell is that? Like, what could that thing be? Like, in this game, we, we went by them without talking about them, really. But in the uh, No Man's Wharf, those, like, weird creatures that if you hold a torch, they keep backing up. And they're, like, big four-limbed kind of ape-like creatures they're pretty mm -hmm. sweet i like that yeah no the that that is what these games are good for is the experience of walking into an area and kind of seeing something and being like i don't know what the hell that is but i'm not going to deal with it right now weapon thing says two types of games phenomenological <laughs> and who cares <laughs> <laughs> now danny is there there's not a boss you gotta go to like right here through that door no no uh we there's done... nothing up there up that bell tower. There's no, no there, there. there's not a, a another like version of the gargoyles in Belfry Soul. Thankfully, mm -hmm. people are pitching uh, Sin Scholar study buddies on, uh, <laughs> on the thing. <laughs> you know that. What's really interesting to me is I feel like if we did a Dark Souls lore podcast, where it was like the three of us and we just fine tune went through the Dark Souls lore, mm -hmm. I think we get a lot of support for that. But then I would have to sit through the fine tune <laughs> Dark Souls lore. And uh, for Homestuck, I'll do it. <laughs> but I don't know about for, for Dark Souls. Maybe in the future. Maybe when the Homestuck podcast is done. Because uh, I guess it's a bit. You, you're just going to keep getting. Okay. There you go. You uh, If you well, lower it, you kill uh, one guy on there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Was that worth it, you think? Shot 100%. Like it, it just times. makes it easier to, uh, to dip, dive, and dodge around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of a uh, fine grain lore, Cameron, here's another thing that's often put forward as a connection between these games. <clears throat> if you look closely, you'll see that the separating Heresy arc and the Grand Coelacanth have the same eye color. Oh. Something to think about. I don't even think I've been playing on like a resolution high enough to notice that. No, he plays on 480, uh, 640, 480. Um on a uh, Windows 95 uh, pack in PC monitor. Um, we've got two, two donations I think I haven't read yet. I'm already at the point where I don't know what I've done. <laughs> I've only been at this four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Weapon Thane who said, my DLC choice is the Homestuck podcast. Talk about it. Oh my gosh. Thank you and great job, <laughs> folks. We don't have anything to talk about it. We haven't done it yet. The minute that we hit, um, I've just been buying Homestuck stuff as michael tells me to and uh the minute that we hit our patreon goal we will begin working to record the podcast what is a, then, what not... is a homestuck stuff is because when you it. said that when you said that i was imagining like a funko pop sure well, well i'm having cameron buy gray face paint um a pair of horns and yeah. a zodiac sign shirt yeah don't think about it i refuse to even reveal any of this information until uh, we hit the appropriate point yeah, he has a bucket, and he doesn't even know why. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Ninja Turtle also says, uh, Smelter Demon, a hardly newer demon. Oh, I see how it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, worked is charitable. <laughs> <laughs> how it happened, maybe, is the appropriate thing. Uh, we're not that far away from 69 on the 9, which is when you donate. It's our, it's our challenge. We're challenging you. As a uh, group, we're challenging all you viewers to donate some multiplier of 69 
uh, on the ninth minute of the hour. So at 4.09, about 20 minutes or so. 4.09 for me. It could be any time for you. 09 for you. Uh, but somewhere in there to donate $6.90 or $6.09 or $13.80 or $27.60. Some amount of money that's near 69 because we're trying to get there. We're trying to get to the big amount of money that, uh, that we're going for here, $15,000. Uh, 10000 is the small goal. 15000 is the big goal. It's the ladle goal. Mm. So uh, go ahead and you know uh, kick some money in here if you're just coming and chilling out and hanging out with us. Kick some money in or wait to that nine minutes. You can be part of the thing. You can make Danny say nice a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. Also, if you have more questions, this is a good opportunity. If you have questions about any range touch stuff and you want to make sure that we will definitely answer them, you can also donate money and uh, put them in the thing. We'll, we'll have to answer them. Oh, it is you true, because that would be gauche. Uh, yeah, well, no, <laughs> we would never have answered this Lutz tobacco question. Yeah. Like anywhere else. Because now the internet knows what they could buy in bulk in order to, like, create a stock crisis. And then and then where would Michael be? <laughs> right. Once all That's the true. Cavendish blends are being bought up. Mm-hmm. So there's all this flame. Right, go look out that eyeball window. Mm-hmm. Please. I think that's cool. I think I think it's cool. You can like look out here. It's like the roof. Yeah. Which is not on fire. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just like that because you're in the bull's head. Yeah. Right now, we can turn around and look at it in just a minute, which is cool. And uh, somewhere out there is where the boss is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not right there. But uh, you just turned off all the flame in this tower, which is cool because there's all these like flames kicking around, and you can turn them off by um, going up there and, and turning that off, which is really neat. I think it is neat. Do, 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 do. People are talking about their relative uh, knowledge of Homestuck in the chat. Mm. I think it's there's a lot of self referentiality. Go, like self-references and meta stuff with Homestuck. That's my understanding of it. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. I don't know anything else. Yeah. and I don't, So that means I only know a little bit. I think I, I need I'm, like a podcast or something to talk about it. <laughs> if only. I like these turtles. Turtles are great. They're good. This is another boss fight where the boss fight isn't the boss. It's just a little hole. It's just a little lava <laughs> hole. <laughs> just a little hole. A little bit. E- yeah, I, you're going to fall right into this. You know that, right? I mean, given my death count and the percentage that count is from just falling. <laughs> yeah, it's like 75% falling in a hole. Oh, what's in this lava? It's our good friend. Terry. Terry. Terry, <laughs> you're back. <laughs> we all have that friend from the gym. <laughs> Ages has it been since you last saw Terry. <laughs> Terry's gains. <laughs> <laughs> it's the drill tweet about mm. uh, the, the massive stinking black angel wings that I wear to mm. the gym. <laughs> So what's your what's your strat here? Do this. <laughs> yeah, you wanna uh, you just hide until he lasers you, right? You know the speedrunner strat for this. They don't hide. Yeah, they do. I watched it. Because if you hide behind the little corner thing, he will laser regularly. I mean, Ooh. it doesn't matter. This is not a hard boss fight, but it is interesting. Mm-hmm. I think I've. Uh, I think when when I streamed this like a million years ago when I played this, uh, I think I complained about. Whoop. Oh, mm. you're gonna get double hit. Oh no, maybe not. I think I complained about how this boss was maybe a little too simple, but uh, I don't feel that way now. I like this boss. I think it has. It's elegant, to be honest. You know, we've talked about this with uh, DS3 being really over-engineered. Mm-hmm. And, like, specifically that uh, Grundir fight, like the very first boss fight. Mm-hmm. And there's an economy of, like, what the animations are and what they're communicating that this game has. And I think it's pretty good. Squirrel at War says, Strat, give him joint pain. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's like a, like nothing too complicated. It's hard if you don't like pay attention, but if you do pay attention, it's, it's not too complicated. I mean, I have very vivid memories of both of us actually taking more than a few tries to get that mm-hmm. boss. Well, I think I'd like to learn how it worked. <gasps> this is a broken sword, a primal bonfire. Yeah, primal bonfire, and this is a this is a DLC portal here. First one we've seen, I think, in the in the playthrough. To, to, to little Jeffy's world. To Terry's world. To Terry's granddad's <laughs> world. <laughs> Ancient Terry. Ancient Terry. <laughs> Terry or anterior. Mm-hmm. In 20 minutes. It's going to be time for 69 on the 9. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a special time. There's a lot of zaniness. We, we make the Pee Wee Herman sound. Not from the big adventure, just from his home. Uh, Tokiozi says, that's Terry's snake room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Jake the Snake, you know, the, the, the wrestler, if his name was Terry. Let's see, Jake the Snake. Let's look. Do you think his real name yeah. was Jake? I hope no. so. It is. His name is Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts. Yeah. No, some- his name is not Jake Roberts. Michael, do you know what his real name is? I feel like you were trying to get in there. I, I was I was uh, <laughs> going to say, if if you get a name like Jake and you're going to become a pro wrestler, then the snake thing is just like, you know, life handing it to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this, Danny. Uh, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, unfortunately, his, his real name is not Jake. But I'm going to give you five guesses as to what his name is. And I think you could maybe get it. No one in the chat, spoil it, please. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts, of course, famous uh, professional wrestler from the 1980s and early 1990s. Mm-hmm. So, uh, five guesses. It's not, it's not Jake. Could you tell and me his last name? Roberts. Oh, so, so his real last oh, name his is... his real actually... last name? Yeah. His real last name is Smith. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> changes I things. I didn't make it up. <laughs> has, okay, I don't know how to change things. Okay. So, it's not... Is it William? No. Okay. Jonathan. Nope. Mm, can you give me a hint? I've got three guesses nope. left. No, no nope. hint. It's not like those two names. Oh, Smith. Mm-hmm. Dennis. Nope. Mm, not like William. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm having. I'm, I'm going to have to just uh, go wild. Justin. N- nope. Oh. One, one final guess that you should go wild. Okay, I'm gonna go wild. Braden. <sighs> that's that's so much closer, but no, that's not it. His first name is Aurelian. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Aurelian Smith Ar- Jr. Ar- Aurelian. I was going to I was going to like as you know a shit guess say Constantine. <laughs> it's closer Which to is... Constantine than it is any of the ones you get. Yes. Oh my lord. <laughs> That's right. People are pointing out in the chat. Junior. <laughs> yeah. His name is Aurelian Smith Jr. That's he went mind with blowing. I know. He could have been like a King Arthur kind of professional. He really could have. <laughs> and used his real name. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah. There you go. Now you know. Well, now I know. His dad was Aurelian Smith. Someone is asking, <laughs> uh, where's our good friend the merchant and why are you wearing his clothes? Mm, awkward. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> that awkward moment when <laughs> <laughs> that awkward moment when people start asking about the guy you murdered <laughs> <laughs> why you're wearing his clothes <laughs> Whoa. Uh. oh yeah uh don't feed the chocobo says he is technically aurelian son of aurelian which is pretty pretty wild <laughs> that you would then go and make your name jake the snake <laughs> that's a fun bit of fun little information people are really enjoying it um, let's see here. Uh, that was my favorite wrestler growing up, and I didn't even know that fact. I'm favorite, yeah, some fan. Dang. The uh, so you know, let's go ahead and do this. You know, Michael, you you know, you said uh, you don't have any uh, time commitments, but um, you know, how much do you think people need to donate to keep you for another half hour, Michael? Oh, uh, what was Maddie going for? Hundred bucks for thirty minutes. 
hundred bucks for thirty minutes. I am nowhere near as valuable as Maddie. Um, <laughs> I, I, that could have gone one of two ways, but it could. You could be like, "Oh, well, I'm, I'm worth double what Maddie's worth." <laughs> uh, but here's the thing, though, is that I don't want to price Maddie out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Uh, so this is the difficult thing. Uh, uh, ninety bucks. Mm. Ninety dollars. Okay. So if you want Michael to stay for another thirty minutes, uh, in the next six minutes between between it, right now in my my mind count it's three fifty four by four o'clock, in the next six minutes we need ninety dollars. Oh 90 my gosh! This doesn't dollars. even coincide with the uh, with it the doesn't. nine past. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not even close. It doesn't have anything to do with sixty nine <laughs> on the nine. So if you like Michael and Michael, I bet you have some more facts written down, don't you? I do. I do. So he's got the facts. He's ready to go, but he's going to need your money to make sure he stays. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. think about that. I feel like I just went to a Tim Robbins there a little bit on accident. Uh, <laughs> Michael's going to need you to know. You can already hear my voice just giving out. It's true. Um, <laughs> Have you, are you drinking water? Oh, I've drank. I've had several Gatorades. I'm ready to go. I'm fit. I'm sweating profusely. <laughs> I've had three cups of coffee, if you can't tell. It's wild out here. Uh, <laughs> so let's do it. You can go to tinyurl.com slash ds2charity in the next five minutes. We need $90 to keep Michael for the next half hour. Michael's going to have some facts. He's going to share information with us. He's going to talk about stuff. He's probably going to, I don't know, talk about some uh, other things from his childhood. Who knows? Questions could get yeah. asked in the chat about like mm-hmm. behind the scenes Mm-hmm. You know, just king things, game personal study shit. Stuff. Oh, personal shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna really What's open up birthday? my soul. Give give us four random numbers from your social security numbers. <laughs> that kind of shit. <laughs> stuff you don't want to do on the internet. Maybe you'll do it. S- stuff I don't want to do <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> this summer. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you wanted to do it on the internet, but it turns out <laughs> there was, in fact, some stuff you didn't. Uh, we got Mary giving $30 more money for Boss Kills Ivory King. We got that. So, so look, we only need $60 more to keep Michael here for another half hour. Full of facts. Michael, give us a, give us a fact. Give him a little taste of what they're buying. Okay. Wrong one. Uh, Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> uh Lore connections. A broken statue of Solaire, an important Dark Souls 1 character, can be found in Dark Souls 2, along with a broken Lord vessel, which can also be found in this game. Uh, this adds to the theme that all of the stuff from Dark Souls 1 got broken because you were really bad at playing it. <laughs> that's true. Dang. Yeah. We all know that. I like that that's a theme. Yeah, it's a theme. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all about, like, everyone talks about Dark Souls, everyone talks about the difficulty, and no one talks about sort of how that's really built into the discourse around these games, and into the games themselves. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing, this is good, I'm going to make Michael do it. If we get this additional $60 in the next three minutes, I will have Michael rank the Marvel movies. Oh, <laughs> Okay, I, I will do this. I will rank the Marvel movies. I will rank every Marvel movie. <laughs> I think that'll be great. Yeah, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm pulling fun. up the list of Marvel movies right now. Good, I'm excited about it, but we need the money. We're going to need, in the next three minutes, we need 60 more dollars. Um, because we are raising money for a good cause. Michael's going to rank these movies for a good cause. Now, how many Marvel movies are there? There's like four, four hundred, four or five. Yeah, there's like eight, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very simple. It's a nice contained story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. a respectable, like the Lord of the Rings. You know, three solid movies, and you can go home. So, yeah. <laughs> probably this. This is a cool area, but boy, howdy. <laughs> Is this area uh... so the last time i played this game i uh you know because it's terrible to get through this mm-hmm. point and i like did all kinds of stuff so yeah you can smash these and they won't spit in your face which is important mm-hmm. and uh but so uh if you die though they all respawn yeah but they don't respawn if you go and use the bonfire mm-hmm. only if you die only if the area reloads 
So what you can do is like go through very patiently and like destroy a few in the in the difficult quarters and get poisoned or whatever. But then you just go back to the bonfire and like res up. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but I like went to the trouble of like getting a bow out and shooting them all <laughs> for no bit. Of it. It's not worth it. It's like not even remotely worth it. We got one more minute. We got one more minute to get you the amount we're trying to get you to get that additional sixty dollars. I have not looked. We probably blew through it, but I have not looked on purpose so I can continue to cajole people to give us sixty dollars that we might already have. Holy shit! These worms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're real. Do you know you can light these little pools on fire and it kills these enemies? That's dope. Yeah, it's really come cool. Come on, come on. Oh, stunned. Okay. I like uh, this woodland child fella because it's just like a dude with a big stick. <laughs> come on. Come on. I'm not looking back. Anymore. I'm not looking back. Okay. <laughs> Oof. You didn't get the second bonfire here. That's interesting. I did not. You got to burn a fragrant branch of your in order to do so. Oof. I like this dude. You like a giant pile of uh, of like incredibly tortured like undead people like chained up. Yep, I like him. <laughs> He's got like a butcher's axe too. Uh, uh, <laughs> Joe Culler says artificial Michael scarcity. It's more likely than you think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're at four o'clock, which means I have to determine now if uh, Michael is going to stay or not. And yes. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Ray. Uh, Keith, <laughs> Keith has donated $25. It says, fun fact, Dark Souls 2, more than any other Souls game, takes a lot of visual and mechanical design from Kingsfield 4, the ancient city. Check out that game's intro cinematic if you want to have a good time. That is interesting, Keith. We will do that. Not right now, but at some point. Chris says, watching the stream with my daughter, Cora, because Dark Souls is a baby game for babies. Oh, wow. <laughs> Danny, get back to Cora and I when you complete all quests in Dragon Quest Builders. Dang. That's a good point. Um, Andy says, everyone's favorite homestuck number for Michael and Ivory King. Oh, uh, Chris donated 2760. Uh, Andy says, everyone's favorite homestuck number for Michael and the Ivory King, 1025. Oh, boy. Is that a homestuck number? Don't tell me. Uh, it, Don't tell me. Yeah, I won't tell you. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let it be a surprise for the podcast. Uh, Tom says, for the Michael facts, $70. So thanks, thanks so much to Tom for making that happen. Thank Anonymous, you, just 10 bucks. No, no commentary. That's great. Uh, thanks for anonymous. Thanks to everyone for those donations. So, Michael, you raised like $150. Uh, Dang. So, uh, wow. all right, let's rank yeah. these Marvel movies. You got yeah. <laughs> See, I've got, I pulled up a list, and very, very hilariously, the list I pulled up has them listed in chronological order with regard to, like, when they take place. Oh, which but is not just a very, release order. Right, which <laughs> is, it's just very funny to, for me to think, like, of, you know, the person who's like, I'm going to watch every Marvel movie, but, like, with their time periods in chronological order. Oh, that that's, yeah, that's really weird, the way that these are, okay. Uh, let, can I just read the list first, and then you can rank after I read the list? Do, do you think Aldia has yeah. strong opinions about Marvel movies? Because we were Oh, yeah, this him. is Aldia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, maybe you should say something about this. Let me, while you do that, let me run to the restroom. Okay. Uh, just a short little Marvel break here. This is Aldia. Uh, he pops up after you have defeated four um, great souls, kind of the, the four people that kind of uh, gatekeep the first half of the game here. And uh, he kind of mean mugs you, to use some Balthazar language. He just kind of <laughs> asks, hey, what are you even up to? What are, what are you doing? Are, are you... Uh, are, are you really going to try to break this cycle? Um, Aldia is privy to uh, some knowledge that we've kind of found out just from the existence of Dark Soul 2. So Dark Soul 1, it doesn't matter whether you link the fire or not. Eventually, an ember is going to spark. Another protagonist will arise and attempt to link the fire. And, and this thing just keeps going and going. And if you link the fire, eventually that fire will fade. So Aldia is here saying... Hey, it, it seems like we're in a pickle here, that it doesn't matter what you do. Um, uh, and he's kind of teasing you for it. And he's trying to cajole you into maybe making a different decision, but we'll get to that. But that's Aldia. How do you, uh, how do you rate Aldia in terms, of, uh, in terms of visual appearance here, Michael? Is this, is this interesting to you? Not as good as the corpse friend, but pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Wait, the corpse friend being... Who who who's uh, who you? Uh, who you just killed? I think. Oh yeah, the uh, the rotten 
Yes, yes. The, I was going to say, I knew he was the, the Nito uh, parallel, but I yes. can't remember what his name was. Yes. Uh, I think a stronger visual design than Nito, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Quite uh, quite something. we got some new dialogue here. I'm blessed with a myriad of souls. Okay, Walt Whitman. <laughs> <laughs> Make your way to the castle. You know, Walt Whitman really was like the first guy to touch grass, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you come to range touch for, by the way. No one else has said that in the gaming sphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one else has has unified the touch grass meme with Walt Whitman in a Dark Souls street. Mm-hmm. And if they have, I will literally eat an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, people are talking about Yelp. <laughs> That's very funny. I forgot. It really has been a uh, Walt Whitman kind of month. Yeah. Oh, is that a thing? Is Walt Whitman like in the news? Yeah, what's, he's always what, yelping. What's he up to? No, we talked about we talked about it. I think in too much future. Oh, that's right. Um, let's see. So we are going to head to the castle now because we've kind of got my. I, it appears that my my sh- our shared Google document is is a little unupdated uh, here. I also did things out of order, so uh, that is not your fault, Cameron. Uh, oh, I'm, I've totally forgotten. <laughs> bother doing this. Uh, let's see here. So what have you done so far? I've done the rotten. I've done the skeleton lords. I did the rotten and uh, the um, old iron king out of. Uh, out of order. Oh, that's that's right. All right, so we got the rotten skeleton lords uh, and covetous demon and mytha. So do 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 do. Smelter demon. You've done all those. Okay. No, best uh, best run in a video game. These these falcon people. Just absolutely yeah. top notch hilarious. They like to they do a little trot kind of. I, I, we'll 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 see it uh, on display up here. Let's see. All right, so here is a. Oh, okay, let me. I'll let you get this little trot going on, and then. Uh, and then we're going to read the list of, uh, what you call it, Marvel fans. <laughs> you love it. You love it. It's so good. funny. Okay. Okay. So here's a list of Marvel films, and then, Michael, I'm going to have you rank them. <clears throat> okay. Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, Marvel's The Avengers, Iron Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Captain America, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Vol 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers, Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home, Black Widow. Now give me that power ranking, Michael. What's the best one? What's the worst one? Give me, and all the ones in between. Now, Michael, have okay. you seen the most <laughs> recent? Have you seen Black Widow? Absolutely not. I'm going to need it ranked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I'm I'm going to rank these all based on vibe. Okay. <laughs> gotcha, right. gotcha. Right. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. <clears throat> I like to start things... At, uh, actually, no, like, let's, let's go from the bottom. Bottom to top. That's the more exciting way to do this, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh... uh I, this is going to be a controversial one. Okay. Um, I know because I know lots of people like this one, but Thor Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Worst one. The worst one. Wow. Absolute worst. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm going to refrain just, from just, any kind of commentary, and we'll we'll like mm-hmm. just get through the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just can't get over uh, that. Uh, next worst, Thor: The Dark World. Slightly better than the worst movie, but mm-hmm. still pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Then Thor. Uh, then the Incredible Hulk, which I don't know. This is the forgotten one. Mm. Are you? Are you? Ed this Norton? is the one with Edward. Yeah, with yeah, Edward it's, it's, Norton. I like it. I think it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I mean, pretty good. It's better than Thor Ragnarok. That piece of crap. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> definitely, definitely, uh, not as good as the next one, which is the Avengers, the classic. Uh, mm-hmm. or you know. Not really a classic because it's really far down on my list. Yeah. Uh, and above that, we have, of course, uh, Spider Man Homecoming, uh, which is, of course, surpassed by its sequel, Spider Man Far From Home. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Uh, and then in kind of ascending order, we have Iron Man 3, 2, and just regular Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had said Iron Man 1, that would have been wrong, because that's not really the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Again, uh, not quite as good as the first one, Guardians of the Galaxy, which comes just before it in my ranking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're blown out of the water, of course, by Doctor Strange. Uh, because I love me some Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm-hmm. If people have ever listened to me on a podcast, you know I can't stop talking about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, really glad to see him in the Marvel Universe. Uh, then Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Followed by... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we, we've hit kind of like the upper half of the list here now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier. I know lots of people really like this one because it's kind of like a different turn for the Marvel films. It's got kind of that conspiracy thriller uh, vibe to it. Uh, but I don't like it as much as the the campy Rocketeer vibes of Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, and none of them can compare to just the epic uh, airport showdown of Captain America Civil War. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paul Rudd's big in that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He gets big and he gets tiny. It's great. It's all you could ask for in terms of Paul Rudd. Two flavors. Yeah. Uh, And then, as I said, I've already admitted I haven't seen this one, but going off of vibes, I think I would probably like Black Widow a little bit more than Captain America Civil War. Mm -hmm. Um, And then superior to that, of course, uh, you know, I I personally am am kind of scared of Black Widows, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as conceptually. Um, both, you know, insect, or I guess arachnid and, like, the human designation, I think, you know, I might be killed by either one. Um, so I, I am much more friendly toward the idea of a Black Panther, so that comes next. Uh, after that, we have Avengers Infinity War, which is pretty good, but, like, doesn't get to the very top because it just goes on too long. I don't like Infinity Wars. Oh, yeah. You want a finite mm-hmm. war. Right, which is exactly why the the next best movie is Avengers Endgame. Yeah, that makes a lot mm-hmm. of sense to me. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that's followed by, you know, the best Avengers film, which is Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, oh, because yeah. there's no time period associated with it uh, other than the Age of Ultron, which could last forever or might have lasted for just a couple of seconds. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is great. Love to hear this. Uh, but, you know, we, I mean, we got big Paul Rudd, we got little Paul Rudd, we also got the Wasp, and then we have Ant-Man, which is just Paul Rudd all the time, so yeah, that's the best one, absolutely. Was that number one? That's yeah. number one. Oh my number gosh. One. Wow, that's a great ranking. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the the middle of that ranking, 69 on the 9 happened, <laughs> because I was entranced <laughs> by what was occurring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's do 69 on the 19th for this hour. Yeah. <laughs> 69 on the 19th. So at the 19th minute after the hour, 419, let's donate 69. That's six and nine. So that could be $6.90. That could be $13.80. That could be $27.60. Any multiplier of 69 would be awesome. To do that, I'm going to promo it in seven minutes again, get us really ready to go, get hype. Some people did it anyway because they're good and responsible, Aww. but now we're going to be ready to do it. Okay, I have a lot of donations to read, though, because they actually really liked that uh, thing that you did. Uh, wow, actually, a, lot, <laughs> a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of stuff here. Hold on. Let's go. Okay, Anonymous for 10 is the last one I did. All right, so Shaboy J uh, donated... Uh, this was, I guess, to keep Michael around. To make my good friend Michael have to experience more Dark Souls 2. Also, this is 69 backwards because it's $96. Whoa. Oh, thank you, Jay. Thank you, boy, Jay. Um, Spending Mind donated $2 for the 17th and 18th deaths. Uh, deaths. Anonymous um, were uh, donated $60. So thanks to Anonymous for doing that. Hendrix Chog wants to know if uh, said Marvel movies are spooky or Star Trek's. Uh, we could probably do like a top three spooky, top three Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hugh Davis uh, donates for Michael Fax, just making sure those are happening. That's $15. Thanks so much to, to Hugh Davis. And Hendrick Stog uh, donated $10. I don't know if I said that. Michael H. said, uh, was it 60 or 16? Doesn't matter. Rank the Marvel movies. And also put this for <laughs> Sunken King. So this is from a little while back. Takes a minute for these to get in here. 
Aerie says... Oh, uh, <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> Uh, Aries says, sorry, not sorry, Michael, 69 69 $69.69. Thanks to Ari. Coffee says, are all, all Marvel movies ranked and Sunken Crown for $2? Thanks so much. Anonymous donated 30 pounds. I don't know how to calculate that necessarily, <laughs> but it's anonymous and it's not toward anything, so it doesn't matter. Thanks so much. <laughs> Minmaxer said, let's go with $22. Thanks so much. Anonymous donated 30 Cavill at rest donated uh, 20 Canadian dollars and said intentionality is the mark of the mental. I don't know what that means. That's uh, Brent Brentano. <laughs> Who? Brent Brentano. He talked about intention at philosophy of the mind. I don't think about that. <laughs> uh, Obviously. Yeah, you get it. Uh, <laughs> Sam Gardner donates $15. No comment. Um, thanks so much. Jacob donates $4.20. I need to know Michael's thoughts on Kenneth Branagh's Thor. Which is interesting. That's also got uh, a... a uh, What's his face in it? The guy who's in those Lars von Trier movies. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Stellar, stellar Skateboard. Um, <laughs> oh, Stellan Skarsgård. Okay. Yeah, Stellan Skarsgård. <laughs> 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 That's why, uh, from How Did This Get Made? They have called him Stellan yeah. Skateboard to the point where the Wikipedia article kept getting edited. And Kasid has donated $90. kasid has been donating throughout the day. Thanks so much to Kasid for Sunken King. So that's a bunch of donations. Thanks so much to everyone. In four minutes, we're going to do 69 on the 19, y'all. So some sort of multiplier of 69, that's in four minutes. Get ready if you didn't do it earlier just a minute ago because we want to make sure that that happens. What do you think about that Kenneth Branagh one? I think it's extremely funny that Kenneth Branagh directed that film. Uh, that's that's what I think. <laughs> I think it's all right. Um, I also think it's all right. Yeah, it's my memory it's, of it. It's sort of, I mean, it's it's interesting insofar as, like, I think the fish out of water thing worked pretty well for Thor. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess maybe, con like, I don't know. If, I don't really have a lot of Marvel opinions. And as some people have maybe figured out, I haven't seen many of these films. But I did see kind of all of the first phase. And so I think probably Thor was the one I ended up being most interested in. Which was surprising to me because Thor is the type of character that I dislike the most. Hmm. Maybe we'll do it on just King Things. Oh, yeah. This just That'll one of the bonus episodes is just on <laughs> Thor. <laughs> <laughs> like when we got a down month, you know, we got a lot. Of, there's yeah. a lot of months between here and the end of that. Oh, um, man. That's the, the podcast that we do. That's just me like letting loose with my superhero opinions is the one that <laughs> uh, makes us just become like stellar objects because it will be so controversial. <laughs> Uh, Mary has donated an additional $69 for Ivory King. Oof. We're in the top part of Drangle Lake Castle here, by the way. Yeah. Which is, which is a pretty cool place to be, if you ask me. Oh, that reminds me. There was another uh, mm -hmm. connection between the previous game and this one uh, that be bears mentioning now yes, that I am, I'm still here. Uh, Dark Souls 2. So this is a qu the question, right? How are the first game and this one connected? Uh, Dark Souls 2 takes place in a realm call, called uh, Dranglik, an anagram of Dr. Angelic, a beloved companion NPC from Dark Souls 1, famous for his rhinestone sunglasses and solid gold Cadillac. Oh, yeah. I never put that together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. the rhinestone glasses. That's the big, big thing of it. Hey, we got two minutes until 69 on the 19. That means donating some multiplier of 69 right at the 19 mark. You gotta get it in there. You gotta get ready to go. That's two minutes from now. Um, isn't Nashandra in here somewhere? She is, she but behind. I'm not going to start talking with her as nameless usurper. Um, <laughs> just stabs me in the back, which is a thing that can happen. Yep. That will do it. Invader banished. Invader banished. Our look at look at how up. I'm messing up this pristine floor. <laughs> I like that it's open to the elements and you can leave <laughs> footprints on it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. This is Queen Nishandra. She is uh, King Vendrick's uh, bride. And she's evil. Mm hmm <laughs> Just the Queen of Dring Lake. We got one minute till 69 on the this, line. This whole it, thing smacks of evil wives. It, it, it really does. Uh, yeah, welcome to Dark Souls. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> oh, geez. Um, 
Uh, in one minute, as soon as it hits 419, you should donate some multiplier of 69, so $6.09, or $13.80, or $27.60, or all the way up to $690,000, somewhere in the middle there. Uh, you should do that at that very moment. It's 419 right now. Let's do it. Whoa. Let's do it. Whoa. 69. Ah. Right now. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Where's Pee Wee Herman? Let me add Pee Wee Herman to the call. One moment. Let me get, yeah. let me get our guest. Hmm. Pee Wee Herman. Um, so Nishandra wants me to find Vindrick. Yep. Um, she's still looking for someone that can bear souls like a true monarch. So kind of the implication mm -hmm. is Vindrick just wasn't cutting it. You're not going to get a buddy? There's nah. a free buddy over there. Nah. There's a free buddy. He's a free buddy. This is, what, this is the double dragon rider. So this is another moment like we were talking about where there's some like weird reuse of enemies. I actually think it's a pretty good fight, though. Uh, it can be broke hard. all that stuff. Damn, how'd you knock off half their health? Oh, he's just he's just weaker. Yeah. Um, if you get the first dragon rider to hit that column, his buddy with the bow and arrow comes down early. Oh, so you can break the column? Yeah, you can break the well, you can't break the column, but, mm, but uh, this yeah. this 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 fella can. You can cause it to be broken. Correct. Very good. Dang, you're really taking their health off. This this pokey stick is pretty pretty brutal. Let's see. Uh oh, that's it. That's the type. It's guess what? It's four twenty. Whoa! Donate it's actually, donate actually four twenty right now. It's, it's actually four twenty. Donate amounts related to four twenty. Ah, oh, ah, thanks, ah, Bulls two. <laughs> <gasps> Wait, hold on. Let's see. Dark, D A R K. <laughs> That's four <laughs> my favorite letter key. Key. That's four letters. Let's see two. Oh man. And oh my god. Uh, zero <laughs> amount of play that we're gonna do once this is over. <laughs> four twenty. Four twenty. Oh. Wow. Donate the amount of letters to four twenty. From from was in on it the whole time. Oh, Miyazaki. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Just like oh, skittering right. right up that ladder. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is the one thing. You get really good at stabbing monsters and skeletons. That makes sense. You also get good at climbing ladders. Voodoo person says snake eater plays. I get my leg. <laughs> I put a on the <laughs> oh, it's the Scorpion King's torso. <laughs> <laughs> He's just the wall king now. Yeah. yeah. Real downgrade. Okay, we got some donations need to read. Uh, James Carey donates $25, saying, wrong way. Uh, a reference, of course, to our Discord <laughs> note of uh, referring to the Lemmy skit of wrong way on a one-way street. <laughs> Seer uh, donates sixteen ninety on the 19, says, putting this toward Crown of the Ivory King because it's the best DLC according to the Let's Vibe ranking system. That's true. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, let's see here. It's 1690. My pen's running out of ink. The material world is conspiring against me on this one. Weapon Thane. Uh, donate $6. One second. I just accidentally inhaled a beard hair. <laughs> yeah, a mm. what? A beard hair. Oh, a beard hair. Mm. Whose beard? It's whipped right into my mouth. It was off of my own, presumably. Oh, okay. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> it's like giving me just king things flashbacks Cameron. is this is this a common occurrence there too well it flies through in michael's mouth one time oh my <laughs> lord and that was yeah. pretty bad yeah really the latest beautiful. episode mm -hmm. hey, is, did that make it in the cut it, it's a little treat that i left uh at the end for the dedicated listener mm -hmm. okay weapon thing said oh uh, quick question: Do Kingdom Hospital and Rose Red count for the Just King things? Important for me to know. Yeah, I believe those screenplays are in the order. Is that right, yeah, Michael? Well, the the thing about uh, those is that the screenplays were never published, and uh -oh. so they're like we would have to like acquire them in some other way. Uh, and I looked into actually seeing how whether or not we would be able to do that, and it seemed kind of difficult. It may change in the future. Um, but absolutely, like, Rose Red and uh, uh, Kingdom Hospital would become 
if not mainline episodes, uh, then maybe at least like special bonus episodes or something, since they are cinematic or televisual or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do them in some way, but uh, we're only doing things that are published as far as uh, the mainline episodes are concerned, in a, in a general sense. Um, although, um, you know, there's always time for them to be published. And, like, it's... Uh, People you know, in chat always... are reacting to something. What? I don't know. Is, is oh, there a big donation or something? Oh, let's look here. Yeah, Anonymous, state, like, step. Anonymous donated 690. Uh, Anonymous also donated 690. Thank you. Denim Glasses said, nice, donated 690. Ninja Turtle donated four twenty at four twenty. Uninvincible donated six ninety. Let me let me let me go through. Oh, this is what people are reacting to. Calamity Nolan donated four twenty sixty nine. Whoa, four hundred twenty dollars and sixty nine cents. Thanks so much to Calamity Nolan for doing that, uh, and thanks so much to everyone in the chat for reacting to it as I was uh, patiently talking about the publications of Stephen King. Are you uh, now? Are you cheering this chained person? Or are you cheering for this uh, thing? I'm uh, cheering for the thing, but I, j- I was. It was. It's just convenient that I'm in front of this very strange person. <laughs> who's chained uh, a couple up. other uh, another big donation for Circadian Wolf. Unfortunately, it seems like Circadian Wolf has to leave. Says I have to depart, but thank you all for all the work you do, and good luck to Danny. Thanks, Circadian Wolf, for being around and being a great community member and, and chilling out with us yeah. for today. And yeah. Mixmaxter said uh, donated four hundred and twenty dollars. Or no. Not sorry, four dollars and twenty cents. Not that was calamity Nolan for four twenty. Um, thanks to everyone for donating. A uh, dollar matter. I mean, obviously, four hundred twenty dollars is a lot of dollars. But a dollar, if you can only afford to donate a dollar, that matters just as much to us as uh, four hundred twenty dollars. Um, in the sense that every bit counts from top to bottom. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, thanks to everyone for donating, and thanks for people who are really uh, digging deep here. That's a significant. Um, you know, I, I don't think I could just come up with $420 immediately without uh, it costing me something in a big way. So um, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, everyone who's donated so far today, uh, it's a big deal. It is. Michael, you were saying something about Stephen King. Oh, I don't even remember what it was, but I ended up uh, explaining something for because people were wondering in the chat. Uh, Storm of the Century was published as a screenplay. Like, and it was published as a book like it was on the on the shelves at Walmart. So we'll be doing that uh and and the film but uh the other screenplays weren't published and so they're harder to grab onto yeah i wonder i think i did i not talk about that on an episode at some point you did you did um i don't remember which episode but it wasn't too long ago and it might have been a bonus episode but you did you talked about uh some either you or someone it was someone it was someone you went to school with uh grabbed storm of the century from the library yeah, it might actually be in the episode that we haven't released yet that we've recorded. Maybe. It might be in that one. Because I don't think you've mm-hmm. edited that one, right? I have not, because you haven't sent me the files. Oh, oh really? Is that true? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, dang, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I thought I sent it to you on the day. I will do that. Not right now. I figured you were just waiting until we recorded the Q&A. No, I just forgot. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I will. I thought I did it on the day. That's how that's podcasting for you, folks. That's a little peek behind the curtain. I love this, game, by the way. This looking glass, looking glass night. Yeah, looking glass night is absolutely great. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's cool. There God, is a uh, so I don't know if you know this, Cameron. I think you do. But what? stage two, it, there is an attack the looking glass night can do, where the looking glass night shoves his mirror down. Mm-hmm. and summons yeah. like a, a helper that helper can be a real person i think i did know that yeah like that someone is. from your facebook friends list yes <laughs> like they send they the, the call goes out <laughs> when you launch dark souls 2 it says uh it does that thing that they used to do about facebook where they were like hey send it to 10 your closest friends yes <laughs> you get two free gems <laughs> Uh, Leader Sabrina donated donated four twenty and said, "We're playing Dark Cloud now." Ooh, Ooh. yeah, it's true. Is there a way to call this back up? Oh, okay. there is. Yeah, I, I, I've not recovered from swallowing that hair. By the way, it sucks. Mm-hmm. It's a long way down. My throat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beard hair all the way down there at the bottom. That is a long way down. Damn, jump it. <laughs> Ooh, that was a great fight. Um, Mirror Knight, though, it really depends on uh, 
like I'd say the first time you're fighting Mirror Knight, it just depends on whether you get to stage two. Uh, yeah. And he, like it, it, it is quite a long animation when when Mirror Knight when Looking Glass Knight is summoning a helper. So oftentimes, if if your DPS is high enough, you can just kind of finish that fight before the helper comes out. Yeah, I uh, I really like the helper. I think it's pretty cool. I like uh, just Looking Glass Knight. Period. And I like the. Uh, it's a little unfortunate how easy it is to beat, like mm-hmm. cheese wise, because you just stick to it's like your its right leg and your left, mm-hmm. you know, uh, thing. It's pretty like quick to do once you figured it out. But I think it's cool, cool fight. Michael, we're losing you. Are we? Well, it's- I mean, technically, people overshot my rate, so. That's true. Well, we could also have them donate more money to keep you around. Ooh, this is about, more this is about money. More reasons. This is, it's ultimately about money. What would you be willing to rank or comment on controversially in the next 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, oh gosh, what are some controversial opinions? I can I keep them all off Twitter for, for moments like this. Oh, no. uh, what are... What are the opinions I have that make all the people point the swords at me? Uh, do, you do you have attract... strong thoughts about prestige TV? Oh, no. yeah. Sure, What's the best yes. Episode? Uh, <laughs> the thing about that is that I would have, like, a sincere opinion on that, probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can't have that. But, yeah, no. Uh, I, will, I will talk about... I will have... I will have commentary, prestige uh, television commentary, some real fiery discourse <laughs> uh, to let loose on y'all. Um, if you can get me to stick around, I actually have to get up and uh, go get some water. So you can figure out my rate while I'm gone. We're going to do it. We're going to do it uh, in the next five minutes. If we can raise, I'm going to do it for him. He's not here, so he can't help me not to. Mm-hmm. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars in five minutes. Right? It's 430 right now on my account. 435. We need another hundred bucks, or Michael's getting the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. I'm getting, I'm, I'm kicking him out. I'm gonna remove him from the call, uh, especially because our next guest is coming at five. Oh wow! Uh, no, no. Uh, great area, a controversial area. This one actually, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, the Shrine of Amana, in a general sense, like all this down here, is difficult. Um, but, uh, I will say, uh, probably one of my favorite areas at this point, just because there's some cool mechanics, right? Like, um, if you make the ladies who are singing mad, like by, by attacking them, then or they quit afraid singing. Even. Or afraid, yeah. Then they quit singing and you get attacked by a bunch more shit. I, I think the real problem with this is not any of the stuff leading up to it, which is a little bit frustrating, but you can kind of game it. It's that big, like, arena you have to run through. Yes, and that's the part that's, like, not good. Mm. But this part here and even the next area, these two, like, uh, island chains, mm-hmm. basically, I think those are both really great. I actually like the enemies you fight here, too. These, like, frog dudes and then these knights or whatever. Yeah, these, and I love the armor. The Archdrake set. Yeah. Um, great design. Everybody, we've got four more minutes. $100 during a four-minute period. We need $100 to keep Michael on until 5 o'clock. And 5 o'clock, we got another guest coming in. So that's going to be really exciting. Wild. Big stuff. TinyURL.com slash GS2Charity. Just posted in the chat by Lilifin. That's it. You can also just scroll down below the video. Both of those are easy things to do. We've learned our lessons. Friendly Truffle says, the reveal of the music being diegetic is easily one of the coolest from soft moments. Yeah, it's totally mm-hmm. true. So like, I don't know if people can hear it. The volume might be too low, but you can hear this like lilting like singy stuff and then lo and behold um it's the these ladies singing Mm -hmm. now are you um did you free the lady who's up in the tower you cannot free uh that person until you have the key and the key is dropped by the next boss oh that's right that's Mm -hmm. right it's that sword correct yeah the the key blade the kingdom hearts sword Mm mm-hmm I'm back. We're talking about Keyblades. We're talking yeah. about Kingdom Hearts. There is a Keyblade, notoriously, in this game. And it's it true. opens uh, someone engaging in their kink. It opens a door they're guarding. I'm only, I'm only saying they're engaging in their kink based on what chat was saying. Chat was saying that I was kink-shaming that person. Oh, okay. I'm going to like, die. <laughs> I was like, so the, the kink is the opposite of gatekeeping? Oh, interesting. <laughs> The um, 
You have two more minutes. One hundred dollars. We need. If you want to keep Michael, if not, I'm going to boot him out of the oh. call unceremoniously. <laughs> I was going to say technically, technically, what they paid for was I think like uh, forty eight minutes of me. So I think I did that math right. No. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't. Cameron is Sorry, very folks. adamant about like no free value. No. Oh, okay. It's about yeah. this whole thing. <laughs> Is about money. Mm -hmm. And it's not even money going to me. You know what I mean? This if, is about raising money for charity. And I will nickel and dime people mm -hmm. up and down mm -hmm. for money for charity. I have no fear about that. If they want to keep hearing Michael, they can, you can pay for it. If you don't want to keep hearing mm -hmm. Michael, don't pay for it. Mm -mm -mm. You, you want you the have, sultry you notes of this voice? Like you got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You got to donate to charity for it. You got to donate to charity. Well, before the time, just so we get this in, is I think it's time that we address the the theory, the fan theory. Mm -hmm. Hold on, we got one more minute. You have one minute left to do it. That we are all the same person and we just use a slightly different voice. That's true. They got one more minute. So if Michael's not real, we can just continue to do his voice. That's actually what they're paying for, <laughs> is that it's really hard for me to keep doing this separate voice. <laughs> They have one more minute. I have not refreshed the page, so I don't know where we are. But one more minute to make sure we get $100. We'll have Michael until 5 o'clock, at which point we'll actually replace him with a different guest. Mm. Ooh. I know. Replace me. <laughs> I mean, that will happen no matter what. But mm -hmm. It's 4.35. You ready for the moment of truth? Oh, wow. Let's find out. Oh, somehow our money's gone away. I don't know. How oh my gone. gosh! Not only know, does <laughs> not only does Michael have to leave, we have to go back in time and make him never show up. Yeah, reload is safe. <laughs> We're not doing this shit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I th we hit it. We we hit the mark. Whoa! I think we got really close. We might not have hit it. I think we did. Um, uh, anonymous gives five dollars. Um, uh, Procyon gives fifteen dollars and says, "Love Mirror Night. Mirror Night's good." James Carey donates $10. No comment. Anonymous donates 5 to keep Lutz around. Mary says, stay until 5, Michael. <laughs> also, Ivory King with $50. Ooh. <laughs> Voodoo says, this is for everyone. Are they called fireflies or lightning bugs? Money to Ivory or whatever. Okay, let's go to the Ivory then. Seer says, so Lutz can rank more things $20. $20. I People think that's love close. That, People that's love close enough, like, hierarchy. Like mm -hmm. Well, uh, that, I mean, this is a big question for you. That's a good and important question. Fireflies or lightning bugs? Hmm. Let's go to the callers. <laughs> uh, which I mean the two of you. <laughs> okay. I'm, ba I'm, ba I'm back to drive time radio. Okay. Always been a firefly for me, uh, I think. Actually, no, no it's, been a, it's no been a lightning one. bug. It's been a lightning bug. It's a lightning bug. bug. We're, it's, we're only from, recently it's, a lightning that, uh, it's only recently that I've started hearing the other way it's because the, yeah, it, the, the upper crust you've been living with well it's because everybody was everybody liked that show in college yeah that's probably like, we got it honestly yeah mm. we gotta we gotta really re evaluate what we've been doing because it was the same for me it was lightning bug all the way growing up it was always lightning bugs and then uh suddenly it just became fireflies around the time that people were like hey we love this uh strange neo-confederate thing mm-hmm mm-hmm uh, just shout out to Sparkletone, who is raiding with a party of six. Oh, thank thanks, you. Sparkletone. Yeah, thanks, Sparkletone, oh. uh, for bringing some people in here to come hang out. Um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, um, is, but, uh, sorry, is Indiana, is it, like, one word everywhere, or is there even regionalism within Indiana? R.E. Firefly Lightning Bug. I am not entirely sure. Uh, for a minute, I thought you meant, like, is it one word as in do people in Indiana pronounce lightning bug as, like, one word versus Lina two? Lightning bug. Lightning bug. Yeah. <laughs> and Lina I'm bug. like, well, Cameron, it depends on who you're talking to. Uh, flick a fly. Um, <laughs> Lord. I've been, uh, looking, I've been looking at these bugger types out here. And... Oh, oh, Jay in chat, uh, Shaboy Jay in chat says, uh, I have a good firefly story, and he's correct. I do. Would everyone like to hear my firefly story? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me see if I have any donations to read. No yeah. new donations. Nations read go ahead okay so when i was maybe i'm thinking four or five years old 
Um, Because this would have been just about when my younger sister was born or just before then. Uh, a thing that I would do because I was a child is I would run around in the in the summer and I would collect uh, lightning bugs in I don't know uh, a jar or very often it was like a, a you know a, a soda cup right like a styrofoam soda cup from the gas station in the center of town. Mm-hmm. Um, I would collect these lightning bugs and I would keep them in there. Um, and because I was a child, of course, I did not really like open this up and let them all go when I went inside when I stopped mm-hmm. playing for the mm-hmm. evening. So often they would die. Mm-hmm. This is very sad. Often they my would mo- die implies that sometimes they didn't. Well, so here's where this gets interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. got it, got it, got it. okay sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't jump ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so my mother, uh, watching me do this, uh, did not like that I was sometimes sentencing these bugs to death. Or, well, from her perspective, always sentencing these bugs to death. And so my mother uh, took it upon herself to she would go around the house uh in the summer after i had gone to bed and she would look for where i had kept these and she would let them go so that's very sweet let's all hear it for my mom Mm -hmm. but eventually my mother got tired of doing this Mm -hmm. uh shout out to michael's mom in the chat everyone give a little shout out there yeah Yeah. (laughs) um so here's where this gets even better my mom no, wait, thinks can, can i make a prediction about this story <laughs> okay your okay, mother yeah. bought a predatory insect that kills all the lightning bugs in your area whoa oh you are you are so close you are closer ah, than you might think <laughs> <laughs> and this is just based on knowing you i'm thinking all right yeah what could the mind what could the twisted mind that produced the the <laughs> you know michael lutz what would that person do okay go ahead so my mother uh, concocts a plan to keep me from doing this ever again. What she does is uh, she takes one of my little lightning bug cups one night and she lets the lightning bugs go. And then she puts in the lightning bug cup a stag beetle that she has found. Whoa. So, <laughs> yeah. So the next morning, like, I go to check on my lightning bugs, and most of the time, they're just, like, uh, most of the time, my mom has let them go. So I have, again, I'm, like, four years old, so I have this idea that somehow the lightning bugs are working out escape plans while I'm, you know, sleeping. Between this um, and the casket factory, it's really the Michael Lutz yes. <laughs> imaginarium over there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she opened, or she, so I open the the thing with the stag beetle in it, and I lose my mind in terror because <laughs> stag beetles. If you if if uh, you're in chat, uh, like look up a stag beetle. Uh, they don't look friendly. Mm. Yeah, they're pretty big um, too. Yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, so I just like lose my mind in terror, and my mom is like, "Yeah, you know how caterpillars turn into butterflies." Oh my goodness. Lightning bugs turn into those things when they're kept in one place for too long. So I, like, had this idea up until I got a better idea of, you know, sort of uh, uh, the materiality of the world and how it works, that uh, lightning bugs would assemble themselves Voltron-like into (laughs) stag beetles. Oh, so not even one, like, evolving like a Pokemon would. It's like a bunch of them Voltroning yes. together. Ooh, that's terrifying. It, yeah, it would have to be like a dozen lightning bugs. It's Voltroning like the rotten, the but instead of the corpses, it's lightning bugs. And instead of the rotten, it's a stag beetle. <laughs> right. That's wild. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> People want my mom on the chat now. <laughs> I, I mean, here's the thing, you know, so uh, for... Sorry, I'm doing a little bit of uh, helping out with our next guest. Uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it? You know, we have learned that a big part of our fan base, in a broad sense, is uh, moms who listen to Just King Things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've got the question sewer coming mm-hmm. up. Uh, what, what's the email address for submitting questions, Michael? It's the question sewer at gmail.com. That's right. You can submit questions about just King things. We're going to do a little uh, special episode, special, like, uh, you know, mid a gap episode, basically a bonus episode. Uh, that's not in the bonus episodes feed. It's on the main feed. We're answering questions, but I think next year we should do a moms only episode mm. where, <laughs> where we will only talk to moms. Like we could do interviews throughout the year and then just edit it all together where we talk to moms about, Stephen King. I think uh, we get your mom yeah. on. 
Yeah, no, I think I think that would be very interesting. <laughs> I thought that you were going a different direction. I thought it was going to be an episode hosted by your moms. No. No. I would never let my mom host an episode of the podcast. <laughs> my mom would never want to do that, like even a million years. And there's there would be nothing I could do to convince her to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would be literally an impossibility. But maybe I could convince Michael's mom. <laughs> my mom, my mom might be up for it if, like, she, on on under the impression that's like, oh, this is fun. Like, I'm I'm doing Michael's little thing. This will mm-hmm. make him happy. Mm-hmm. My mom would never do that. Uh, yeah. If oh, if I were like, uh, and this is I don't mean this is a slight to my mom, but but would you do this? It would make me happy. That would not move the bar. <laughs> 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 that's not that's not our our vibe. Is mm-hmm. mainly. Um, all right, so I got some donations I need to read. Um, uh, Jacob is asking a question. Let me let me do this. All right, we got twenty dollars from anonymous. We got a hundred dollars from anonymous. Thanks so much to anon- anonymous. What's the plural of anonymous? Anonymouses. Oh gosh, I don't. I Who think that's anonymous. It's, it's Gavlan. Cool. Gavlan wants wants a lot. You wheel, you deal, buddy. We got uh, <laughs> Jacob Learson donating five dollars. Um, said keep Lutz, so I think it's a little bit, a little bit out of order here. Uh, and said, would you ever discuss a game on Game Study Study Buddies? And it says Iron Keep Mbasa. I don't know what that means. Maybe that's a credit. Maybe that's what they wanted me to say. I don't know. Hmm. Um, you just I don't know. Opened a door somewhere. Uh. <laughs> Speak for it, didn't it? Uh, uh, Hendrick Strog says, Michael, please rank the top 10 pencils used by the Jorker. <laughs> and donates, donates $5 in order to encourage that. So, uh, <laughs> Dead Pancake says, that's actual Gimli. Mm-hmm. Uh, important, it does, important it does look very figure. Gimli-like. Do you, I, I want to point this out, by the way. Uh, we're at $9,272. Wow. So, wow. So, we're pretty close to that $10,000 target. Remember, we're shooting for 10 k but then we're going to immediately up that. To 15k because at 15k, Danny will fight the final bosses of this game with a ladle. <laughs> That's a cooking implement. <laughs> okay. Now, so we've got uh, someone just because Miyazaki here. asked for. That's exactly what he asked for. Um, Jacob von Guten asks, "What are the DLC totals at the moment?" I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I can I can I, I can calculate it really quick. Uh, if Michael, you can uh, filibuster. The filibuster. Uh, okay, yeah, let me think. Stuff. Well, nowadays it's just like you call somebody, and, and it's like, okay, we don't do anything. Now. Okay, if you can, if you can, uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. The shit. <laughs> okay. Then uh, I will do some calculations. Okay. Okay. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Um, I came to this stream expecting uh, the heart of America. Oh, screw this! I'm just gonna read more Dark Souls two trivia. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh. uh uh, so again, uh, sort of on the weird connections between this game and the previous one. Uh, upon defeat in Dark Souls 1, uh, the Witch of Isolith shouts, Ha 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 ha! See you again in Dark Souls 2. However, since the Witch does not explicitly appear in the game, it may be a reference to something else called Dark Souls 2. Oh yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Ornstein, a famous boss encounter from Dark Souls 1, reappears in this game, but without his counterpart character, Smo, who could not participate due to prior commitments on a season of Dancing with the Stars. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think I remember that one. Yeah. That's just... No, I think that was really he, what made Dark Souls kind of a household name. He wanted more money. We all know that. Mm. <laughs> Bullshit. Stupid. Just a f- you got some strong opinions about Smo there. <laughs> Right. <laughs> these greedy these greedy bosses. <laughs> this is what Marx was talking about actually. <laughs> oh, it's Gavlan again. What's he up to? Oh, Gavlan knows me. These numbers are wild, by the way. I'm just gonna let you know. <laughs> uh like truly bizarre. Okay. I'm almost done. Alright. Mm-hmm. What's why, in this why, chest? why are you uh, following Ga- Gavlin around? I need to get him to where I want him to be. And wow. you have to talk to him two places before he goes where I want him to be. Where do you want him to be? I want him to be at uh, 
Oh gosh, The Doors of Pharos, I believe. Is that the title of the... Do, do, do. Yes, The Doors of Pharos and Grimm's Respite. Which is him. It's named after him. Because it's kind of like... I think he looks a little bit like a Grimm. Like some of these enemies. Oh, is that what those enemies My cat's are name is Grimm. Your cat's name? Is it with a Y? No. Oh, it's like no, mean. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, short for Grimalkin. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic witch name for a cat. Um, Those are haunted, right? Cats? C cats? I, Grimalkin cats? Witches. Witches. Oh, yeah, they're, they're fam <laughs> yeah, they're uh, uh, familiars. All right, I got these numbers for you. <clears throat> By the way, 69 on the 9 coming up in uh, 20 minutes. It's when you donate some multiple of 69, so $6.90 or $13.80 or $27.60 or above or below or whatever. Uh, you do that nine minutes after the hour. For me, that'll be 5.09, and we're going to be doing that um soon i will remind you you can go to tinyurl.com slash gs2 charity in order to donate or you can just look at the panel right below this screen that you're looking at here are currently one of the things you can do when you donate is uh, say peanuts. which dlc you want us to do first and that will determine which order we do them in um danny does not want to do ivory king first um and uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on okay anyway here are the totals currently for which will be first. Iron King is in first place with $3,000.09. Hmm. Um, Sunken King is in second place with $1,473.09. Uh, uh, Ivory King is in third place with, I'm not kidding, $420.00. In 92 cents. That's wild. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So anyway, that's where we're at. Okay. Um, it took me a minute. Sorry sorry to uh, do all that stuff, but now these are calculated. Well, if it says that can't be correct. <laughs> oh, that can't be correct. That's that's right. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I didn't write down, Mary, I know what happened here. Mm, you just it's never have been counting anything Mary does. No. Yeah, that's it. That's my, no, no, no. Gary's <laughs> big donation is not in here. Mm. That's what it is. I knew that looked weird. Hold on. Let me do that. I was really happy for a second there. I know. I, I appreciate it, Mary, keeping everybody honest here. I just, I was so flabbergasted and having to count all those nices that I just uh, forgot to count. <laughs> I like that Mary immediately was like, no, I've donated more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Mary with her own spreadsheet. Uh, let's see here. Gosh, this is actually... Uh, on one hand, I'm like, oh, this is pretty far back. But on the other hand, damn, this is pretty far back. Thanks to everyone who has donated so far today. This is great. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's actually true. Mary has donated. <laughs> actually, more than that, just in a whack. Yeah, I just forgot to do this one donation. And actually, technically, the other two. So it's only another six... 690. I think I forgot to do all three of those. All right, hold on. We got to do a ring count. <laughs> oh, no. Be gore here. In the Hanging chads. Uh, let's see. <laughs> only 90s kids remember. <laughs> only 90s kids remember the absolute shearing disappointment of a Supreme Court decision that ruined our lives. Mm hmm. That's right. I was in biology class. All right, here's a recount. Weirdly enough, Still doesn't change the order of things. Okay, for co. <laughs> wow. First, uh, first place, Iron King, three thousand and nine dollars. Uh, second place, Sunken King, one hundred forty-three dollars and nine cents. And uh, the that, that can't be right. Hold on. How have I messed this up? <laughs> I'm, how have I messed up adding two numbers? Oh, no. That, okay. I transposed a number. In third place, Ivory King, $897.02. There we go. Literally doubled. Mm. Voodoo Person says, the important takeaway here is I need to spend money to be meaner to Danny. Dang. That's true. Mm. Facts.
Um, uh oh, I messed it up here. All right, so I think that's right. I think all the numbers are in the right order now. These people die from poison. Did y'all know that? Well, if it says mm. in the chat, what's the point of a charity stream if you're not bullying Danny? Yeah, so this is like the big boss arena that really sucks. And you can also fall off like yeah. in weird places here. It's not, it looks like it would be one big circle, but it's actually not. It's like a weird little like Florida looking ass shape. <laughs> <in the middle. laughs> <laughs> like, that's the reference it's, for just a weird shape now is, uh, you know, Florida. Yeah, it's Florida. Yeah. Of course. Trogdor Fifth says the Electoral Birkenworth College. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so Danny was doing the safest possible version of that, but I think it's actually the best way to do that. It's hard otherwise. Yep. And we've got Peculiar Kindler. Kindler. What's, okay. uh, it is really interesting to me, we'll talk about this a bit the next boss, but uh, it's interesting to me how many bosses in this game are, are have as kind of a cornerstone that they're invincible. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. Person. Well, what's your first example? Um, uh, uh, Duke Steer Freya. Mm, yeah, like you cover know. her face and she can't be hit anywhere other than the face. And you you got to kind of time it and think about how you're gonna fight her that way. Mm. Or oh, can you just poke them off? There we go. Yeah. Woo. There we go. I there was a time when I tried to do this fight in the hut up ahead, and this is now my preferred strategy. Um, this feels a lot better. <laughs> Hut strat. Hut strat, -strat garbage. <laughs> no longer friends with hut strat. <laughs> Tunnel strat, now my best friend. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. We got we got a couple more. Uh, your pal, uh, your good old pal Rami donates $25 and says, this was delicious in Dark Souls. If this was delicious in Dark Souls and you were going into these levels to eat the enemies, which Dark Souls energy would be most delicious? I think probably means enemy there. Mm -hmm. What's the most delicious <laughs> Dark Souls enemy? Mm. James Carey uh, donates voting for, voting for Ashes of Ariandel, $6.91. I don't know why I couldn't do that. Uh, we're just a few minutes away. We're actually 15 minutes or short, less than 15 minutes away from 69 on the 9 when we donate some version of 69 in the ninth minute after the hour. Get ready to do that. Save up all your ducats for that. We got oh, a frog. That's a friend. This feels like a real Michael Lutz ass enemy here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me put on my hoodie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's also my preferred mode of attack: is to just stand <laughs> up and then fall over. <laughs> really efficient. Uh huh. Minimal use of uh, caloric capability but yeah like this guy like the whole thing about demon of song here right is you like like pulls pulls the hat mm -hmm. off puts the hat on can't do nothing it's like you know and not but no there are no dark souls one or dark souls three bosses that are like that right um the first encounter with seath actually you can't well it's kind, forced yeah, death that's, that's yeah. kind of a gimmicky thing mm -hmm. that's not really a. that's like not part of a real fight because mm. you, know, you can't really fight him there but it's like one of the mechanics being you just can't do anything here and you need to like figure it out. Mm hmm. Oh no. Let's go squash you. Demon of Song! God. That could be a really hard fight. <laughs> it can be. If you get on the wrongs, like you can just get kind of perpetually stun locked and always be behind. Um, it can be rough. Uh, Jordo says, do not let this imposter hurt your concept of frogs. It's true. That's not a real frog. That's a demon. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. People are asking in the chat. You and Nova's asking in the chat. Can we get some last minute Dark Souls facts? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me double check. I think I actually might have used them all up from my list. <laughs> uh, what's the most overrated oh. uh, prestige television? Oh, yeah. Show. You can give us that. Um, uh, Night Court, definitely. Oh gosh! Yeah. Is oh, okay. Uh... Actually, here's here's a Dark Souls two fact. Uh, Bloodborne two releasing February second, twenty twenty two. 
a year oh. away? Yeah, you heard it here first. Whoa! I actually emailed uh, Miyazaki at the beginning <laughs> when I first came on, and I was like, listen, there are some people in, some, in a chat. They've really got me on the wire here. Uh, and uh, he was kind enough to let me know. Yeah. People are pointing out the numerology of 2222. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah. No, he, uh, me, he, I'm going to quote from his email here. I think people re will really like this. <laughs> you know what's really funny? That is, that's not that different from like a lot of quotes you read from, from uh, game developers, especially yeah. like, big name game developers. We're like, I think this is going to be something really special. It'll for be the a fans. little treat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they'll really mm -hmm. like it. I think they'll pay for it. <laughs> like, wow. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I think that's it. I think that's our time with uh, Michael Lutz. Thanks, thanks so much for Michael. Uh, yeah, wait, thanks, thanks so much, so much for much coming, to Michael. Yeah, well, I mean, thanks for having me on. Thank you, everyone who who donated to keep me on and who is donating uh, also maybe to get me off of this <laughs> stream. I don't know what your motivations are. I'm really hoping no one's donating to get you off, Michael. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, sorry. Had to, had to, had to, wha bam. Yeah. <laughs> right Got to go into the, the soundboard. Uh, yeah, please do. Uh, I might ping you later, depending on how like uh, loopy we're getting <laughs> toward the uh -huh. end here. Uh, Michael Lutz might return mm -hmm. if you've got mm -hmm. nothing else going on today. <laughs> mm. uh, I, I just took right. a big swig of water because I realized I'm slowly drying out like a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do. Like some sort of frog. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, Michael, we will talk to you later. Yeah, talk to you later. Ciao. Bye. Bye. All right, this is a cliff bar. Get that clip bar, do it, and I will bring in our next guest. Okay. Do you want do you want to hear the rapper or not? Yeah, sure. Let's hear okay. the whole thing. Hmm. Hmm. No, I specifically hypothermic. I specifically injected these with a uh, with some fluids, so it's it's with, an all in one for me. With the uh, the juice. Mm hmm. With the uh, protein juice. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, it's got some peanut butter in there. Let's see here. You have tabbed out of the screen somehow. Mm, I was okay. just double checking that the uh, that the screen share was still going. I think it is. Yeah, it's still good. And I'm going to touch got... this bonfire. I think we might have a little visitor here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. Ah! It should hurt you. <laughs> it should be able to kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he has the <laughs> also. <laughs> we are eight minutes away from 69 on the nine. That's when you donate some multiplier 69 at the nine minute mark after the hour. That's so soon. It's eight minutes away. Get ready. We're going to yell when it's there, but we're going to whisper now. Ramination says, oh, so one of these does do weird things with the bonfires. That's cool to know. <laughs> yeah. I forget which one it was. I think it was Dark Souls 3 that initially was going to have you be able to place your own bonfires. I think people have discovered that in the code. Mm. Um, it was originally going to have, like, you, you have the ability to place a bonfire anywhere. I think that might have been an, an old idea for Dark Souls 1, even. Like, not, oh, not necessarily didn't get far, but, like, an idea. Mm -hmm. um, what a different world we could have lived in. I know. Once the Lord of Light banished the dark and all that stemmed from humanity, and men assumed a fleeting form, these are the roots of our world. Men are props on the stage of life, and no matter how tender, how exquisite, a lie will remain a lie. Uh oh, I think I think we've got, I think we got our guest. Can, can you can you hear us? Yes. Hello. Do hey. I sound okay? Yeah, you sound great. Okay, cool. I was worried about that. No, I think you sound good. Uh, people, let us know if uh, if Chris Franklin. Whoa, Chris Franklin. Hi. Hello. Hi. Of Aaron Signal. Uh, you're you're a little loud, Danny. Can you? Uh, I can I can see if I can fix that. No, you don't have to do it. Danny can just take you down and I can uh, in the mix. Here. I have complete control over the mix. 
slightly too loud, is what people say. That's A-OK. -okay. We, uh, we have had to uh, massage this for everyone who's come in. This is not a thing. All right, that's down about 15%. All right, hopefully I sound a little better. Yeah, there there people we say that's not good. Let's, let's find out. Is that good, everybody? If not, let us know. Yeah, let us know. We'll, 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 uh, we'll walk and talk here. <laughs> yeah, people are saying it's good. Uh, thanks so much, Chris, for doing this. Oh, no problem. Um, you like uh, Dark Souls over there? I, I have played Dark Souls 3 to completion, and I have played a smattering of the other games. Mm. But I've never beat any of them but Dark Souls 3. Well, um, So your video yeah. essay is still current. Yes. Um, that, I, that I have watched in preparation of you being a guest. I will now proceed to quiz you on it. I'm <laughs> 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 just kidding. That's, uh, that's... And to criticize your... Um... <laughs> Uh, your opinions. <laughs> uh, uh, so something that I didn't really think about is that uh, we bring guests in at the beginning of the hour, and the beginning of the hour also has an elaborate, um, you know, thing going on. Have you been watching the stream by any chance? Uh, unfortunately, I've been out all day. I haven't. That's Sorry okay. about I'm that. I'm just going to do a lot of yelling in just a minute. Yeah. Um, I'm just letting you know. Uh, in five minutes, everybody, it's going to be 69 on the nine. That means donating some amount that, that is divisible or in relationship <laughs> to 69 at the nine minute mark after the hour. That's four minutes away at this point. That can be $6.90. That could be $13.80. That could be $27.60. All the way up to an infinite amount of money that is divisible by $6.90. Let's do that. Let's make it happen. We've gone up a huge amount every single time. Here are some of the reasons you might want to do that. Number one, we are very close to our actual goal of $10,000. We are only uh, $700 away from that, so we're moving that way. But here's the thing. At $15,000, Danny is going to commit to beating the final bosses of this game with a ladle. And it's fun to do and hard. And we're going to make the end of this so difficult for him. If we get to $15,000, we got to try to get there. So let's do that in four minutes. 69 on the nine. Let's donate big chunks of money. It's all for good cause. It all goes to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender nonconforming. It's going to be great. It's going to be excellent. They do great services, and this is all for charity. Like I said earlier, I'll do anything for money for charity. And I will definitely make Danny do anything for money for charity also. You didn't mention the other aspect of the ladle. When you... <laughs> oh, what's the other aspect of the ladle? At 20000 Gosh, okay, fine. At $20,000, if we get there, I will spend my own money to commission a blacksmith to make a ladle that is also a weapon, and I'll make Danny hang it up in his house. Mm -hmm. And we know a blacksmith. This is very doable. Mm -hmm. This is, like, not even a hard thing to source. So I will also do that. We have three minutes until 69 on the 9. You've really come in at a wild time. Yeah, you've come in at a wild time. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, cool. So this is, uh, so have you never, uh, have you like watched any of Dark Souls 2? You got any big flavors? I, I played enough Dark Souls to, to recognize, I think, why people don't like Dark Souls, or some people don't like Dark Souls 2 relative to other Dark Souls games. Yeah, you um, it, it feels a lot meaner. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, ooh, that's interesting. Do you think it's, it is, I think, a little bit more of a clunky it's game. clunkier. It's more mean spirited. I agree with that a hundred percent. Like, give, give the, us uh, some meanness. Give us uh, some markers of meanness. Here. Doors uh, that lead to nowhere. I would be on my list. <laughs> I I kind of got angry at the game. I, I so I, I started. I played Dark Souls two for the first time for, fairly recently. Um, I think earlier this year. And uh, one of the things I remember doing was there's there's that area with all the trees in the very, very beginning of the game where you're sort of going through, and it's basically a, an extended tutorial that walks you through, like, here's how you parry, here's how you target a, a, a bad guy. Um, somebody had placed a petrified person that I think in a way that would require two players to actively try to screw over a newbie, because there's like a, a room in there that has, um, uh, I think one of the first things that eventually upgrade your health that you can sell for health shards or whatever. Hmm. And somebody had petrified someone else at that gateway. And there's no way that earlier, that early in the game to unpetrify people. And so I was just locked out of being able to go into that room until much, much later in the game. I'm going to have like, to break right it away. to you. The game is crueler than even you imagine. Because that's the developers that put that there. They put that... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I like 
the I like the blue sky's imagination that this was odd. Oh, so nearly I just got evil briefed. Person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was nope. that was my. <laughs> Well, because I went, I went Googling for it because I was like, I should be able to get this because all the walkthrough tutorials are like, oh, you just fall in there and you get the thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I could not figure out how to do it. But So um, another issue, this game is really hard to like go online and look for answers because there are all of these uh, differences between Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. That may have been it. Yeah. And so half the time, the website you're looking at doesn't specify... Which is which? Really great stuff. I've got to start yelling about 69 on the 9. This ah. is the time to do it. This is the very moment that you should be donating. You can go to tinyurl.com slash ds2charity or merely scroll one inch below the screen that you're looking at to see the little tab <laughs> and click it. It says donate now. You can donate some multiplier of 69, $6.90, $13.80, $27.60, <laughs> some amount of money. That is related to 69, because that's fun. We do that the ninth minute of every single hour. Let's do it to raise money for the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. I'm the one who screams about money. <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, what, uh, uh, isn't, that a, isn't there some sort of iconic television phrase around that? This is how I win. I'm the one who knocks. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the one who screams about money. Oh, this is the best part of this game. Here's, here, talk about cruelty, Chris. Here we go. Here's a little treat for you. You came in at the exact right time. <laughs> what do you think those are? Those are I've, I've seen them. They've got yeah. people behind them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think they're about? <laughs> uh, they're going to hit you? I, that's... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, Cameron is just... Uh, so I'm going to show you what Cameron has done before. Mm -hmm. Cameron has, oh, I'm going to run away. I'm going to run away from them. And he goes over here. And he kites exactly one out, and then he goes down the tunnel with the other in the tunnel and yep. is crushed. That is a thing yep. that Cameron has done. But that's not yep. the game being cruel. That's, that's No, it is. When the game makes me do things that are bad for me, <laughs> uh -huh. that's, that's cruelty. That's cruelty. IMO. It's, it's also a game where you lose health and as you die, and there's no easy way to grind that back. Like, I, I guess I've been playing Dark Souls 1 on the Switch a bunch, and that game is much more grind-friendly, where if you're running into problems, you can just kill mobs until you're reasonably-ish powerful enough to power through it. Dark Souls stop, Dark Souls 2 stop, stop spawning them back in, and also mm -hmm. as you die, depletes your health, unless you uh, sacrifice a humanity. And like that always felt like a much meaner-spirited... Uh, punishment for not being able to just power your way through a thing. It 100% is, and there's a finite amount of human effigies, other than like areas where they are randomly dropped, which are pretty rare. They're hard to get to. Uh, so yeah, agreed. I think that is another indicator. I'm going to start reading some of these great 69 on the 9 donations. We got some good ones. Uh, we got Seer who, said, who donates $6.90 and says, this donation goes to Gavlan's Choice. Ooh. Gavlan prefers Sunken King due to poison and arrows. <laughs> it's true. So uh, that's going to be uh, another uh, here. Let me. I've already did some math for my conspiracy sheet I've got going on here. All right. 6090. I got Rom. Uh, it's that Romy again says, 60 nice. More like now i got to study. Keep up the good work. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see you again uh, later, Rom. That's six. $6.90. Justin Owlette donates $25. Thanks so much. B says, I missed a couple, so here's two 69s of affection for hollows. $13.80. And uh, here's another one. Here's a big one. Casey Explosion donates. It says, Sloth Mom sends love. $696.90. Oh, wow. Whoa, that's amazing. Chris, did you say, oh, no? I said, oh, wow. No, I didn't say, oh, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's huge. That's a huge amount of money. Thanks so much to uh, Case Explosion for doing that. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I mean, it's not going to us, uh, but uh, <laughs> we really appreciate uh, you donating the thing. The whole point of us doing this and sitting here all day long uh, streaming this game is, and uh, also Danny's taking this fight hardcore as hell. You're like really doing it. It's a hard fight to do. Um, the whole point of us doing this here is uh, to raise this money. We want to raise as much money as we can. And each year we try to raise a little bit more money than we did the year before. And uh, I think we're kind of there. We're pretty close to what we raised last year, I think, at this point. So we want to keep going. So we are actually, because of Casey Explosion's uh, donation, we are actually above the $10,000 mark. 
Whoa, we yeah. met the goal. We are actually, so actually there are a couple more that have happened. Anonymous donated $6.90, $6.90, and Furbaz donated $6.90 of Canadian dollars. Whoa. Uh, so that puts us up to $10,000.66, $10,066, which is like pretty shocking and wild and very cool. And uh, thanks to everyone who's donated so much uh, today. Our next big goal is making sure that oh. Danny has to, oh. Oh, no. Talk about Very that. close. I know. Well, the next big goal is making sure that Danny has to fight the final bosses of this game with a ladle. And uh, based on this performance, uh, it's going to be a real rough and tumble time. So we want to get there. Now, let's take just a moment here to... Uh, can you go into your little Streamlabs settings real quick and turn the uh, banner at the bottom to 15? Oh, okay. Um, so ahead. that would be via... So you can do that, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, because that's via the Just Giving website. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know how to do it. Then I will go and do that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, this is this is great. This is awesome. We're like super excited. Let's see here. All right. So if I just change the target, that'll. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, it'll take a, a little moment to to update, but it will. All right. Let's uh, do this. Let's see what happens. Sorry, I was, I've been yelling this entire time, Chris. That's fine. <laughs> no. It's a, big, it's a big part of the uh, of the, the fundraising uh, um, experience. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I wanted to ask Chris about um, about something you mentioned in kind of the uh, your essay on Dark Souls 3. Uh, it was kind mm -hmm. of an interesting discussion. I think you have a little bit more nuance in discussing it than a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the points, the discourse I see on the Internet is that there's a lot of discourse about how difficult this game is. And I think that you address that in, in your in your video essay, right? You're really going to make him step right into this. <laughs> I, I have not watched that video in two or three years, so oh I don't know gosh. exactly what points I make. So <laughs> He's watched it. Danny's watched it 15 times. It's true. I have prepped it. Mm. <laughs> well, um, uh, let's ask a, a different question yeah. that's perhaps not as loaded. Okay. Um, uh, with uh, contemporary discursive problems. Oh, that's true. That's a thing. <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, now we just did a little bit of a ranking with a uh, good, good friend uh, and uh, Range Touch contributor Michael Lutz about the uh, his ranking of Marvel movies. Now, th this, of course, n not controversial in any way. Uh, what's the top five Marvel films? Oh. Uh, it, I top lists are always difficult for me because I'm one of those people that needs more context than just top. Because like, no. there might be my personal <laughs> top five favorite, That's and then there I might want. be like the top five best, and they might not be the same five movies. I just want your personal. Uh, this is this is this is pure uh, uh, personality driven content. So it's just your personal. You know, and you know what? You don't have to defend it because here's a little bit of a secret. Some people in the chat figured it out. Some people didn't. Michael just read a list. <laughs> of every Marvel film in reverse alphabetical order. <laughs> and that was his ranking. So um, you can do what you want. I mean, if, I guess for my personal favorite Marvel films, the ones mm -hmm. I go back to a lot, um, mm -hmm. I like Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 a lot. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, I, I'm not doing this in any particular order. So this is just by the seat of my pants. Sure. Uh, the, the Guardians movies are pretty great. Um, I like the first Avengers movie just because it's a really easy to watch popcorn team come it's it's basically a heist movie with an action sequence fireworks thing at the end mm -hmm. um, you know you get the team together and then they all go do the thing um, so that's a pretty easy watch uh, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to think of the, the other they're all so somewhere between a C plus and a B minus it's very <laughs> difficult for me to pick <laughs> like like I like them I watch them but like it's it's very difficult for me to pick like a favorite between say like an, an Iron Man or a Captain's America or a Doctor Strange. Like they're all kind of the same movie. Well, let's do a little bit of of analogous analysis here. Okay, so between a C plus and a B minus, uh, if you had to rank a warm cup of milk <laughs> on a A to D A to F scale, A plus to F scale, where would it be? I don't like warm milk, so I'm gonna go with like a a. a See, like okay. it's like gross, but okay. So you don't like so it, you the, don't hate it, though. So every Marvel film is is better 
Then a warm cup of milk. Yes. What about Mountain Dew? Where's that? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm one of those terrible people that really enjoys soda. I'm mm-hmm. sipping on a Coke Zero right now, so yeah, I, I, I Mountain Dew's like, you know, a B B minus. Whew. So you heard it here, folks. Uh, you know, Eric Signal at Campster, uh, <laughs> Chris Franklin. Most Marvel movies are not as good as a Mountain Dew, but they're all better than a warm cup of milk. That's true. I, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. So uh, Danny was just actually showing off some serious and real content, and I just like blitz <laughs> right through it by talking about the dumbest shit possible. Uh, Danny, you want to talk about what we were just looking at there two seconds ago? Yeah, just a few moments ago, uh, we saw we found Vendrick, and it turns out Vendrick is hollow and just kind of wandering around in a loincloth. Um, we did find his ring on kind of a pile of clothes just in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you know, uh, the implication being, there came a point when he was hollow, when he just kind of ripped his clothes off, and he's been wandering around ever since. But so we found uh, Vendrick's ring, and with that ring, we're now uh, able to go to some new places. Specifically, we're able to go to Aldia's keep um, and find out what Aldia was up to. You know, we've met Aldia a couple times, but let's uh, let's go root through his uh, sock drawer, see what's going on. See if he's got any, see if he's got a safe. Is it behind a picture? You know, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. He does have like a research dungeon. It's pretty cool. I mean, cool or cruel, however uh, you want to put that. Uh, I think it's cool. Oh. I think it's a cruel thing to do, but I think it's cool to look at. Oh, okay. Because there's like little gremlins in it, right? Isn't that true? Yes, there are. He, perhaps Aldio was even the inventor of gremlins. Oh. Uh. Recently, Danny and I were physically co-located and in a um, sleep deprivation <laughs> uh, induced uh, moment, um, Danny and I and another good friend ended up just like jamming out to the Gremlins theme song <laughs> for a good eight minutes. Yeah. What, was it during the credits or was did somebody find it on Spotify and loop? Someone it? found it on the internet immediately and just played it on loop and we jammed out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Chris, where are you on Gremlins? <laughs> Love Gremlins. Uh, Gremlins is fantastic. I think a lot of Joe Dante stuff is underappreciated until you get to like the uh, Looney Tunes Strike Back stuff. Um, I, I like I like Gremlins and Gremlins too, both a lot. Now, when you say that, do you think that uh, <laughs> one way of interpreting what you just said <laughs> is that uh, they they're underappreciated uh, up until you get to the Looney Tunes Strike Back? That could imply that they are overappreciated now, or they're just appropriately appreciated. Do you think that Looney Tunes Strike Back is maybe casting an unfair shadow over the rest of Joe Dante's work? <laughs> I mean, expectations are too high after the Looney Tunes. No, but like, like, okay, so so Gremlins One is fun. Gremlins Two is just pure insanity. It, it kind of follows like a reanimator, reanimate, brighter reanimator thing, where like the first mm-hmm. one's kind of a horror comedy, and then the second one goes just full on comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but like he, Joe Dante's done other stuff like uh, Inner Space and The Howling was a pretty popular horror movie. Then he does like Small Soldiers, which is not a fantastic. It's a very of its era late '90s movie, and it's not very good. But it's not until you get the uh, the Looney Tunes Strike Back where like you really get a proper, pretty terrible film. But I did not know that Small Soldiers was a Joe Dante movie. Yep. Um, that's probably one of my, I like a very very strong memory of my childhood, of really wanting to see a movie mm-hmm. and then seeing it and realizing it wasn't good. Mm. No, like that's that's kind of like when like I discovered that I had like qualitative feelings about movies. Was probably Small Soldiers. The first disappointment you were ever met at a theater. It sounds like it. I don't think I was at a theater. I think we might have. Per- I think I was so excited about it. I might have gotten it maybe for a birthday or oh, for Christmas. Goodness. Yeah, that's even worse. That's hey, uh, this character as I don't remember their name as Lachiel Astachiel. Yeah, uh, is Lucatiel of Mira's brother, right? Yeah, and she warns you about Astachiel. Uh, yeah. Aslatiel. I can't. <laughs> the name's gone. There it is. Aslatiel. There we go. Aslatiel. Uh, I really like, will you go back like two steps and mm-hmm. look at that carriage? I know that we're on a timer in some Broadway, but I don't <laughs> think we're going to, I like that. This it's is like very Bloodborne around. to me. It's very, it's reused in Bloodborne. It <laughs> shows up again in Bloodborne. I love it. I think it's great. Oh, I, I got some, uh, I got to read some donations here. 
Uh, Bearer of the Curse donated six dollars and ninety cents. Thanks so much to Bearer of the Curse. Spinning Mind donated for deaths nineteen and twenty. One dollar each, two dollars. Thanks. And Alex Nov- Novosi uh, donated twenty five dollars. Thanks nice. so much to all those people. There actually might be more. I haven't refreshed this in just a second. And no, there's not. So if you uh, want to donate to the stream, and you definitely should, you should go to tinyurl.com slash uh, super skateboard. Uh, <laughs> tinyurl.com slash DS2 charity. In order to do that, you can also just click on the little thing down below the thing that you're looking at here, and you can donate. And I'll yell all about that at the half hour mark. Um. Aaron right, Signal, man. big thing, Chris. People love mm-hmm. it. You recently had your uh, ten year anniversary. I did. You had a real. Um, uh, uh, I was the word incisive. I mean, it, it might have been incisive, but that's not the word I'm thinking of. Incisor, um, like the type of inci- It was like teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you had a real teeth like no, like uh, it was like full of insight about what the project you've been doing is. In a general sense. Now, what if you had become uh, just a Dark Souls uh, lore YouTuber? You think about that? I, I don't think I ever could. I, I don't think... The, the way I engage with media, I think, would preclude me from being able to do that. Oh, because you don't like looking at the dictionary? You don't no, like no. Dictionary dic- <laughs> definitions of words? Well, I don't... I. I end up watching, I end up hate watching a lot of those like Marvel. I've been watching a lot of the Marvel explained Loki stuff because like, and no spoilers. I'm not going to talk about it, but just like, oh, please do. I don't care. Well, I I don't want to spoil it. (laughs) Just make everyone just be like, oh, this dude, what a joke. Spoiled (laughs) all of Loki. Well, Uh, it's more just like their ability to, to, to overanalyze a text and and weave an entire narrative out of one detail, but mm -hmm. not be able to look at how it looked, how it works within the greater context of the text itself. And that mm-hmm. drives me absolutely crazy. Uh, what's an example? Um, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. I, I, there was one for Black Widow that, um, no spoilers for the plot of Black Widow, but Black Widow uses um, Bye Bye Miss American Pie or whatever that is, the, the Buddy Holly plane crash song. Um, <laughs> and it uses that song. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> I don't know the name died. of the song. The name of the music died. Yes, that song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Buddy Paul, it's the Buddy Holly plane crash song. That's uh, sure. That's in the film. <laughs> it is used in the film, um, mm-hmm. but it's only used in the film for like the chorus because they're trying to evoke a very specific sense of Americana, um, mm-hmm. intentionally so, mm-hmm. and almost to a cliched amount. And uh, you know that's fine. That's recognizing that. But this YouTube video went line by line through the song, including lines not used in the film, to argue why that song is a metaphor for what was happening in the plot that had not yet even unfolded. I want to see one of those, but for uh, when politicians play "Born in the USA" at their rallies, mm. oh, they'd be like, "What? What? Well, what? What it really meant was that holy shit, it's it's that fun. creature! What, wait, you didn't turn the lights on here? Can no. you turn the lights on? Why not? Uh, it's not." A thing I have to do? You don't care about. This is Aldius Keep, uh, which is Aldius kind of a scientist. He, he's researching, so, scholar of the first sin, right? The, the thing that the subtitle of this like kind of weird expanded edition of Dark Souls 2, Aldia is the scholar of the first sin. Mm-hmm. He's the one who's researching. He's the one who keeps showing up looking like a little, uh, uh, I don't know, clay creature. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mute, a mutant mud man, as it were. And uh, But yeah, he's got like a menagerie here doing some wild shit and uh that's what he was up to and danny really just blitzed through it and didn't look at any of the cool stuff it's true um in this like back half of the game like the the non-dlc part there's a lot of these areas that you just don't have to spend a lot of time in and Mm -hmm. uh i'm not going to (laughs) because how are we we're not at 15 grand yet right we're not at 15 so there's still a chance that i could i could roll these credits yeah, so really, this is now chat chat v Danny. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be honest with you because it's uh, we are currently at ten thousand one hundred. We have that fifteen thousand dollar target goal here, and um, it, this is basically you trying to beat the game more quickly than people can get us to fifteen thousand dollars to make you again uh, play the end of the game with just a ladle. Yeah, which is not a weapon, fun or it's not a weapon, <laughs> and it's hard to do. It's actually difficult. Mm-hmm. You were explaining to me the other day when we were talking about it that one of the main one of the characters you have to fight their cape is so big it prevents you from hitting them with the ladle. Yes, 
the ladle's hitbox is so small that that it's difficult to hit characters. So you have to like get up to some shenanigans. You got to change your whole style. Yeah. This uh, so dragon, uh, <laughs> the RNG is not being kind <laughs> to me on this fight. Yeah, so this dragon like zips up into the air and like shoots fire, and you can do all kinds of stuff to like not get hit with the fire. Uh, but normally you can like hit it in the feet pretty easily, and you're having a really hard time. Well, I mean, it. it's just um, it's not really doing it for me here. Yeah, you can also shoot it with an arrow here, but that's like hard to do and not particularly mm -hmm. great strats here. Um, so Chris, we know from 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 your videos. What what is the uh, what is the actual YouTube address? Is it youtube.com slash Aaron Signal? I don't know it. Let me see if oh I even my. registered one real quick. You don't even uh, know. It could just be a bunch of numbers. Doesn't I know his decade long, yes. decade old um, talking mm -hmm. points from a video I'm, essay. Doesn't know the URL. <laughs> I'm going to get in there. I'm, if you didn't have it, I was going to go register it immediately. <laughs> it's, it's all the range touch stuff there. It's, it's youtube.com slash C slash errant signal, all one word. There we go. Uh, but, you know, we know from that you play a lot of Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Said earlier you were playing, saying you were playing a lot of Dark Souls 1 for the Switch. What else you got yep. going on? What else are you playing? Um, I've been playing a lot of Umarangi. I've got, um, I've, I've had uh, a stop start relationship with that script for almost a year now. And I keep, I, it keeps falling to the back burner and I feel really guilty about it, but I really need to finish it. I've played through that game and gotten footage for it, I think three times at this point. I've a hundred percented all the achievements on it, un unlocked every single thing. I have it on the Switch and the PC. It's been, I've played that game a lot, um, an embarrassing amount, frankly. What are you waiting on? You just got to get the right take? Um, not even so much the right take. It's it's just every time I approach it, um, it ends up being a, a slightly different script, and I end up having to start over, which is kind of obnoxious. But yay, we killed it. We did. Let's uh, hit the right button. Hopefully, chat would tell me if I've missed a boss remaining. But I, th I think you're good. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, oh, you know what? I need to actually look at the document here. Um, uh, let's see. You've done twin dragon riders. I haven't updated this in like a million years. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, you've only done like five bosses since I've done this, though. So let's okay. see here. Strike through. And you've got uh, how many left to go? What do you think? Uh, it says 22. 22. I think that's right. Oh, so you're going to you're gonna go for Ashen Dragon right now? Ancient Dragon? Yeah, sure. Well, oh, what did I say? Ashen Dragon? Uh, yeah. So it's, it's Ancient Dragon. Uh, spoiler alert. It's a fake. <laughs> uh, it's a fraud, you're saying. <laughs> It's it's a fraud. Um, it's uh, it's one of those things where as you're be <laughs> me as I'm being immolated by the ancient dragon, but it's a fake, not a real dragon. <laughs> it can't hurt me. <laughs> um, okay, so we got Umarangi Generation, cool game. People should check that out if they haven't. What's the genre of that game? I, I don't know anything about this. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Cameron. No, 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 I want you to I want you to burn your own video on our <laughs> charity stream. Um. <laughs> Veselikov, the, the the developer of the game, does state it is a first person shooter, but it's it's really it's a it's a photography game. Um, the reason I think a lot of people argue it's a first person shooter is that it is unlike a Pokemon Snap or um, Penko Park or some of those other games. You're not on rails; you're free to walk around and explore. And indeed, there's a fair bit of per first person platforming to jump around. You eventually get um, roller blades, and there's a double jump by default. So there's a lot of platforming involved to uh, get the shots you want. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm eating a cracker. <laughs> no, that sounds like interesting. Timer, right? I'd watch that video. Um, and it's it's cool looking. It's kind of got a it's a cell shaded kind of a jet set radio looking uh, world, but the story and universe is is largely. Uh, well, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it's it's very anime influenced. It's it's really cool. I dig mm -hmm. it. Kind of a near future science fiction setting. Yeah, kind of a. Uh, neoliberal dystopia, I guess, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. I don't Very know, I don't know anything about world. that. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't even, couldn't have even heard of it. Oh, I thought you definitely weren't going to go for that bonfire. Just the ultimate hubris moment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you got that. What, what, are you, what are you playing for fun? That sounds like work. Uh, sounds like you played that a bunch of times for work. Fortnite sounds like a bunch of work to me. That's why I don't play Fortnite. Sounds like uh, a lot Fortnite's, of work. Fortnite is just, it's, I should not play Fortnite anymore. I really need to work it out of my, my gaming diet. It's not healthy. Um, hmm. What do I play for fun? Uh-oh. Warzone. Yeah, you playing Call of Duty Warzone? Is that you? Uh, 
I think we I have a friend group that plays, but I think we've largely stopped because it's it's just impossible to maintain a 200 gigabyte game installed on our computers at all time. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's should. impossible. We should get a competitive group together. We get three of us. We'll get uh, I don't know, like someone who's really good at video games. Chris, maybe you're really good. Are you really good at video games? Do you think, Chris? I am. I am not. I'm. I am. I am in that unfortunate zone of being perfectly competent, but not really knowing too many other perfectly competent people to play. So, like, if if I play a fighting game with the people I know, it's like eight year old nephews and nieces and and my siblings. They don't. They don't do video games. So I could just wipe the floor with them. But then if I go online, they just wipe the floor with me. So I'm. I am in a no man's land of skill. So it kind of sucks. Uh, 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 what's it called? MMR Hell? Is that what that's called? Is it? I, I don't know. That's the, that's that's the matchmaking called? version, but if it's just interpersonally, yeah. like in, among your, your peer group, that's a different... Oh, just, just Hell, then. <laughs> just, just, just Hell. <laughs> just Gamer Hell. Mm -hmm. ELO Hell. There mm -hmm. we go. Um, uh, thank, thanks to... Uh, I, love, I love the work on it can do. I love the work on it can do. ELO Hell. There you go. Uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, so, uh, okay. So nothing, not like no video game joy in your life is what you're telling me. Well, uh, so, so part of the problem is that I, I tend to, um, do a lot of like just exploration of indie stuff. So there's not like one game I, I get really, really into and, and like, can sort of like espouse a bunch. Um, I actually haven't had time to, to, to pick up a bunch of indies lately. Um, my most recent, I think guilty pleasure just for me, video game stuff is I finally managed to secure a PS5, and I've been playing a lot of titles on that, trying to justify the expense. Mm. How'd you do it? Who'd you, who'd you uh, bribe? Uh, I didn't bribe anyone. I, I'm just constantly online, and I saw the the Wario 64 account tweet that Sam's Club had it, and I just managed to get in. It was luck of the draw. When uh, Danny was thinking about buying a PS5, we had this <laughs> conversation like a month or six months ago, maybe. Yeah. And uh, it was like, uh, you know, he asked me, hey, how do you get a PS5? I said, actually, it's pretty hard. You got to do exactly what you just said, right? You got to, like, pay attention to all these people and do it. You know, like, I'm not doing that. So I don't have one. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, Danny was like, yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. I don't think I want to, like, make that my part-time job, like, trying to get this thing. And then, what, uh, 20 minutes later, you bought an Xbox? Yeah, 20 Series minutes later, X? there was just, like, a drop on Target, and I just got an Xbox. Like, no question. No, no question. No I was like, I, I have no loyalties to Sony. The moment it was, the moment there was any roadblock, I was like, okay, well, I guess that's not happening. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you've been playing, uh, what's that? What's the Returnal? Did you play that? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's sort of in the same ballpark as a Souls-like, kind of, a little bit, maybe. In that it's hard? Well, in, in that it's hard and that you kind of have to do everything in one run, which I guess is more of a roguelike thing, but, like, the combat expects you to just not get hit, which is more of a Souls-like thing, right? Oh, like, yeah. the entire combat system is about dodging projectiles and dealing damage, and it's it's more about dodging the projectiles and, and being defensive than it is about shooting everything really, really fast. Uh, yeah, so I've only... I've read some reviews of it when it came out, just because, uh, you know, smart people were writing about it, and uh, I haven't really watched much gameplay. Uh, is it is it worth... Is it worth getting good at? Is it actually worth doing all that work? It seems well, like really hard. There's a bunch of orbs all, and shit lying around. There, there's a lot of orbs, and I'm, I've never <laughs> been... It's one of the things that's kept me away from, like, near Automata, and I feel bad about that, but I don't like... Mm, that's I don't like third-person... Exactly, I don't like third-person... Um, platforming where you have to dodge orbs basically because it's really hard to judge distance and uh, spatial position um from a screen in, in a game like that um mm -hmm. but then the other question to have about returnal about whether or not it's worth it is that it is a ps5 game which means that sony is charging 70 dollars not 60 sony's the one that is leading the charge to uh increase game costs or not game costs but game i guess game costs to end users not game costs to developers but mm -hmm. so that's 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 been part of, I guess, one of the reasons I've been frustrated with it. It was $70, and I've only gotten to the second world, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of sad. Now, would you say that that's just about tuning the orbs, or <laughs> I mean, what would you, what would you uh, say there? I need to learn to get better. The old the old Dark Souls get good. Why, uh, why, why do they all come up with little monsters when you touch the... Uh, 
touch the bonfires. Well, it's a, it's a funny question, or uh, not, not a funny question, but it's funny that you, you're just here when the majority of these little dudes are shooting up out of these bonfires. Because mm-hmm. it really doesn't happen that often during the game, but since you've been here, there's been like three of them. Uh, for, well, for people at home, Danny, you want to explain this? Uh, what's I've got a games? mouthful of protein bar. Please oh, continue. Well, doesn't that suck when that happens? <laughs> when you're trying to eat some food? Uh, so there's this dude, Aldia, we were talking about him before. And Aldia, in trying to kind of break the undead curse and all that kind of stuff, this is like a gloss on it. This is not super specific. But in okay, you're do doing that, a bad job. I'm going to interject. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I'm finished with my protein bar. Okay. Do it. Aldia was Vendrick's uh, scholar, like kind of uh, Vendrick's kind of uh, go to go to uh, assistant advisor. It was his brother. Say it. Oh, was it was it a brother? I don't know. I don't know. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Are people saying that in chat? I'm saying that. People all over the world are saying, hey, <laughs> Aldia was his brother. So constantly. anyway, King Vendrick, um, under the uh, you know, the advisement of Aldia, his uh, his main dude, a long time ago, uses a bunch of giant souls to craft a kingdom, right? And Aldia is uh, a big part of this. King Vendrick eventually succumbs to the undead curse, the same curse that uh, that we talk about in Dark Souls 1 and whatnot. Same one in Dark Souls 3, even. Um, Aldia's big thing is, uh, and he kind of, Aldia sticks around way longer than Vendrick does, and Aldia's big thing is, hey, I, what I am studying is the first sin, like this, this foundational... Uh, wrongness with the world that happened specifically because Gwen uh, wanted to light that flame. It was it was it was human humanity's time. It was the time of the darkness, and Gwen, uh, you know, lit the flame. You know, in contravention of like the natural order or whatnot. Almost about to die while I explain mm-hmm. this. So Aldia is just con- is like the, the when when we talk about like scholar of the first sin, Aldia is concerned with that initial act by Gwyn, and he's also trying to cajole uh, you. Now that he's kind of failed with Vendrick, I think he's trying to cajole you into finding a third way, as it were, finding a way that is not linking the flame or abandoning it, attempting to find some way to bring about the uh, the. Um, the age of man, as it were. I feel like such a nerd saying this shit. <laughs> this is oh, ridiculous. Quick. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, but that, that's basically... The, and in doing that, does a bunch of stuff. We're going to see one of those things in just a second. Yeah. That's actually where we're headed right There's now. a lot of experimentation that Aldia did in kind of this, this quest, as it were. And in doing all of that, he... Uh, Basically, in, th- in some sort of experimental process, uh, bonded himself to the bonfire network. Mm-hmm. So, like, Aldia no longer exists in the world. He is just, like, this emanation from bonfire stuff going on. So that is why he keeps popping up here, is that he, uh, you're now powerful enough that you're, like, on his radar. And he's like, oh, shit, I'm going to show up and, like, cajole you into doing stuff for me. So that's why he keeps popping up. He doesn't really show up in the game that much until kind of, like, the back... He doesn't show up in the first third, basically. And when the game was released, he never showed up, actually. Yeah, that's, this, is, this is all Scholar of the First Send additional stuff. So did that, I guess that fundamentally changed the story, or did it just expand on the story that was there? It changed it um, in a lot of ways, because at the end of Dark Souls 2, the original one, it's very different from Dark Souls 1, because at the end of Dark Souls 1, the player is kind of forced to choose, do you link the fire? Do you kind of perpetuate Gwen's project? Um, or do you abandon it and hope that there's there's like a new age on the other side of this? At the end of the original Dark Souls 2, it was a foregone conclusion from the lore that like it didn't matter what you did. Because no matter what, if you light the flame, it'll eventually flutter out again and create a new cycle. And if you abandon the flame, a new ember will just spontaneously erupt, right? Uh, So Dark Souls 2 was like a much more nihilistic, kind of just like almost like a, had like almost a, a ending kind of akin to like stoicism of like, this is just what's going to happen. Like I could sit on the throne or not, it doesn't matter. 
But now yeah. there's an kind alternate of ending. Up to like the, kind of owning up to like what we all know. Yeah. When you play Dark Souls 1, which is like, oh yeah, all these things are going to end up in the same situation. It's just kind of how we get there. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's it. Yeah. All right. I am not going to fight. I hate that. Those are my least favorite fights. Um, the, the like NPC fights. And, uh, but anyway, so in that in that first one, you just get so the throne of want is what is kind of like the end game thing here, and the throne of want uh, is it grants wishes quite literally, allows you to kind of do whatever the hell you want to do with it, and so I think in the original Dark Souls two, you just sat down on it, right? That's right. You just yeah. you sit on the throne, and it kind of like okay, either you, either it, either the flame gets relit or not, it just doesn't matter. Yep, and so. Now, in Scholar of the First Sin, this additional Aldia complication actually adds some choices to the end, although ultimately, you know, Dark Souls, not really that much of a choice. This is a fake dragon, Chris. <laughs> fake in what sense? Like, is, well, is this the treachery of dragons? What's that? Like the treachery of images, but a dragon? Mm. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, <laughs> this is not a dragon, by the way. Uh, no, it's a... Uh, uh, Aldia made it. Yeah, Aldia basically... Vendrick in his uh, in his heyday uh, went and invaded a bunch of, like, a nation of giants and then took their souls away and used those souls to fashion all kinds of, like, golems took that powered his kingdom. That The thing that we're talking about. Right? Yeah. Took the throne of want from them. Um, and uh, in addition, uh, Aldia took those souls of giants and, um, and started experimenting on them. And one thing Aldia did was he was like, okay, we need to break the dichotomy of light and dark because there was a time before light and dark. What existed in that time? Dragons did. But they're all dead. So maybe if, in order to usher in a new age that's past this binary... We, we need to bring dragons back. So he used the souls of giants to, like, bring dragons back. Um, and we're not going to know this until, basically, until you kill this giant dragon, which I'm going to attempt to do. Uh, once you do so, he drops a giant soul. And you're just like, oh, man, that was, that was never a, a dragon at all. Wild stuff. Uh, I got a donation read. Okay. I've been, we've been talking about Dark Souls 2 lore for so long. Uh, this is from Medium Dragon. Catch up on bosses 1 to 20. DLC is Danny's Choice, $100. Ooh, put that towards Sunken King, please. I have put it towards Sunken King. Um, so Sunken King currently in second place. Second place for Sunken mm. King. Um, uh, so you're about to fight this thing, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to give it my shot. best shot here. A lot of RNG in this fight. You just really want a decent cycle. You're not supposed to fight this thing. No. The game is very clear about, about the intention here. Like, talk to it. Be nice to it. Uh, do you, ha you don't have to kill it to get the Ashen Heart. No, right? no. It just gives you the Ashen Heart. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, talk about some donation incentives and whatnot. Uh, because uh, some people in the chat are asking. So a uh, couple things that are important here. So number one is we're trying to get to $15,000 in order to make Danny fight the final boss with a ladle. Which is not a weapon. So any money you, you are contributing right now gets us to that goal. He is currently racing against time <laughs> in order true. to beat the game before we get to $15,000. So it's really you against him. Uh, that's the ultimate Dark Souls is making people do things they don't want to do. Donate money towards that. Uh, the other thing is that when you donate, you can earmark your donation to the order of the DLC. So whichever TLC you want Danny to do first, you just put it in the thing. You can be... What, what are the DLCs? We got Crown of the Ivory King. We got the Old Iron King. We got the Sunken King. Is that right? That's right. So whichever of those, he does not want to do Ivory King first. I don't. And, and it's in a distant third right now. So, hooray! Kind of giving him what he wants. Yeah, that's no good. You don't want to give him what he wants. Maybe they're Although nice, are, though. You are having to fight Fume Knight, I guess, first, currently. Currently, the rank order is Iron King, Sunken King, and Ivory King. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's the current order. You can always mix those around with your donations. But we are raising money for the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, a legal aid organization that serves people who are transgender, intersex, and or gender non-conforming 
We're doing it right now. It's a great cause. Worth uh, sitting here all day and playing Dark Souls 4, and it is worth um, uh, you throwing some money in. So if you haven't donated and you want to do that, um, do that now. In 20 minutes, we're going to be doing 69 on the 9, which is uh, donating some amount of six six dollars and ninety cents uh to uh you know some multiplier of that at the ninth minute of the hour uh here's a question for you uh chris you, you might have um you might have things to do with your evening we didn't talk about this before this is spontaneous what we did earlier but we've been allowing the people to donate to buy more time with a guest um what would be your cost for 30 more minutes of you hanging out uh, whatever the going rate for 30 minutes is. I don't want to, uh... <laughs> it's interesting I, I that you say that, because we've all, we've established there is a rate. It's, tr it's true, but <laughs> I want to, what do you think your 30 minutes is worth? This is a real, this is a real self-evaluation. You're famous. Uh, you no, I'm not. You don't think that, but you are. You're very important to many people. You're, you are a preeminent, I'm not, in no way, I'm not, I'm, I'm often making jokes and gags. This is not a joke or gag. You're a very important part of the game's criticism universe. There's a reason why we ask you to be on this and why we respect your work so much. We talk it up quite often. Uh, what do you think? You're 30 minutes. Oh my God, you're rape here. Oh, I mean, I... I, I see, I, I, I don't want to say I do it for free because the whole point is to raise money. So I want to list them out in a money, an amount of money. But then if I list an amount of money, uh, that becomes bad because like... My wife, it's it's <laughs> going on 6 o'clock and my wife and I haven't eaten, so I'd be happy to stay another half an hour, maybe another hour. But at some point, I am going to have to leave. So I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know what an appropriate monetary value for that would be that doesn't establish some, some like, arbitrary rule that then would keep me here forever. We, we're you know not going to keep you here forever. It's only one shot. So we can't okay. keep adding one shot? 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. One shot for 30 minutes. Uh, let's just do a flat 100 bucks. That would be my guess. How about that? One hundred. That sounds reasonable. That sounds great. That sounds very reasonable. Uh, that's that's actually kind of the going rate all day. So okay, that, that cool. makes a lot of sense. Let's Excellent. do that. You got you got ten minutes, y'all. If uh, we get another hundred dollars in the next ten minutes, we get another thirty minutes. Of Chris Franklin. We're gonna ask him a lot more questions about ranking stuff and uh, hopefully luring him into saying something that that he definitely doesn't want people to repeat uh, about his evaluation of media. Mm. Um, really trying to to get that good. Um, you know, a uh, YouTuber says something wild. You know, not bad, but, oh, I can't believe he was making fun of Loki fan videos, that kind of thing. Uh, so you got nine minutes now. We got to get to $100. I will not look at it until the time clicks over. So you got plenty of time. Get those donations in. That's tinyurl.com slash ds2charity. There's also a, a button right below the screen, right below the little thing you're looking at. Um, I have now, when I say the word button, I can feel like the bones in my head compressing. <laughs> I've been talking for so long today. You have been. You've been doing a great job. It's screaming. 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 I got I to mow the lawn tomorrow. I mean, you don't have to. I do. It's so tall. <laughs> it's so it's tall. Been, it's been raining a lot. Yeah. You doing any of that, Chris? You, you, you a lawn guy? Uh, no, I, I um, live in a townhome, so luckily I get to avoid the, the lawn part of the maintenance. Mm. Uh, you might not say this I, uh, in the world, so you don't feel free to not answer this, but what part of the, the United States are you in? I, don't even I am know. in North Carolina. I am okay. in the, uh, roughly the same area that like Red Storm and Epic and all those folks are in. Hmm. We should hang out. I'm not that far away from there. Oh? We're like, we're like five hours away. We'll meet in the middle. We'll meet in like, uh, the worst parts of South Carolina. About that. <laughs> the worst part? Well, let me, let's meet in Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> Just a, a place no one, no one is uh, like eager to go to. It's perfectly fine. I like Augusta. That's not shit talking them, but uh, I don't think many people are vacationing in Augusta, Georgia. Um, I don't know, Danny. What's something uh, you're interested in, in prying into the mind of, of game critic Chris Franklin? Uh, uh, Chris Franklin with us, in case you're just joining us, uh, of Errant Signal. I got to do with the radio thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Um, uh, I, I actually do have a question, and it's it's I've never played Fortnite, um, mm -hmm. so I'm interested in an aspect of it. And I have this. Cameron kind of dismisses this idea I have about um, battle royales. I'm um, poo pooing it. Whatever he's about to say. Yeah, yeah. But for me, battle royales often feel like a neg an engine that creates negative emotions. 
um, in, in one yes. way or another. Is, is there some kernel of truth? Does that resonate with you in some way? He's just polling everyone we talk to. <laughs> like, I, he just I, needs someone to confirm it. As, as someone who's played a fair number of Battle Royales, I would not necessarily disagree with that. I, I think the reason Fortnite succeeds and keeps me hooked is all the other crap you do that isn't the Battle Royale. Mm. Right? Like, Fortnite succeeds because it's a game about grinding out random <laughs> missions while also losing the game versus, you know, like, I've played Call of Duty Warzone. Most, I have had so many evenings just end and all of us going to bed pissed off because that's that that is the way those games work. Um, same with Call of Duty or not Call of Duty, um, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Apex Legends. Now, when you do win, it is incredibly a, a rush of elation that you are better than everyone else that came before you. You made all round. the other people feel the bad feelings. Angry. Exactly, but but it's not statistically the, the unless you're really good at those kinds of games. You're not going to win that often, so that that feeling of elation is difficult to get, and also um, sometimes impossible to get, at, and it doesn't arrive at any regular intervals, mm. right? Like a lot of game developers spend a lot of time trying to make sure that like those dopamine pops happen at the right, you know, intervals to make sure that you stay playing the game. That can't happen in a battle royale by definition, mm. and I think the only reason I can stay addicted, well, I guess I am kind of addicted to uh, Fortnite, is because it's not about the battle royale for me. I don't care if I lose, winning, cool, whatever. Winning doesn't... That's the thing. Winning in Fortnite gives me almost no elation. I, I win pretty regularly, but also, like, who cares? Because I'm not... The reason I loaded into the game was to go talk to Rick Sanchez and get three mushrooms so I can finally get that Chivo and then unlock the next hat. Like, that. that's why I'm playing that game, which is not good. It's all extrinsic motivations. Um... So, oh, we're doing a cutscene. I should shut up. No, no, this is... I, I'm going no, into no. a... I'm going into a petrified giant's memory. Yeah. Yep. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's not 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 too important. Um, I have to go yeah. back in time via memories in order to collect things right now. Yeah, it's pretty rad. <laughs> You're like in a giant's memory. This is so cool. <laughs> um, and you can't stay here too long. Yeah, uh, it's really funny. So I like watched your Fortnite video that you did a while back, and uh, recently on my like Xbox, you know, it was like there was like Fortnite times, and I was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll like load in Fortnite. And because, you know, you were talking about all these, like, different things that you can do that are not just the Fortnite part. And I was like, oh, that seems pretty cool. And I found that so, like, aesthetically overwhelming. The fact that there were, like, 40 different things you could be doing in any given game that I literally just uninstalled it. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's interesting. And uh, quit doing it. It was like no, a that's... cognitive overload. Totally valid response to the way the game presents it because it it's it's sort of like it's got the same problem that I think Destiny eventually fell into, which is the same thing where like Destiny sort of abandoned the long story mode that sort of eased you into the whole game, and now it's just like you've got the DLC, you've got the main pack. Here's 40 missions you got to be doing right now for all the ongoing events. Good luck figuring it out, and they walk away, and like that's that's the experience of loading up Destiny for the first time or Destiny 2 for the first time, or at least it was the last time I played it, and it's yes, same. it's intense. Oh, one, one additional thing I want to say about Dark Souls here while we're uh, marathoning it is uh, the reason that we're able to do this, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason we're able to do this to go into the giant's memory is that the Ashen Heart is uh, that that um, uh, dragon that we fought. The fake dragon. The fake dragon is actually made up of, like, giant souls. Yes. And the Ashen Heart is, like, a thing that is refined from giant souls. And that means that we can go into the memories of giants with it because it is like of the giants. Uh, I know, one th correction here: the Ashen okay. Heart just lets you into memories because you can go into other things' memories. Oh, that's right! You can go into Vindrix memories. Do yeah. we have to do that for any reason? Uh, yes, we will. Oh, okay. I, I I don't know if we have to, but I want to. Okay. Um, for a yeah, couple of right. reasons. That's interesting. That okay. So I've been uh, here. I made it this far. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I recognize this area pretty good it's a pretty good little starting area where's that forlorn i don't know where that forlorn went um that's hmm. i've never had that invasion this is what like remember when i was talking about like speedrunners hate this game hmm. uh i've never had this for forlorn invade here so it truly is that must be a rare one the rarest for it's gonna come for you, you can't Oh, you can actually traverse the fog wall with it behind you? Yeah, and it's because oh. that used to be a boss fog wall. Oh, um, interesting. It isn't anymore, but... I like this big head. It's great. 
It's really good. learn how it gets here. There is an armor set. If you jump down here, I'm not going to uh, because it's out of my route. But there's an armor set that's like the Dranglaic armor set. And it's really good. Mm -hmm. If you wear it in the last memory that we were in, uh, that captain will be like, hey, you're, you must be one of my soldiers, but I don't recognize you. Like his dialogue changes if you were wearing the full set of uh, that armor, which is pretty cool. Wow. So we got two more minutes uh, with Chris Franklin, unless we get to $100. Again, I have not looked at the thing. So we could have hit the mark or we could not have. Make sure that you get your donations in in the next two minutes. If you want it, Chris Franklin stay for 30 more minutes. And I'm going to say it, be hungry. Oh. Right? Because you could be eating dinner and you're not. And this is, so maybe it's worth more than $100. People should think about that. Donate to the Sylvia Rivera Law Project to make Chris Franklin hungry. Wow. That's, one, that's another way of thinking about it. If you have enemies. Mm -hmm. you yeah, you've really turned this exercise into quite a punitive one. Um, Look, it's it's about punishing me. It's about punishing well, our guest. What if, the, if, the money, if it makes the money go, mm -hmm. I'll say it. Dang, you blitz through that thing. Yeah, you don't have to fight anything. You you really are only there for the uh, for the giant soul. Uh, was, where do you mm -hmm. where do you uh, where do you fight the big bad giant? Uh, the last one. I'm saving it for last here oh, okay. in the forest of foreign I giants. So there are sense. there are three uh, desiccated, petrified giant corpses mm -hmm. um, in this area, and uh, one is is actually hidden. Is kind of a uh, locked behind a, uh, a locked door and that door mm -hmm. can only be opened with the king's ring and yeah. that's the one with the uh the giant boss oh which it's the one right over here yeah which we've already fought mm -hmm. um but there's de def dark souls obviously has some strong it's taken a strong stance on like time travel mm -hmm. because even though cool. i haven't done this i have it's six o'clock all right chris you ready to roll the dice and find out Let's let's do it. We definitely got you for thirty more minutes. We got <laughs> right. some great donations in. Thanks to everyone who's donated. Let's see. You got an anonymous donation of five dollars. We got an anonymous donation of twenty dollars. We got an anonymous donation of ten dollars. We got an anonymous donation of one hundred dollars. Whoa! No, I'm sorry. This is not anonymous. I don't. I just got into a rhythm there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Chastity Blackwell has donated one hundred dollars and said, "Stay a while, stay forever." <laughs> oh my. So Cool combo there. Anonymous, $25. Anonymous, $25. Keep Chris. Dial the dude said, popped in to see what this is about. May as well pitch something in to keep Chris in for a bit longer. That's good. Uh, I like the idea of someone, no investment in this stream, <laughs> but the idea that I can make some person named Chris stay longer. It's good. Uh, and then another anonymous donation that like doesn't have a monetary amount associated with it. This, keep, this happens every now and again for some reason. Um, I think it's a, tw a twenty-five dollar donation. It's just not showing up in the right thing. So yeah, so we are up to ten thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars. Uh, of course, our goal right now is fifteen thousand dollars. How much more of the game do you, would you say that we have left, Danny? Um, we're getting into so as far as the non-DLC portion. So the DLC is going to get locked once I kill. Uh... Oh gosh, I think I, it's probably going to get locked once I kill the last boss in the base game. And there's there's a very small number of those left. That's like maybe less than five, probably like four of them. I can look. Let's see here. Uh, Vindrick, Chariot, and the Rats. Four. Mm -hmm. We got four remaining. Exactly, yeah. Um, so in the next 30 to 40 minutes, GLC is closing, y'all. So that's going to be a big deal. Uh, let me say this. We're coming up on 69 on the 9. 69 on the 9 is when you donate some amount, some version of 69. That could be $6.09. That could be some multiplier of that. You donate it nine minutes after the hour. We've been doing it all day. We're doing a great job of keeping up with it. Haven't messed it up a single time on my end. And uh, <laughs> when you do that, you can donate... Uh, and earmark your donation to a certain DLC if you have opinions about Dark Souls 2's DLC in order to make Danny do one of them uh, first. Uh, currently, he's going to be doing Iron King first, but uh, Sunken Crown is only $1,500 short of that, so you can maybe do it. 
And Ivory Crown, unfortunately, is uh, uh, $2,200 short or $2,100 short. So probably not going to get there unless someone donates about $2,000 to it right now. To Mary's it, dismay. Back. To Mary's dismay, absolutely. Uh, um, undoing all of her work. Um, so in six minutes, we're going to be donating 69 on the nine. And uh, in four bosses, so in about 30, 40 minutes, we're going to lock those and we're going to start the DLC. So that's going to be happening. So if you have investment about whether you want uh, him to be playing Iron King first or Sunken Crown first, that is coming up soon. We're trying to get to $15,000 right now because it's for a good cause. It's for the Silvio Rivera Law Project. And also, uh, if we get to $15,000 before we get to the final boss rush, Danny will fight the final boss with a ladle. The final boss with a ladle. It's not meant to be a weapon. I mean, it is a weapon, but it's an ineffective weapon. <laughs> so it'll take a long time. He'll probably die a few times. He'll raise more money. Everyone will be happy about it. It's going to be really fun, but we're only going to do that if we get to $15,000. Currently, we are $4,500 away from that. I think we could get there over the next, oh, five hours, but we're going to find out mm -hmm. one way or the other. Oof. That's my spiel. I know. It's a mouthful every time. Well, Chris, we can't let you go before uh, having a long discussion about some... Uh, I, you, do you like Dark Cloud? Is that a game you like? Yeah, you're in Dark Cloud? I do not Dark know Cloud. what that is. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're going to have to put that uh, uh, photography game, you know, whatever. you got to put that on the back, back burner. you got to put that three burners back. Get an industrial stove. Put that all the way at the very back of it. Uh, you got to get on Dark Cloud, the PS2's weirdest world building game. True. You got to go into dungeons. You got to find people who have been transformed into orbs. You got to put them in a village and then build a village that they want to live in. So it's like Dragon Quest Builders. It's like Dragon Quest Builders, like cooler grandpa <laughs> who doesn't work as well. <laughs> And orbs. There's not any orbs in Dragon Quest. Builders. But we've already orbs. we've already determined orbs aren't. We're not selling Chris on orbs here. That's true. That's really funny that we had someone <laughs> earlier. We had Manny Myers in earlier. Uh, if you didn't catch it, you can watch the vods when they get put on YouTube next week. Um, uh, Manny Myers earlier way into orbs, mm. like extremely into orbs. Talk about ranking orbs even. But it sounds like for you, orbs are at the very bottom of the shape rank. I I think the last game i really like i like the orbs in um what what's the uh M microsoft police game you're gonna, you're gonna have to keep going you, you know that it was an xbox uh, 360 oh what is the stupid game um i cannot remember the the orbs the where you get the stamina orbs the game where you get the stamina orbs and as you collect more of them your stamina here. becomes better so you can climb buildings oh. and higher. <laughs> that one uh, you're talking about Crackdown? Yes, Crackdown. I was really thinking like about like uh, Kingdom for Kethlings or something, but I knew that wasn't right. So yeah, everyone is saying Crackdown in the chat, like every single person. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I didn't remember it. I'm bad with remembering names of things. I'm terrible okay. at it. Yeah, me too. I don't know the name for anything. I have a whole, we, we got a whole podcast network that is built on the back of me not knowing the name of literally anything we're talking about. Uh, so don't, I, I wouldn't stress on it. Mm -hmm. Uh... If you want to donate, I see people talking about donating in the chat. Littlefin just post it, tinyurl.com slash ds2charity. And then uh, <laughs> the next thing. Uh, it's down in the description below the video. Danny, what are you doing right now? I've got to go get the last giant soul, unfortunately. Where is it? You're about to find out, aren't you? What is this? So I also have to get the forgotten key. So there's actually two reasons why I have to do oh, what I'm doing right now. Lord. You can just gesture your way off of this, you know that, right? What is this? You can't even go all the way down here. You can. I, oh, I'm, there are a bunch of giants down here, right? There are two. So the, the whole idea is that the gutter is just where Drang Lake throws stuff away. Uh huh. So there are two. Uh, there are two relics down here. There are two like actual living giants that have just like been in the gutter the whole time. And they're like, we don't want to deal with that. Put them down the hole. Mm hmm. Well, you know, I heard uh, I was watching this TV show and they told me that we got to put the devil down in the hole. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, Chris, you got any Chris what stuff? is your what is your favorite like game that nobody knows about? Pitch, pitch, pitch it for us. 
I wanted to, I wanted to ask about prestige television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that we didn't that we didn't get Michael to, to firmly. Answer. We we well, that's a, that ship that's a much sailed. Question. Yeah, what what are some games that you were really into over the past you know whenever your whole life that people don't know about? I I tend to put them up on uh, on the blips episodes is the thing. Like I I don't know if there's any game that I've played that like people genuinely don't know about that I'm pretty into. Um, let me load up my Steam thing and see if I can see if there's anything that I've played lately. Part but of off the top of my head, is you just like roll. It'd be like Fortnite. It's this game. You know, <laughs> it's a tiny wild. game. <laughs> uh, hey, we got one minute till sixty nine on the nines. Sixty nine at nine. That means you need to start donating. Start doing it right now, and I'll start reading it a couple minutes afterward. At the minute that the clock ticks over to nine, you start donating multiples of sixty nine into the thing. Tinyurl.com slash DS2 charity. It's in the link. There's all kinds of stuff. Mary's pointing out in the chat that in fact the last giant is not the last giant, which is very funny. I didn't think about that before. Let's do it. Oh, it's six oh nine right now. Ah, ah, get in there. Start ah. donating. Start donating. Six dollars and nine cents, or six dollars and ninety cents, or thirteen dollars and eighty cents, or twenty-seven dollars and sixty cents. We are trying to get to fifteen thousand dollars. It is all for a good cause. Let this rising action, which sounds like an esports player, say, "Hey, everybody's gonna do it now." This is what the announcers all sound like. We gotta donate to the thing right now. Here we go. And then they like, they're like, "Oh, they didn't do anything. Dang. Let's reset." Uh, oh, oh, Zerg Rush. Uh, Okay, well, he's quit the game. Okay. <laughs> he's quit the game? <laughs> yeah. I've seen eSports before. It's true. Sorry, I was screaming right in your ears, Chris. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> you ever seen eSports before and seen him do that? I have been at, like, a restaurant when Overwatch was on ESPN or something in the background. <laughs> in a restaurant? I've... Oh, yeah. Oh, they, 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 they put sports on TVs, and, like, especially during the pandemic, especially early on in the pandemic... They would put like uh, Overwatch matches and stuff on the uh, screens. You go into the uh, you go into the Olive Garden and watch it. <laughs> watch an Overwatch there. I wasn't watching it. It was on. It was a sports bar, and it was just like interest. I I remember it specifically because I thought it was weird to see Overwatch on TV in a context that really I don't associate with video games in any way. Mm -hmm. I went to the uh, a couple times uh, when it was first getting going before they stopped inviting me. I went to the Overwatch. That like, sentence could have gone a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this is where it went. Mm -hmm. uh, I went. I think. I think I went twice to watch Overwatch, like being filmed at Turner Studios, and uh, it's it's weird. Uh, it's a weird thing to see a bunch of people. Is years ago, uh, and it was weird to see a bunch of people like crammed into a thing, and they were like jazzed about Overwatch, and I was like, yeah, this is certainly. A game we can watch, which I like Overwatch. I think it's perfectly fine. It's not a critique of that, but it was certainly a weird thing to like be in a room full of people screaming about. And people <laughs> are, like using those like thunder sticks in a room that maybe seats 150 people. Damn. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's where you don't want thunder. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's like really the vuvuzela of a esports. <laughs> Uh, people are pointing out in the chat that I've talked today uh, about a lot of places where I've been banned. <laughs> places I've been banned from or not allowed to go to. I, I haven't been. I wasn't banned from this. I just I stopped covering it, and then they didn't ask me to go there anymore. And the reason I stopped covering it is it wasn't particularly interesting to me. Um, I'm sure an esports journalist would have had a much more interesting time there. Um, I was there. I do remember sitting beside like a traditional sports journalist who was like uh, a man in probably his 60s. I would say who just could not, he was like covering it like a baseball game. He was like <laughs> writing stats down as the game was happening and like talking to everybody, talking to the cameraman. It was, it was pretty cool. He had like good vibes about him. Um, not, not the normal vibe of like, uh, you know, other reporters in a hoodie, which is normally what you get, that kind of event. Uh, covered Counter-Strike a bunch of times too, or several times, and that was always pretty interesting. That's true, people are talking about, uh, well, never mind. Uh, Joe Cohen says, we're just here for the reading of Cam's list of enemies. I don't, I don't think I have any enemies. Uh, not there. Yet. Not, at, not until after the stream. <laughs> well, I'm going to let people get in their last couple donations for 69 on the nines. That's a big thing for us. We're trying to get to that 15,000. I'll give you a little bit of grace period. I'm going to start reading these donations off, and I've already seen a couple. It's going to be really great. But uh, you, you uh, dig anything up on that Steam list there, Chris? Yeah, um, so I, I, I don't know how many of these will show up in a Blips episode, and I don't know how actually unknown a lot of these games are, but um, I've been enjoying uh, Viscera Fest 
fairly recently. It's a it's a generic, not generic, but it's a first person shooter that is um, in early access. I believe only the first um, episode is out, but I've been enjoying playing that. Um, it, there's a lot of sort of a melee emphasis on it, and it's it's I I like it. It's fun. Um, then then you get the, some of the games where like. Um, I think I was the only person to play this, but then it, it ends up on like a Markiplier or whatever, and then who knows how many million 14-year-olds have bought the game now. But um, Mind Scanners is a pretty great game. It's basically... Um, have you guys have you guys heard of Mind Scanners? No. Oh. It's it's basically... Um, I am... Uh, papers, please. But instead of uh, doing um, checks on stuff, like, like was the big emphasis on that game, um, you're doing little mini-games to try to psychologically diagnose people, but you're also not supposed to psychologically diagnose people because it's a criticism of this idea of putting people in boxes and, and doing uh, medication. It's, it's a really interesting game. Um, it's a game about sort of like mental health and, and, and the way we handle mental health, and I think it's pretty neat. Um, I'm trying to think of another cool game. Um, we Should Talk is neat. Um, so we, I picked up We Should Talk. I think I kickstarted We Should Talk. We Should Talk is a game about um, basically struggling with your relationship with your significant other. And you go out to a bar and you're kind of avoiding your significant other. And you end up having a text conversation with them. And the reason I picked it up and the reason I kickstarted it is I've, I have this idea for doing a video at some point on game dialogue systems and how we systemize conversations. And I want to talk about things like Signs of the Sojourner, which is a fantastic example of that, and how that game is a big metaphor for how your language changes as you go out and explore the world. Um, but We Should Talk is pretty cool, because it's, it's, it's kind of a scripted narrative, but you get this, like, you make these very minute changes in uh, the phrasing of the text you send, and based on the words you choose, it sort of changes the outcome of the story, because you're changing the emotional inflection, but not the overall meaning of what you're saying, which is pretty neat. That seems cool. Ooh. It's very funny that you're like, oh, you know, the, these games that, uh, you know, maybe people know about them, maybe they don't. Like, Signs of the Sojourn are very cool. Um, and uh, probably, like, a lot of people in our kind of universe know about it. But I would say the vast majority of people don't know about it. And they should, because that game's super cool. Um, and that kind of conversation uh, card mechanic is really rad. Um, did you just kill Vendrick, by the way? Yes. Yeah. I oh, Sorry I need to. Uh, yeah, I need to do the boss count there. Yep. Thank cool. you so much, uh, Garrulous Monolith. Um, that's a great. So one. You still got gargoyles to go. Yep, gargoyles and both rat bosses and chariot and chariot. Yep. So those are going to be the one. Then the DLC will be locked in. Okay. Let me read some donations that we got. Um, let's see here. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. We got a donation from Joe Marquez. It says, does this count for the algorithm? $69. Thanks so much, Joe Marquez. We got an anonymous donation of $6.90. We got Michael H. donating $6.90. And we got an anonymous donation of $69. Wow, we, Jeez. Heck. Really going up there. Um, I'm going to take a... While we have a guest, Danny, that you can entertain. It's true. I'm going to uh, take a quick break so that we can kind of uh, bounce off in just a minute once we're, the guest is gone and you can take a quick break. Okay, no, that that works. I'll be back in like three minutes. I'm yeah, totally. Just fill up my water. Be right back. Oh, so I am just uh, wondering why I can't attune a spell, but while I figure that out, um, that was a great list of games, Chris. Are you, do you have like any retro consoles? Is that like a thing that you mess with? Um, I, I don't mostly. I recently acquired a, a, an N64 because the next Children of Doom episode is going to be on Goldeneye, and I messed with trying to run that in an emulator, and it's just... Oh, it's a it mess. <laughs> it's a mess, and it doesn't look right. Like, it's the worst of both worlds. Yeah. It doesn't run fantastically, and on top of that, the footage quality looks has this really pristine H, uh, high-definition look that is not what the game looks like at all. Um, so I'm, I'm picking up, or I picked up a, a, an N64 and, and I can, I'm going to footage capture off of that, but that's about all I really have retro wise. I think I have one of those little, um, SNES minis that was out a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only other thing. Yeah. Is there, gosh, did you have, uh, do you have like fond memories of GoldenEye multiplayer? Is that like a big part of your, you know, youth? Um, yes and no. Like I played it a lot with my siblings and, um, it certainly was, was, a formative experience to play that but but frankly like mario kart on the n64 mm -hmm. is probably more formative than than goldeneye yeah um yeah. 
again, probably due to that skill gap where Mario Kart flattens skill differences with the RNG, mm-hmm. whereas, like, I would just wipe the floor with my siblings in, in GoldenEye because I, I played first-person shooters all the time, and, and they didn't, so... Mm, I gotcha. Yeah, I... So, I, I wonder, if, are you going to be talking about level design in that video that you're making? Um, for Goldeneye? Yeah. Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't really started it yet. I've started to g- gather some footage for it, but nothing else. Yeah. Um, That's just one of the things that really, uh, I think it's, those early levels, like the multiplayer levels, have captured the imagination of a lot of folks. Matter of fact, I think I read, like, a recent article about, um, about people trying to recreate those in kind of other games and getting some, uh, copyright <laughs> notices or some yeah. such. Yeah. Well, it also stems from that era of games where, like, games were still a bit mythological because we didn't really have, everybody didn't have internet access. Yes. And um, you ended up with, like, the the legend of the island off in the distance in the dam level, stuff Mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. where just, like, this environmental detail that an artist added kind of probably without much thought just to give it more than just being an empty plane became this legendary thing of, like, how do you get to the island? How, what is it, what's on there? Um, And it, it attained its own mythical status that wouldn't make sense, especially in 2021 where you have, like, uh, out of bounds or whatever shows that are all about exploring the boundary boxes of, you know, how, how developers fake skyboxes and stuff like that. But in 1996, 1997, um, that was, that was stuff that blew kids minds. Yeah. People are, uh, seer noting in the chat. Yeah. Now you couldn't immediately data mine games at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a big difference. Yeah, I uh, I feel it on that mythological level. There was so much about my understanding of games that was constructed socially among like what my friends had and I had agreed on what was true about the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that uh, in the age of a wiki for every game, there there's definitely something like different. I'm not going to say lost. I'm not a uh, I'm not super nostalgic necessarily, but it's a different way to experience games now. Absolutely. I, I remember um, another big one that had a lot of myths about it, especially since it was sort of a forbidden item, was uh, Mortal Kombat. I remember uh, everything from the, the the mythical blood code on the Gen- or the SNES, because Nintendo wasn't allowing gore, to uh, there was a long long rumor that I think Bananas and Pajamas were some of the people, secret characters. And it's an adult. That's laughable, right? Mm-hmm. Like this idea that they would license these characters, these ki- children's programming characters for a violent M-rated combat game is ludicrous on its face but i was 10 and i was like oh my god really that'd be hilarious and it's it's stupid as an adult but like before the internet where you couldn't just fact check any of this stuff there was a seed of believability in all of it yeah wow you just have to kill enough enough of the rats is that how that works yeah so basically um there's a there's a counter like a hidden counter of how many rats you have to kill and then a special rat pops out of this hole and that's the actual boss and uh, I guess kind of the gimmick of the fight, there are a lot of gimmicks in Dark Souls uh, fights, but the gimmick of sorts in this fight is the idea that, oh, it's kind of difficult to discern which fight, which rat is the boss. Um, and at the level that you generally first go through there, uh, the, the rats can give you some trouble. So that's kind of how that fight so is that's, supposed I was, to work. I was actually going to ask about that. Like, are you... Because I see... so. There's something that happens with pro Dark Souls, not pro Dark Souls players, but people who have been through the game several times. They know how to sort of speed run it and go straight to the bosses and also the movement strategies for bosses. So leveling is not as much of a thing when you've been through the game 20 times. Mm -hmm. Are you what would be considered under leveled for where you're where you're at and what you're going through? Or Mm -hmm. you have you just managed to get to about the right place? No, I would actually say that I have kind of purposefully done the opposite where I've over leveled um, so that bosses that would normally give me some trouble are less troublesome. I, I think that, you know, you, you, you're bringing up a good point about, like, this routing issue. And I think it's so interesting, like, all of the... In all of the different ways that people can, like, take these games in. And Cameron is very much, like, a narrative he's interested in the war and whatnot. And for me, it's always been about, like... Not about optimal play, uh, but about figuring out the puzzle of the game in like on the on the two axes of there's this big area of interconnected zones. How do I navigate those zones in a, in a way that kind of lets me explore the world? And then the second one, how do I spend the souls that I accrue to like level up and become powerful and do the things I want to do? Because in Dark Souls, those things aren't 
that's not a given that those things are going to happen. There's, there's definitely some challenge to, uh, to navigating those systems. So for me, it's always been about, oh, I'm going to slowly learn things uh, about, about the way the systems work. I've never really viewed it, and I'm sure there are some people that view it as, yes, this is a manual dexterity challenge. Um, I don't think that my manual dexterity is like up to snuff to like think about the game in that way. It's, it's always been for me more about, oh, I, I, I know where a thing is, and I know the, the easiest path between you know, X and Y. Uh, but yeah, long answer to the short question. I'm actually, yeah, for, for speedrunners, they are they're leveling up the minimum essentia, basically, like the absolute bare minimum that they have to. Uh, but for me, I am actually doing the opposite. I am leveling up as much as possible to make make up for a lack of, uh, of fine memorization of these boss patterns. Mm-hmm. I realized. You talk about how you're wearing experience pants. <sighs> no, many actually. Well, that's a secret that we agreed not people, to talk about on air. Many people in the chat are saying, hey, you killed a guy for his pants that make you level up better. And you seem to be tactically dodging that. Well, I'm not looking at chat. I'm talking with our guest. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> Seems important. But, he, but that's another part of this, too. He, like, not just over leveling, but in fact, killing a merchant in the game to afford that strategy. Hey, there she is with those cool clothes. Yeah, I figured it, it would be a good idea to visit this person because we haven't actually. And that's, yeah, that's the starting Explorer outfit. So what did you do when I was going? Uh, I got the Royal Rat Vanguard. And I am just double checking here. Oh, the Mohawk Rat? You killed Mohawk Rat? Killed Mohawk Rat. Damn. Oh, I remember. I know why I was having, I was like, why is the spell not doing what I did? Well, because it's uh, the wrong spell. She sells this miracle called Soul Appease, which is vital for the Royal Rat Authority. It's nice to have for the Vanguard, but I, for me, I can't even do the Royal Rat Authority now without Soul Appease. What does it do? Uh, it, it's an area effect spell. Souls one time. <laughs> it's an area effect spell that actually uh, highly damages any undead. And these rats in this area are uh, fit the bill here. I think that I don't have enough to level up, but I'm going to double check. Do, 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 do. There are mammoths in the game, yeah. Um, okay, so this is going to be... That's right. Doors of Pharaohs, that's where I was. Ordeal's End. Mm -hmm. Now we've got Chris for five more minutes. What are you going to have for, uh, for dinner, Chris? Do you know? I do not. Mm, pure mystery. Can we, can we give some suggestions? Okay. I like that it was not a yes or a no. It was an okay. Interesting. What about an eggplant? Are you an eggplant person? Um, they're okay if they're cooked. Not raw. Hmm. Yeah, no. Wait. <laughs> uh, how much money would it take for charity for you to take a photograph of you just chomping down on a raw eggplant? Ooh, raw? Uh, to, just a cla just a classic errant signal video, you know, you talking head like it used to be, uh, chomping down on a raw eggplant. Fifty bucks. <laughs> Fifty dollars is all that would take. Oh, unless I have to post it to my channel, which without explanation, in which case the no, price you can is put much it on higher, Twitter. But, you can put it yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, that's fifty bucks. Okay, it's for well, charity. Look, uh, for charity, if someone will donate fifty dollars right now, holy shit, that's a big rat. Uh, that's a dog. <laughs> By well, the way, that's not a rat. Well, when that's you think bullshit. about it, is a dog not just a very large rat? I, you know, when you're right, you're right. Uh, so yeah, if someone will donate fifty bucks for charity. Uh, <laughs> seems like uh, uh, Chris Franklin here of uh, Errant Signal will uh, chomp down on an eggplant and post. I'll, the I'll have to go to the grocery Twitter. store. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, gonna be right away, it. but I'll do it. Yeah, you can do it on your own time. I'll leave, I'll reimburse you for the eggplant. <laughs> you know, come around right Patreon. That's fine. That works on it. So yeah. Oh, actually, people are asking if we can donate to make sure Chris doesn't eat that raw eggplant. Oh, a wow, a donation battle. No, yeah, people are really excited. They're saying someone has to have $50 for this. So, yeah, if you can get that donation <laughs> of $50 in for that eggplant in the next three minutes, um, Chris Franklin's going to take a picture. So of, am I allowed uh, to slice it, or am I just going to have to, like, literally bite into an eggplant? You don't have to eat the whole thing. I don't think. Oh, no, no, but I just, but still, I'm, it's, am I yeah, biting into right. it, or am I slicing? Okay. Well, your option. I'll let you do what you want. We gotta make sure that you're really biting it. You gotta give some, you know. You got. We gotta get an action shot. Proper response. Yeah, but other than that, you can cut it if you want to. 
it's kind of hard to have a tough exterior. Um, so uh, people are I, people are into you just biting it like you like eat, bite an apple, which I do think would make for a funny photo. But I'll give you your own option. It's for charity. It's really funny. Thirty minutes of your life uh, is only worth double biting an eggplant, which is pretty wild. Um, I'm, I am I am easy to to to, to coerce into things. Yeah, clearly, obviously, <laughs> yeah. Gosh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to abuse this in the future. Doing a <laughs> doing uh, something uh, inconvenient for me, I am asking people to give fifteen thousand dollars. For for I like that uh, this is gonna be the first and last time Chris Franklin ever <laughs> appears on a charity <laughs> stream. <for us. laughs> As he juggles in his underwear while like uh, <laughs> just, like I don't know, ten dollars, <laughs> <laughs> like while, while uh, learning the guitar, yeah, uh, play, playing an elaborate uh, solo on a. Uh, on, on a um, you know classical guitar, twelve string guitar. I can't believe I did this for twenty eight dollars. But uh, <laughs> how much? Do, uh, Sh- uh, Shaboy J says, how much donated to charity for him to forgive you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see if we got it because this is six twenty nine and we're we're about to uh, lose Chris. Thanks so much for doing this, Chris. By the way. And oh no hanging problem. Out, hanging out. And yeah. Time, thanks so man. much. Yeah, you're gonna have to eat that eggplant, bud. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we got a donation from Darn for $6.90. Said, do it for Steve. Thanks so much, Darn. Anonymous says, $25, Feeble Cursed One. And Anonymous says, Eggplant Signal, $50. <laughs> uh, All right. Yes, yeah, so you're not going to have to uh, do it on your channel. You can just put it on your Twitter somewhere. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you're going to have to buy on that eggplant. And you let me know how much that costs you. And I, I'll, I will, uh, I will do that later tonight. It'll, it'll right. be up. I have to go eat dinner. But after, after that, I'm going to stop at the grocery store. And this will this will happen. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming through, Chris, yeah. and uh, for hanging out and doing all of this. And uh, we look forward to you. Uh, you know, you need to decide whichever plant you want to eat uh, next year uh, when we do this again. Excellent. And, you, and we'll, we'll probably do Dark Souls three next time. So yeah, I played that one. <laughs> yeah, expert level strats. You can help us out. All right. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks for thanks for coming. See ya. Ciao.